Hey, welcome back guys. This is my full platinum guide for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. And we do this in just over seven hours. So it's very, very fast. And I've got two text guides to go along with this. Check description for the links. We've got a full sort of Google Documents text guide for now. I might update it to something better later, just a better format, a better layout. But yeah, I've got a full text guide on everything you need to collect, literally everything, everything we have to craft, collect, farm anything, how much items you have farm from a specific enemy, how many times you have to kill that enemy. So it's very, very accurate. You can actually just go into that, go into options, go into find and replace. If you want to check anything, if you've missed something or you want to check if you can sell something, you can just Google the name, uh, sorry, type in the name on that document and it will just show you all the mentions of it. And you can see exactly what you use it for. When you start, by the way, you want to call yourself Akuma because it gives you a good starting weapon. You can change your name afterwards, don't worry. But yeah, start by calling yourself Akuma. Obviously, choose normal mode. Yeah, and my second my second text guide is a fully published collectible walkthrough on PSN profiles, which I'm not being biased, but it's probably one of the best ones out there in terms of tracking down collectibles because it's just a layout I've used. And with a layout in game, it just, they sync really, really well. So that should help as well. So yeah, two text guides. Like I said, it's take seven hours, guys. I'll walk through everything. I will be going a little bit fast at times. So when I'm in the menus, you can either slow down the video as YouTube lets you, or you can just try to see what I'm doing in real time, or just go on the text guide for full, like I say, a full wrote down list of everything we're doing. So this first 30 minutes, yeah, each video is gonna be like 30 minutes long. So you're looking at about 14, 14 or 15 parts. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to squeeze it down into 14 rather than 15 just for that, like, extra 10 minutes. Yeah, I come in at about 7 hours, 12 minutes when I finally pop with Platinum. Moonwalker, you'll get that eventually from backstepping. You don't have to backstep like I do. This is a little bit annoying to do, probably, especially if it's on your first playthrough. Basically, you just keep backstepping, pressing down, backstepping, pressing down, cancel it. And it just lets you move a bit quicker. You can also slide. Back stepping just a bit quicker. Yeah, loot that chest, tunic. Anything I loot, you loot as well. I tried to mention everything to you guys. That chest got SP rounds times five. You got musketum weapon in that one. Yeah, so I'm avoiding most of the enemies. Kill him if you want to. You got hairband in that chest. Secret wall here. That'll get you a trophy. You got a chest of 1,000 gold and an MP max up there as well. When it comes to your money, if you ever find you've got two, you've got mo uh, less money than what I have just because you've been buying things which are not really necessary. You can do that by the way, just make sure if you are low on money when we get to a point where I have to buy something you don't have enough and you've got nothing else to sell, you're going to have to go farm a bit of money. Well, I'll leave it up to you like I say, you can obviously, it's up to you, play through a game how you want but if you're following me and some of like I say, you've not got enough gold or some because you've been doing your own thing. You're gonna have to go and look and farm it a bit, guys. So here you got blue chest. And secret wall 11, MP max up. And in that room, just before you probably noticed, we got a flame cannon. That's all related, just like the Gale, forget the name now, that first shard we got in the very first room. Yeah, when you get a flame cannon, you have to use it on the cannon to light it, and then that blows a hole in the wall so you can progress. Yeah, you've got a chest with the galleon map. And now what you want to do before you move on, you see these five enemies, you want to farm them for two cannon scrap. It's going to come in very useful later. So I've just got one there. So you want two cannon scrap guys. No, I didn't get one to spawn them. All you do, you leave the room and you come back in. Yeah, so you just keep doing that. Like I say, you want two cannon scrap. We're probably not going to be using this until video two or three. It's going to save you having to come all the way back here to get some. There you go. I've got two. Obviously, I've got one earlier, and I just got one just a second ago. So I'm good to go. Jump over to the left. Get SP rounds times five. You've got blue chest there. Blue chest, by the way. The contents, they're sort of fixed for that area, but the contents you get inside them are random. So, for example, the area we're in now, there's a chest there with a short sword. The area we're in now, you might get blue chests, might have possible five different items inside. But you might only get three, or you might only get two, or you might get four. Like I said, it's a little bit RNG based. But when you leave an area and come back in, they respawn. Only the blue chests do. So there's another blue chest. 
And I just uncovered that safe room back there. Chest here with a tattered scarf. You can equip your hairband, by the way, if you haven't done so already. And you can also equip that tattered scarf, I believe. Yeah, so kill this enemy, that big guy. Do the hammer. If you hit him in this sort of, um, this visor on the top, he takes more damage. Make way up here, another blue chest. Like I say, loot in them blue chests are a little bit random. Up here, just make your way past these three enemies or kill them. There'll be a breakable wall up here. Yeah, this wall just on the right, you can break it. Got a chest here with a claim off. Yeah, this game's quite old, but it's always been a, a sort of fave game of mine, and I've always wanted to come back and do a platinum speedrun. Yeah, that blue chest is always got corn seed. Rye seed and potato seed. Yeah, that blue chase, blue chest is the only fixed one in the game, I believe. Move this crate so you can jump on it and get this whip. Come over here and get this red chest for some gold. 500 gold. This dollar hammer. Now, what you want to do if you're not level 3, you want to keep leaving the room and coming back in. I am level 3. You want to keep leaving the room, coming back in, and coming on that dollar hammer until you are level 3. There's a potion in that chest there. 500 gold in that red chest. And you've got a safe room over here. We're about to engage the boss. So make sure you come and save your game. Yeah, this guy's been literally like one year in the making. I keep making progress on it, then put the game down, go through it again, changing things, go through it again, put the game down, go through it again. Uh, but we're finally here, guys. I think seven hours is a really good time for this. All right, so this is your first boss. Try not to use your potions if you can help it. So you might want to just retry it. Potions will come useful for later. And if you use them, it means you're going to have to buy. I mean, if you need use them, you can just farm some money to buy more. But I'm not really going to be farming much money to begin with. That's why I'm trying to keep them. So the sword we've got is a Dorminus, obviously. That's when you got from putting in Akuma as your name. And when the enemy's on the right, she keeps spamming attack. And then when she comes in the middle, like so, use Flame Cannon on her head. Because she takes more damage on her head. And this is really the only time you can gain access to it. Don't attack a breast, I'm sure you've been tempted. And then once she dives back in, just back over to the right, guys. And keep spamming attack again. Hopefully she'll go down soon enough. Get a trophy, you'll get a shard from her as well. Thrashing Tentacle. And that's the intro done. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Right, so this area we're going into now is sort of like the hub area of the game. Arventville. So let's make way right, there'll be a red chest in a second, with 500 gold in sight. I try, along the way, I try to mention any enemies which are good sources to farm for money. You don't really get much money to begin with, you mainly get your money from selling items. So you want an enemy which drops a expensive item, and it's got a good chance to drop it, and they're really the enemies you want to farm. But I'll mention them as we go, go along. I try to anyway. You can always look through the collectible guide. Right, so yeah, this Arventville, guys, like, like, like I say, the hub area, got all the shops and everything, the crafting shop and everything in here. So first, come to Dominique in this bottom left room. You want to sell Cerulean Splash, sell that shard, and then come to sell to sell some items. You want to sell Knife, sell Short Sword, sell Whip, sell Safe Ring. And that's what you want to sell. Do not sell anything else, guys. And if you want a full list, go and look at my text guide of what we're selling. So you want to buy Ether times 9, Waystone times 3, Sulfur times 1, Salt Petter times 1, and Cotton times 1, and Halite times 2. That's all you want to buy. So buy them. Oh, and we're also going to buy Chemists. You want to purchase and equip that as well. Yes, yeah, so buy chemists and purchase and equip. 
you'll probably find some things I'm buying when we've actually got enough already. It's because sometimes we do need extra and other times, sometimes I'm just buying them just so in case you had bad RNG, you've got them anyway. So yeah, take that quest from Lindsay there. Take that quest from her and get a waystone from that chest. Talk to Harry and give him the... Um, yeah, give him the corn seed to begin with. Yeah, talk to Harry, give him the corn seed. And come talk to Abigail. Take the quest in memory of Catherine. Yep, then you want to um, give her the tunic. She'll give you rice times five. Take the next quest from her in memory of Caleb. That's it. And then come left. Now you want to kill this enemy five times. You see in the bottom right of the screen, demon slain one of five. Each time you kill it, it'll go up. This is a quest from Lindsay. All you want to do is kill it, guys, until you've got five kills. That's it. Once you've done all five, go back into the middle. We're going to report back to Lindsay and get three rings. Yep, and I can take all the other four quests which have appeared from her. When it comes to this quest, I'm not really going to be doing any of them until the end of the game once... Yeah, until the end of the... Not the end of the guide, but the end of the game once you get Accelerator, which makes you move like five times faster. Yeah, this is what we're equipping. So, Hairband, Chemist, Ring Ring, and Tata Scarf. Obviously, still got Dominus weapon. So, now come and talk to Johannes. He will automatically give you them four items. Small Weapon, Mountain Bone, Iron, and Bronze. Now, you want to craft... Gunpowder times three. We should have enough materials with what we just brought from the shop. Yes, yeah, so a gunpowder times three. And you also want to craft bat wings. I'll, go with this. I'll make them. They don't give much of a stat boost. But it just gives you a little bit of a boost to your intelligence, increasing your damage a little bit. Then coming to prepare. And you want to prepare rice ball times two. And then enhance shard. You want to enhance flame cannon to rank four. That's it. You won't be able to rank it up anymore because you need rubies to rank it up to rank 5 and above. But we can get to rank 4. That will just allow you to shoot off 2 flames instead of 1. Do a little bit more damage. You can eat 1 rice ball. That's it. Eat 1 of them. Just What you find with each food, the first time you eat it, you get a permanent stat boost. And every food varies to what boost it gives you. But like I said, the first time you get permanent stat boost and you do not get that boost anymore. You know when you've eaten a food for the first time because it'll be like a picture of a knife and fork on the left side of the food's name. That indicates that you've ate, eaten it once and got the boost. And any other time you eat it, you're not going to get any boost, obviously. It'll increase your health or your MP. Uh, we fill it, but you won't get any more boost. Only for the one time you eat it, guys. Yeah, so make way over here next. Up on the top. Run across that and wait above his chest and you'll drop down onto it when the floor breaks. Loot the chest for the elf ears and then you can equip them into one of the ring slots. Drop down here from the big height to break the floor. you got a breakable wall down here. Get that 8-bit coin. Back up here. Hit the door on the left to break the shortcut. Get the HP rounds times 5 from that chest. Continue right. Loot the base light from that chest. And then continue right again, guys. Yeah, text guides for this, guys, are very, very helpful. Anything else you need, just check them. I'm fairly confident. Anything you need, you'll find in the two text guides I've made for this. Right, so once you open this door, you're going to close it again, but try to get on the top and jump on the roof here, and you'll find a HP max up and a MP max up. They're not needed for trophies, they're max ups, but obviously they increase your health and MP, so you'll see me getting almost all of them throughout the game. I think I'll get every single one, actually. So now we're in the entrance. Don't worry, lights will come on in a second. There's not going to be many items we're going to get here. On original drafts, I did kill a few enemies here for the quest for Lindsay. 
but I, t I taken them out and leaving them till the end. All the items we get from these quests I don't really use so much, so I just took out the kills. Again, just get through this area, avoid the enemies if you can, or kill them, it's up to you. But you'll find there'll be sometimes there'll be a long section between safe rooms, and if you're killing the enemies, you're likely to take a lot more damage, and you might not get to the next safe room in time. So in this room, you've got to go up and around to get to the exit. So up here, get the capacity max up. There'll be chest over here with a ether. Drop down this gap. Loot that chest for 500 gold. And come in here for a little cutscene. I try to let you know what rooms you need to fully explore when we go in them. Uh, more or less, if you just explore, if you look on my map, anything I'm exploring on my map, you're going to try and do the same. If I look like I've uncovered all the tiles in a specific room, you do the same. If I look like I've just gone through a room fast, not discovering everything, then you don't need to. If that happens, it's probably because we're going to be going back in that room later on a few times. If you get a moment, I try to give you a sort of POA, a plan of attack on exactly the order we're going to be doing things and my sort of main aim which this is all revolving around yeah so come straight through here yeah we're in the garden of silence now up here we're going to get HP max up yet um, next sorry and then we're going, going to go and unlock a warp gate there's another boss coming up soon by the way Yes, yeah, so drop down there. Kev, you don't drop all the way down, otherwise you can be back in the previous room and you're going to have to do the um, lap again to get back up here. Yeah, the the first thing we're doing is we, we want to get a accelerator shard. But it's, like an, it's like an end game shard almost, but it's a shard which basically makes you move five, five times as fast, probably even quicker, probably like ten times as fast. Yeah, first thing is to do that, and then we're going to start building up our look, our MP recharge rate. And then start working on our builds and getting some money. And you'll see as we go along. But yeah, let's unlock warp gate. But yeah, the first main thing is guys to get accelerator. So we're basically making a beeline for the end of the game. Doing a few things along the way. This chest, you got a fine healing item, recipe. Some some things you won't you can't craft until you find the recipe for it. But yeah, that's a fine, fine healing recipe. So save your game. There's gonna be a boss fight here. Now try not to use any potions or ethers here, because you're going to need it for the boss after this one. So he's not too bad, Sangetsu. Stop right there. The key thing is to keep jumping over him. You'll see me doing it here, keep jumping over him. It may take a few attempts. If you try to attack him from his front, you're just going to get hit yourself. But like I say, this is how you do it. You jump, you jump over him, as he's turning around, that's when you get your attacks in. And you jump back over him again. As you can see, I'm doing a blend here of my flame cannon and normal attacks. You see what happens if he just turns around just as you land, he's probably likely to attack you as you attack him. So the key is to jump behind him as he's attacking, then it gives you a window to attack him a few times from behind before he's even turned around yet. See so yes, how I'm doing here? And if you ever see him sort of hold his sword in front of him vertically, it's because he'll power you if you're attacking from his front. So if that happens, do not attack him from his front, he'll power you. Yeah, like so. You sort of give the elf, come on, you know, come on sign. Don't be tempted, just jump behind him, hit him from the back. I always like hitting them enemies from behind. Yeah, once you run out of MP, all you have to do then is just keep spamming your attack. If you attack him as you land, you can normally attack quicker. It's a little trick in this game. To attack quicker, you can actually attack just before you land after jumping, then attack again once you land, and then quickly backstep and attack. That could, that's the quickest way to do sort of a triple attack, but it's a bit tricky to do. But a jump in and attacking as you land, attacking twice, that's not too bad. You just attack just before you land, and then attack again once you land. And once you killed him, you'll get a trophy, Samurai Showdown. 
Right, it's going to make a way left into here. We're going to take the bottom left room to begin with. Jump over this guy, and there's a breakable wall behind him. We're going to get the Ulf Burt Sword. You're going to equip that. Now you can finally unequip the Dominus. Yeah, so Ulf Burt Sword. You want to equip that now, guys. More powerful weapon. Come to the bottom right door now. Slide under there. Get the capacity max up. They're pretty pointless. I never use my guns, but just gotta get them anyway. Yes, yeah, so you want to come and talk to um, the stranded man. You want to give him a waystone. That's it. He'll give you one thousand grand, and you get some XP from him. Sorry, one thousand gold, not one thousand grand. We wish. Yeah, just talk to him, guys. That's like a little quest. He gives you an item at the end, which you need anyway. So once you've done that, top left, get the waystone in that chest. Get his HP max up. And then head left. Yeah, pretty much after 100% this game, in every means possible, every way possible, because you need everything, you need everything for one of the trophies. So, um, for example, there's there's not like there's not a trophy for doing every single quest, but you get items from doing every single quest, so you have to. So, Dianket Cathedral or something. I just call it the Cathedral. So, bottom left, you got a safe room. If you're ever nearby a safe room and you need help, guys, just head inside and save your game. There's no penalty for um, saving more than you need to. No penalty at all, so you can always save your game. And also, the you know the suspend, suspend save feature in the menu? What that lets you do is it makes a sort of temporary save from that when you first enter the room you're in. So each time you enter the room, the game makes temporary save. And if you suspend save... It will basically make a save when you first enter temporary, and then once you load that save back, it will sort of um, that save will be gone until you make another one or you save your game. Yeah, so get that shortcut shard and um, head right from there. There'll be a breakable wall and get the MP max up. Then carry on to the top, guys, and take the top right door. Like I say, if you find an endless tricky, you can farm enemies if you want. Or try to farm a different weapon. Like I say, if you find everything in my collectible list. My aim is to get to accelerate first. The problem is, guys, when you farm in early, farming just takes ages because you've got low look. And just, you, you don't have to accelerate, you move really slow. It just makes everything longer. That's why I tried to get accelerate first before I begin all the farming. I tried to build up my look. Just speeds everything up. So come into here, top left room, the barbers. You just want to change your hair style and you get a trophy. He knew you. That's all you got to do. And then you want to get his chest underneath you for the dance mask. Then you want to make yourself make way over here. Get the um, rose ring from that breakable wall. Then make yourself in the top right door. Watch this demon. Get that capacity max up. Now, if you get no one health here, you could actually walk back to the entrance fast travel and um, just go to that nearby safe room, just near the Zangetsu boss room. There's a safe room close by, but you've got all these enemies to get past. It can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're low in health. Because like I say, you see me almost die here. I mean, I had to give in and use a potion. Yeah, fortunately. Yeah, so you probably want to make sure your health is almost full when you go through that room. You've got a chest there with a hair apparent one. They're just like different new they're different hairstyles you can use. And then save your game guys. Ready for the last bossless video. So yeah, make a save there. Then go left, up, and then take the next exit on the right. Yeah, so this boss, craft work. Once you get low in MP, you want to use your ethos. If you get low in health, you want to use a potion, but you shouldn't have to. This enemy is quite easy to avoid his attack, you just got to keep away from him. So just keep spamming flame cannon. Try to make sure all your hits connect. And with flame cannon, you don't want to attack too fast. If you attack too fast, sometimes one of the flames will miss. You see with me, I'm leaving a little, just a little pause in between each attack. And once you get low on MP, like I say, just use all your ethers. Obviously, don't use them all if it takes you past max. Use a few. Use your flame cannon again. And then use the remaining ethers. 
But yeah, this attack, you've got to be careful. If you see him jumping, get away from him so he'll grab you and do a bit of damage. But mostly attacks, you've just got to get away from him like so. You can attack. If he's jumping, normally you've got to go underneath him, run underneath him quickly. And continue doing that, guys, and he should eventually succumb to his wounds. If you do run out of MP, in total, like, no more Ethers left, no more MP. Then just start attacking him with your Dominus. As long as you can pretty much hit him with all your flame cannons, with them nine Ethers as well. That should pretty much be enough, so you shouldn't need many more attacks if you did miss a few. But you get that trophy when you first beat him. Then we'll come to this top right room, you'll get that shard, Craftwork. We need that for moving some statues so we can progress later. Grab the Crusader's armor and also grab the Familiar Silver Knight Shard. The Familiars, they're basically like pets that follow you around and they give you give you a bit of support. And then back in here, guys, gonna grab that statue, place it on that platform so we can uncover that top left map tile. And then come in here and grab these few items, guys. Then we're gonna walk back to Arventville. Get the HP max up and the unicorn ring. You can equip the Crusader's armor. Equip the unicorn ring in place of a ring. And then once you've done all that, warp back to here with a waystone. Make sure you've got all that loot which you just got. Then come to Lindsay, take all the quests from her. Right now we're going to come over to Dominique. We're going to buy three high ethers and two potions. What are you looking to buy? Yeah, so high ether times three and two potions. You should just have enough to do that. What you'll find as you progress through the story, new items will unlock in Dominic's shop. I've got a list in the text guides exactly what triggers he unlocks and stuff. Then we're going to come talk to Harry guys and we're going to get the corn times ten. Then we're going to give him the rice seed. As you probably just figured out, when you give him a seed it takes time for it to grow. And you come up to him afterwards and you'll get the um, whatever flower it grew into. Well, and veg. Yes, get our capacity max up, come and unlock this warp gate and walk back to the entrance. So it's going to continue right. And drop down this hole, but when you jump down, try to keep to the right, that's it. So you don't fall down again. Loot that blue chest. And come in here and loot the lethal boots. If you do fall down before getting all the loot, you can just press options, guys. Go into the bottom, go into suspend, suspend safe, and then when you load it back up, that just put you back in the top left of this room. Yeah, get that blunder bus from that chest. Drop down and take this room on the right. We've just fully explored that room. We just passed through. We're just heading back into the Garden of Silence now. Yeah, now that we've got craft work, we can remove the statue blocking away. And we can get a nice ride in the chariot. Yeah, so just jump behind it, move it out of the way. That's it, and then take a ride, guys. I know there's ways to sort of sequence break across these gaps, but we're trying to do it all properly. Some of it can be quite difficult anyway, especially on new patches and stuff, and with controller. Yes, yeah, get that HP max up once you get to this other side. Come up here, get his chest for a Kung Fu vest. Down here, go through this doorway on the bottom right to unlock the warp gates for later. Once you've sort of explored them, you can warp there later. Yeah, get that red chest for 500 gold. Come along here, drop down. Yeah, no need to fully uncover this room yet. In here, get the blue chest on the top left. Carry on, and in this room, you know, drop down here. You want to smash this wall on the left. Head inside for a MP max up and a red chest containing 500 gold. 
All these chests of gold, it's not a lot, but it's really it really helps you at the beginning of the game. And then get this blue chest over here. And then carry on to the right, we're gonna get another chest with a potion inside. And then we're gonna make make a stop for this video, guys, in a safe room. Yes, yeah, so that's part one out of the way. Like I say, each part will be about 30 minutes long. And like I say, for the first sort of two hours, we're making our way just to the game, through the game, and to get Accelerator. Yeah, so that's it, guys. We'll make a safe, and that'll be it for that video. Yeah, this game actually lets you copy your save files, and I wish other games let you do it. I know a few do, but generally, games don't normally let you copy your save files. But you can do here, so it's good advice just to back, just make a backup of each save, perhaps at the start of each part like I'm doing. Actually comes in useful for me later on. But yeah, we're heading into the Tower of Twin Dragons. And we're going to be upgrading our flame cannon in this, in this um, part. Defeating three bosses. Getting double jump. So we do make quite a bit of progress here. So again, I'm just avoiding all the enemies. Just making way up this tower. I'm not bothering collecting everything here. Because we will be coming back here later. We've got much better movement ability. So we can get around a lot quicker and easier. Up here is a blue chest. Again, remember, blue chests are always random, the loot they have. But the loot is normally fixed depending on what area you're in. It's normally different materials are a bit random within that area's loot pool. So yeah, once you get over here, there'll be a little cutscene. Just get through this. And this first blue chest in this next area, Live X Machina, we want to get a ruby inside. And if you don't get a ruby, you want to suspend, go in, into options, go at the bottom, and click on suspend, and then resume, and keep doing that until you get ruby. Now what you could do, I do it after the first boss. Yeah, there's a chest there, guys, for the ether inside, and the save room here, you can make a save. Yeah, I save it until after this first boss, but if you wanted to, you could keep leaving this area and then coming back in until you get seven rubies from this blue chest. And then once you've got seven rubies, you can head back to the Arvindville, the hub area. You can go to speak to Johannes and you can upgrade your flame cannon to rank nine. Which will make it so instead of shooting two fireballs, you'll shoot five. So you'll basically be doing like two and a half times the damage. And it'll make this boss first boss a bit easier. Like I say, we're going to do the first boss, get a double jump, and then do it afterwards. In here, guys, in this chest, it's a um, recipe for cookies. Grab that, and then come back up here. Now we're going to be grabbing this blue chest. So what we want to do, is because we might have to suspend, we just want to go out this doorway here, because it's the nearest doorway to the blue chest. And then come back in. And then you've got to make your way up these bookshelves, which come out. Just use your right analog stick. The ones with the enemies in the cages, try not to pull them out, because once the book the bookcases come all the way out, the enemies will burst out. So yeah, try to move the bookcases with no enemies inside them. Obviously, just kill any paintings to get in your way. Yeah, this blue chest here. So I've got Ruby there. If you don't get Ruby, like I say, press options, go down to the bottom, open the sort of options on there, on your inventory screen, and choose to suspend and then load the game back up, you'll spawn back at the entrance to this room and you can try again and just repeat it that way. I will be doing it a bit later on. That chest, most of the time it will give you ruby. So you shouldn't have to reload much, probably just once, twice at the most I'd say. In here we're going to get another chest. In this chest you've got a crow mask. Once you get an item, it's sort of already added to your item checklist. So you can actually sell it later. You don't actually have to hold on to everything, you just have to have obtained everything at least once. Kill this demon. And then break this wall on the right for a HP max up. That demon slain you just saw at the bottom right said 1 of 4. Yeah, we will be killing a few more demons later, don't worry about that. It's not like it's going to give you any reward which is going to change anything drastically right now. Yeah, here, just carefully make your way across here. Try not to fall down here, there's spikes beneath you and they do a lot of damage. We do get an armor later, which removes all damage from like hazards, pretty much. 
Yeah, that chest has got a waystone in sight. Come in here. That staircase should move down. And then come and talk to OD. So at the moment, you can borrow one book from him. And you want to borrow Sage's Tome. So yeah, one book, Sage's Tome. And what we're going to do, we're going to go up and then left to the warp gate. We're going to warp to two different places and then come back here. And what that does, it makes it so this other book becomes available. You can actually borrow three books if you do it now. Uh, we're going to be doing the third one a bit later. So like I said, we're going to warp away to two different places. So one, and this is the second place. And then warp back. So like I say, warp to two different places before you warp back. And then when you go back down to OD, it will let you borrow a second book. If you do that again, you could borrow a third. But I'm going to leave it until later. If you want to get a third book now, you can go and get a second book. Then go back in the warp point, guys. Warp, warp away again another two times and then come back. Yeah, now you want to borrow the Dead Eye Tome. And the third book, which we'll be borrowing later, will be the Fortune Tome. Like I said, if you want to do that now, you can. I'll be doing it a bit later. If you do do it now, you want to get the Fortune Tome. Increase your look a little bit. And then save your game. So this boss, all you should have to, all you should have to use is two times high ether and perhaps some of your potions. Yeah, two high ethers. We bought them earlier. Yeah, if you upgrade your flame cannon by getting the seven rubies, it make this a bit easier. And also, with them seven rubies, we'll be doing after this boss. Five of them are used to fully upgrade the flame cannon, and the other two we use to make flame rings. The flame rings actually increase the damage, the fire damage that you do. So it increases the damage that your flame cannon will do to enemies. So that's where the seven rubies come in. Upgrading your flame cannon to max, and also creating two rubies. Uh, sorry, two flame rings. But yeah, just keep attacking him, guys, with flame cannon. Like I say, you need two high ethers. Once you've used two high ethers, if you're still not dead, just start attacking him with your sword. Because it should only be a few more hits. Yeah, you probably have to use a few potions here as well. It's a bit annoying, this boss. I mean, because he keeps jumping around. Just got to follow him the best you can. As you see, I'm getting hit all the time. I don't really have much of a strategy for this, other than just keep following him around and hitting him with your flame cannon. And just basically out healing him. And there you go, yep. Yeah. So you get that trophy, Wing Clipper, once you beat him. You get a shard, which gives you double jump. So now you can jump twice. Yep, yeah, get that chest for the Feather Crown. You can equip that. Well, we'll go back to the safe room just to um, refill our HP and uh, MP. Right, now we're going to be leaving the area now and going back to the Tower of Twin Dragons. So like I say, make sure you've saved and just backtrack. You don't have to backtrack the same way. There's a little shortcut you can unlock now. And of course you can double jump so you can jump a bit further. And you find what I'm doing there, I'm sort of dashing across the screen really fast when I'm in the air. Sort of dashing to enemies. If you jump and then hold down and press jump, you'll sort of you'll, you'll sort of double jump down really quick. Do like a sort of um sub and attack feet. Or if you hold your hold diagonally you do it diagonally as well. So yeah, all you do, you, you jump a few times and hold down and press jump. And then you'll sort of dash down really quick. Or hold diagonal down and you'll dash diagonal down really quick. So I just got Ruby then. Yeah, I'll come back in that chest, that blue chest. And we actually want to go to it one more time. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to exit this, this area and then come back in. And that should respawn that blue chest. The reason it respawned from earlier... When we got it near the start of the video, it's because we warped, if you remember, we warped to two different areas when we got near OD. And that's because we left the area, that's why it triggered it to respawn. And we've just left the area again, so that blue chest should respawn. We just want one more ruby from it. That should be three in total. I don't think I'll get a ruby here, so you're going to see me suspend. Yep, see, I just got silver. So I'm going to go options, suspend. Do not choose title screen by mistake. If you choose title screen, 
you'll basically when you reload you'll have to go back to your previous save but suspend lets you reload from that when you first enter the room you're currently in sometimes i don't know if this is quicker than just leaving funnily enough it actually loads quicker on the steam deck than what it does on this ps4 version it's poorly optimized not as bad as the switch version but still yes there we go got ruby so once you've got a third ruby yeah, at this point you should have three. You could actually, like a way I've just done it, you could actually keep leaving this area, coming back in until you got your seven. But the next four, which we're gonna get, we're gonna get as we make our way throughout this next area. So I'm just gonna make a save here. We're back in the Tower of Twin Dragons. So what we just did with that blue chest, where we suspended up until we got Ruby, we're going to do that with a few chests going forward in this area. Because we now want to upgrade our Fame Cannon before we um, face the next boss. So you make way past these peaches, these three guys. Jump up here. Now that chest, you see that chest, that's got a gadget band inside it. I actually forgot that. I had to sprint back here. You'll see me do it anyway. Um, but at the end of the game, there's one item I missed. It's that bloody chest. Somehow I forgot that chest. We do actually come back in that room later, I just completely forgot about it. But yeah, this blue chest here, guys. If you don't get Ruby, suspend and keep doing it until you get Ruby. I just got on there, so I didn't have to. But yeah, just suspend, guys, until you get Ruby. And then just follow my lead. No need to kill anything or loot anything else here. There's going to be another blue chest in a second. But because this one is too far away from the door, we're just going to take our chances. You might get Ruby, you might not. Don't bother reloading for this one. I didn't get one. Good. So I don't have to rely on that. That bad RNG. So if you've got Ruby, great. That means you should, should have five and you only need two more. I've got four at the moment. And whatever you do, try not to touch them purple frogs. They poison you. As you can see, I just got poisoned. If you get poisoned, it does take quite a lot of your health. So keep an eye on your HP if you get poisoned. You can use a Mithridate to um, recover the poison, to cure it, if you have any. It does wear off eventually, by the way, if you get poisoned. It will just normally deal about 150 damage. So just be careful and you watch your HP. So yeah, we basically want to get up there. I tried to take a little shortcut, it didn't work. This is where you're supposed to take the long way. And this jump here is a little bit awkward. In fact, it's really awkward. Such a weird jump now. That, co that little cog needs to be a little bit more to the left. Right, in this next room, there'll be another blue chest. So again, if you do not get ruby, guys, suspend. I have four rubies at this point. We need seven in total. Yep, so I didn't get ruby. So again, I'm just going to suspend, which will reload me in this room. And I can try again. There's actually a breakable wall on the right side of this chest as well. Just break the wall there, you'll get an MP max up. I think it's here. What's it on the far left side? We'll see in a second. But yeah, come back in here. No, didn't get in Ruby again. That's bad luck. Normally, normally one suspend will get you it. At the most, probably two or three. It's got to be like a 40% chance of a Ruby appearing. The Flame Cannon, back on the original release of this game, version 1.00, you can actually upgrade the Flame Cannon to all, almost to max at the start of the game. But they patched it in so you had to use rubies a lot earlier. Yeah, oh, well, here it is. This breakable wall, guys, get the MP max up. Yeah, they made an update, so you had to, I think you had to use rubies from rank 7 onwards on release, but now you have to use it from like rank 3. Yeah, so unlock that warp gate, and then make your way to the right, past all these, past the two guys, and the shield knight. Get that chest for special ammunition recipe. Turn that lever to activate the elevator, but do not use it. Another blue chest here, guys. If you get a ruby, great. If not, suspend up until you get one. So right now I've got six rubies, I think. I need one more. Like I say, you need seven in total. And here's your final blue chest. So if you don't get ruby, suspend up, guys, and just try again until you get ruby. That should be your seventh ruby. 
If after this you've not got a seven because you miscounted or for whatever reason, all you need to do is go to that warp gate to the far left, warp away, you know, leave the area, come back in, and these two blue chests on the top will respawn. Yeah, if you need to farm blue chests right now for rubies, farm these two we actually looted last. This one and that previous one. Like I say, all you gotta do, go to warp gate, warp away, come back in, they'll be respawned. You can use your waystone, use your waystone, go back to Arventville, go to warp gate, come here, check them, waystone, warp gate, come back here, and just keep checking that way, guys. But I think I get it now. Once you get your seventh, and once you've got your seventh ruby, there you go, use your waystone. Now we're gonna get upgraded, ready for this next boss. Yep, so I'm just checking, yep, got seven rubies. We are good to go. Right, so back in Arbonville. We're going to come left first and speak to Harry. Prince Harry over here. Harry the farmer. We're going to get rice times 10 from him. And we're going to give him the final seed, which should be the potato seed. And then we'll get that later, once it's, gr once it's grown. Right, come and talk to Johannes. We want to enhance charge, you want to go into flame cannon. Now you should be able to rank it up to flank 9. Uh, flank 9, rank 9. Uh, you'll need, you'll probably get that trophy, Able Alchemist. You'll find, you should need two cannon scraps, but if you remember, we got them cannon scraps in part 1. The flame cannon enemies back in the first ship area, drop them. But you should have them, I did advise you to get them. And then once you've got flame cannon to rank 9, craft two flame rings. You want to equip these as well. You should have, should have the rings from the quest from uh, Abigail earlier. Yep, so craft two flame rings and make sure you've got them both equipped. And they'll make you do a lot more damage with your flame cannon. I think each flame ring adds like an extra 10 damage. Yeah, look at this. So it's five fireballs at once now instead of two. Right, and once you've done that guys, we're good to go. Yep, so back over to, to the Tower of Twin Dragons and ready to go and, and engage the next boss. For this boss, you... You shouldn't really need to use any consumables. If you've got any, or if you've been farming a bit of money, guys, and you've got a bit of extra and you want to buy something, you can do. Uh, but just be careful, remember, be careful for your money. Because when we come to buy things, I literally almost always have just enough. So if you do, if you are buying extra to what I'm buying, you're probably going to have to farm money at some point. Yeah, so loot that breakable wall on the right there for the invisible blade and then equip it. You probably won't be able to see it, but just equip it anyway, guys, after picking it up. Yeah, the invisible blade. Loot the high potion from that chest. Drop down here, watch the spikes at the very bottom. Yeah, I actually come back in here. You see I missed a map tile. We do actually come back in that room later, so I actually didn't really need to. Yeah, it's a safe room here. It's a safe your game. This is the last save point before the next boss. So yeah, very important to make a save here. Yeah, see, I went back to get that map tile, but there was no need for it because we are going to come back through this room. So anything you missed, you can uncover it later. Yeah, I'm just going to go back and get my health back. So hit them spikes. Right, let's do it. So this will be the um, Valak, the t twin dragons. Hence the name of the area. Yeah, so that breakable wall on the right there, you'll find that armour, riding habit. You can equip that. You got a chest here with another high potion inside. Right, and there's the boss door, guys. So like I say with this guy, you shouldn't have to use any consumables. Once you've used all your MP, you can normally just start using your weapon then. Just spam an attack and it'll go down soon enough. So we're gonna focus on the dragon on the left. You don't have to kill them both, you've just got to deal with enough damage to either one. I, I think it's just like total damage you do. Just shared between them the health. And now your flame cannon is shooting out five fireballs at a time. Do not fire it too quick or you'll find some of them won't connect. 
You have to shoot it and then wait a second to shoot it. And they always do this attack to begin with. They take it in turns trying to bite you. It's when the one you're attacking goes to bite you. Just um, go and jump over to the right. And once you start moving, just come here where I am, guys, and hit them from here. And once you run out of MP, just start attacking them like so, guys. If you time it right, you can just get two attacks on this bottom jaw and sort of head box down. So once your MP recovers to 18 again, you can use another flame cannon. There we go. Yeah, simple enough, guys. That that boss, them bosses. Right after you've killed him, you'll get their shard, Inferno Breath. Get that trophy, Snake Charmer. That Inferno Breath char uh, shard is actually pretty good. Yeah, once you fall down to the bottom, yeah, drop down the gap, get the capacity max up, just under that um, ledge, and then loot the silver bromide from that gold chest, guys, and then use the waystone to walk back to Arventville. Back in Arventville, we're going to go down to um, the bottom left room, to where Dominique is in the shop, and Susie. Susie's the old granny, well, she's pretty much your grandma. Yeah, come talk to Dominique, and then you automatically spawn over here. You'll get the identification automatically, story related. And then come and talk to Grandma and give her the rice ball after taking a quest. Yeah, give her the rice ball, you'll get the thorn whip. And then take her next quest, uh, craving something irresistible. Just take it, we're not going to finish the next one, just take it. That's it, and come to Dominique. Now you want to sell. Do not sell anything else, only what I sell. You've got Elf Butt Sword, Thorn Whip, Blunderbuss, Feather Crown, Kung Fu Vest, Crusader's Armor. And the rose ring. To sell them items, guys, and that should give you enough for what we're going to purchase next. Right, then go into purchase. You want to buy high potion times one. You want to buy high ethers times four for 2,000, and then waystone times three. Yep, you should have enough to do that. There you go, got a little bit remaining, 500 gold. So, yeah, remember, buy high potion times one, high ethers times four and waystone times three. If you want a full list of everything which is sold there and purchased guys, check my text guide. I've got a list there in case you did miss anything. Right, and now we're going to the warp gate guys. I'm gonna warp to Lift X Machina. Now we're gonna borrow the third book from him. Now we've pretty much been in two areas since we last spoke to OD. The third book should be available. I see occasional comments around my guides every now and then, so I've got an old OD guide. Yeah, there you go. So third book, borrow the fortune tome. Just increase your look just a little bit. Yeah, I've got an old guide about this, and I, I see a few comments every now and then saying you can't borrow a free book on a new game. Obviously you can. So I'm not sure what happens. I'm not sure if, if players are leaving it, I'm not sure if you, if you leave it too late in the game, you can't borrow the third book. I'm not quite sure. Or they're not talking to OD in between each time they borrow a book. So I think you need to talk to him each time before you walk away again. But as you can see, you can borrow three books if you do it at the same time as what I am. And in the same way. So you just walked to the Garden of Silence. Now we're going to make our way, we're going to go and catch a train, guys. Yeah, and when we spoke to OD a second ago, we also got the um, we got the pass plate from him. Forgot to mention that. Yeah, when we spoke to OD, we got the pass plate. Yeah, come in here, get that HP max up on top of this um, spire in the middle. And then get the fairy healing item recipe from that chest. And then get that blue chest just there. Come all the way to the right here. We're going to go to the save point, guys, and save our game. Just ignore all these enemies. We are going to be killing all the enemies a lot later on. Don't worry. I know I'm skipping them all now. But if anyone that likes to kill enemies, I mean, I'm going killed at the moment. 26. By the end of the game, we're going to have, by the end of my platinum, I think I've killed two and a half thousand. So we're going to more than make up for it later on. We just wait until we get all our top abilities, our faster movement speeds, our better weapons, better 
better shards and um, we can just kill everything mega quick. If you kill things now guys, you're just going to waste so much time. But, you obviously can farm a little bit, it's, in, it's like I say entirely up to you. I'm just trying to be optimistic, um, not optimistic, optimal here. And efficient. Right, yeah, so carry on right guys, into the train station. We're going to get on Thomas Tank Engine. And you're going to meet Zangetsu here. He's going to the same place as you, so you're going to sit together. Yep, so once on the train, just make your way across these logs. There'll be a few things going to grab here. And any part of this train you don't explore, you see them tiles, I've not explored on the map. Back on um, back on the base game, on the release, 1.00, you used to have to make sure you explored fully every tile in this area. But now, I'm not sure what update changed it. But now when you complete the train, every every piece of the map gets explored automatically. So you don't worry about any parts of the map you haven't explored in the train. They automatically get explored for you when you complete the train. Now it's going to wait for Zangetsu because he normally helps you get up here. He's obviously got, maybe he's nipped to the toilet, I don't know. Yep, yeah, and um, anything see me missing in this area, don't worry, we are going to be coming back here later. Do not worry guys. So here, get this red chest for 2,000 gold. Unlock that shortcut gate for later. And then make your way to the right. Yeah, just pass all these punks. Ignore the little playboy bunnies. Right up here. And there's going to be a chest with a honey barmy. Yep. Yeah. Just loot that weapon, drop down to the bottom, and then go right to engage a boss. So again, a pretty simple boss, guys. This is the um, gluten train. I think it's Thomas Thomas's um, arch nemesis. This guy. Yeah. So um, you shouldn't need to use any consumables here. Just when he's attacking with that sort of machine gun-like attack, go and hide behind Zangetsu. Cause he'll guard. He'll guard it with his weapon. And then go back and start to use a flame cannon on his mouth again. Once you've used all your MP, just attack him with your sword. But normally, it goes down pretty quick, as long as you're making your, make sure you're sort of um, connecting with all of your flame cannon, all of your fireballs. And there you go. Yeah, pretty simple guys, gluten train. Obviously there is a bit of a time limit, make sure you kill him before that time limit ends. We've got a trophy locomotive and the hammer knuckle. And that's it guys, that's the train done. So like I say, once you've completed the train, you should find it's all explored automatically. If I go back on the map, see there you go, it's all fully explored for me. Even though you actually saw me miss some tiles. No, I have not edited that in. It does genuinely get fully explored. Like I say, it didn't on 1.00. I'm not sure what update they changed it. But I think it's because there's a bit of a glitch. If you didn't, if you, did, if you didn't get in a tile on your first pass through, it's quite difficult to get that tile on um, further plays because you couldn't re-enter the boss room. You can re-enter the train later, but you can't re-enter the boss room. And if you missed a tile in the boss room, you'd actually sort of missed it for good. And I think that's why they patched it in, so it's automatic. Yeah, get that breakable wall there, guys, for HP max up. And then make your way all the way down to the bottom. Now we're going to head into the secret sorcery lab. We're not going to do this next area. Just going to get inside, get to a save point, and that'll be it, guys. We're making a good start, guys. Like, what are we? Like an hour in, you've got your flame cannon sort of maxed out pretty much. You've got your flame rings. you got most, you sort of, you got your double jump. You're going to get another sort of movement ability in the next video. The boss in this area gives you reflector ray. It lets you sort of fit through little tight gaps. Yeah, make sure you get that blue chest. You actually want to make sure you get a black pepper in this area. So that blue chest there was not a black pepper. You might want to just suspend up until it is, or you can try out this blue chest. If you do not get a black pepper in any of these two blue chests, guys, suspend up and probably try that one again. And then come to a save point, guys, and save your game. Um, and we're in the secret sorcery lab, lab as we ended the last part here. And we're going to begin with boss fight. So this guy, he's not too bad. His name is Abathin. 
And I just pretty much use a flame cannon. You shouldn't need to use any consumables. You might have to use one or two potions. But you shouldn't, shouldn't need to use any ethers, guys. So just keep spamming your flame cannon. Jumping behind him if you can. With most of the bosses in this game, jumping behind them normally works because you avoid their attacks. And yeah, just keep attacking him with flame cannon. Like I say, full MP bar should be enough to kill him with just maybe a few attacks afterwards. But you might just have to heal up a little bit of potions. I mean, I've just used all my MP and he's dead. That was like, what? About five more attacks or something after completely expending my uh, MP gauge. But yeah, you'll get the reflector ray. With that, you can bounce off reflective surfaces. So if you see any mirrors lying around, you can reflect off them. There's not really that much to reflect off. I mean, you mainly use it to get through tight gaps. And um, I've just changed. I've just put Reflector Ray onto a shortcut bind, as you saw. Yeah, it's helpful to have some shortcut binds. Just sometimes if you get to a gap and you need to quickly switch ref Reflect Away. Use the shortcut bind, switch to it quickly and then switch back. And we've just warped to the Cathedral. So Cathedral next. Yeah, I just realised I didn't have anything equipped on my hair. And I need a hairband to hold my hair in place. I've just killed a demon. That should be two demons of four slain. Right, and make way left. That demon, by the way, if you want to give yourself more damage, you could actually farm aug augment intelligence from him. Yeah, augment intelligence. That increase, obviously, your intelligence, so you'll do more damage with your, your magic. Basically, your flame cannon. I'm not doing so, but if you wanted to, you can. Yeah, then you come down here, use some reflector ray, grab a capacity max up. Loot that chest for that sword with a weird name. Um, Makua Hilt or something. Yep, then make way up here, guys. When you're coming up this room, try to uncover every tile if you can. I think it's this room where I missed a tile, actually. Yeah, just make sure you uncover every tile. Try not to fall down like a dumbass like me. Yeah, it's this room and another one on the top right of the um, whole map. I miss a tile near the end. Yeah, so in this spell, there should be your HP max up, hidden. Just jump up there to get that. If you're low on health, that will give you full health. This chest on the top left, a blue chest. Get that. Yeah, this tile here, some, somehow it doesn't fill in properly. I think it's this one with the capacity max up. And yep, get that, guys. So, it's actually filled in there, but for some reason later on, it's not filled in. I think it was that room. Yeah, so here you can smash the middle of the roof. And you can gain access in and get some few, few more items. There'll be a blue chest on the... Uh, sorry, a MP max up on the left. A familiar silver knight shard on the left and also a HP max up on the right. You've already got that familiar, so what that's going to be doing, that's just going to increase his effectiveness a little bit. Probably increase his damage and whatnot. Yeah, normally just getting more getting more shards are the same. It normally like it increases like your attack, for example. It might increase your speed, depending on the shard. Right, you're going to make a way up here next. Try to uncover all the tiles on your way up. Get that blue chest. There's a HP max up on that middle sort of, um, yeah, that middle beam protruding out. There's a blue chest here. Then use your reflector ray to get up high. Normally what you might have to do is jump at the top of the reflector ray. Jump once you get control back. And you can normally do a little jump at the end. Loot that red chest for the gold. Loot that chest on the top right for scrambled eggs. And they're coming here, guys. Just go all the way through. Now in this room, don't bother going up any higher than the sort of um, level you came in at. And this bell, just stand on the side and keep sort of jumping and moving it and it should fall down like so. And then we want to do the same to this bell as well. Yeah, so just keep standing on the side and it should eventually fall down. This one seems to... Hold it on a bit longer. 
what it normally asks. It's normally fell off by now. There we go. It should damage the floor a little bit and then damage it a bit more and that should reveal a little hole. Come in here. Hit that lever for a shortcut and then grab the hair apparent 10 from the chest guys. That shortcut's very important shortcut needed for later. There's a secret wall on the right here with a HP max up inside. Get that, come in this room, loot the blue chest behind the um, shield guy. Try to explore all the tiles in this room as well. Carry on through guys. And on the bottom right here is going to be a safe point. And get ready for a boss. So this boss, she can be a little bit difficult. Her name is Blood Bloodless. Yeah, not not literally, you'll find out. You're going to kill her with Eferno Breath. Eferno Breath is the shard we got from killing the twin dragons. It's actually a really good shard, but it, it get, eats through your MP really, really fast. But it, it's it got great DPS, just damages, just a lot of damage in a very short time. Problem is, you just need your... You need your enemy to remain stationary for it to really work so yeah if you use inferno breath you'll probably have to use high at the times too maybe a few potions but hopefully you get you can get away without your potions so yeah you're going to jump over her and we get an opportunity that's it use inferno breath actually look at all that damage it's doing that's it use high ether to get your mp back just use one at a time so you don't waste it and again once you get a good opportunity spam it again one more high ether, and that should be enough. Only a few more attacks after that should finish off, guys. Yeah, she does recover health at one point. AI's glitched a bit here. And she's gone, guys. You could probably use another high ether and um, just bam Inferno Breath a bit more to kill her a bit quicker. But as you can see, you kill her pretty quick, anyhow. But yeah, that's it guys, that's Bloodless. Now you've got the Bloodless Shard. Basically a whole triangle to suck up blood and it heals you up. Blood from uh, damaging enemies. But it uses MP, so it's not that great at the moment. But you do need it to progress the story. So once you beat her, use a waystone, come back here to the hub area. Come over to Prince Harry and grab the potatoes from him. Ten potatoes. Make sure you get a potato peeler as well. And then come and talk to... Um, Lindsay and take all these quests from her Like I say you could have done a lot of these quests by now, but I'm just leaving most of them till the end None of them give none of them give like a really great reward guys where it's like game-changing So it's not really any rush to do them. So I'm just waiting until we've got better equipment before we start killing enemies So we've got more chance of it's all it's all about a drops. So you'll find out later you're all about the drop rate. You need high luck for that. So you want to buy two ethers. Thank you. Come back anytime. You've got more money. You can buy a few more if you want. Probably buy a few more healing items. I'll leave that up to you. Just whenever I do buy things, you need to make sure you buy them as well. So if you don't have enough money to buy something which I do, you're going to have to go and farm money somewhere. The paintings in Tower of Twin Dragons, by the way, they drop oak. And I think oak sells for quite a bit at this point. I mean, there's much more expensive items later. But at this point in the game, yeah, they're a good source of money. Just you, you keep killing the paintings, get the um, get the oak which I drop, and then sell it. That works quite well. So just warp to um, the entrance. Can come to the right down, get that blue chest, and now we're heading to the left now. Now we've got the blood. The bloodless, it's not even called bloodless, the blood steel shard. Yeah, now I've got blood steel shard. We'll come down here, we'll save our game. Yeah, with blood steel, you can come down here to this pool of blood and press triangle, guys. Unlock that tile on the top right to make sure you discover it. And that should suck up all this blood. And there you go, you can drop down, guys, and drop into the forbidden waterway. Yeah, that blood steel, like I say, I don't really use it much. Um, I use it at the end when we get Gable's glasses, which makes it so you've got infinite max, eight, infinite MP. Yeah, if you if you attack a, um, a fleshy enemy type, so a knight won't really work, or one of these axe knights won't work. It's got to be a fleshy type enemy, like a 
uh, like a wall for example. You attack one of them with like a slashing sword and it makes all blood come out. And that's how you can use your blood steel to get blood from them. Demon there, another fleshy type enemy, these guys. So in this room, going to head left here to find a red sofa. And we're going to have a little sit down guys and save our game. And then back out here, just continue downwards, take the bottom right exit. Continue right a little bit more, down this massive shaft. So when you make your way down here, try to explore every tile. You have every tile on your way down. So if you miss one, make sure you go back and recover it. Come left here, you'll get a blue chest. And you'll get a rose ring from a chest next to it. A second rose ring. We got one of them early on, if you remember. So yeah, as you're coming through, remember, make sure you uncover every map tile here. We will not be coming back in this room. Yep, spoiler there. We will not be coming back in this room. Over here, guys, it's a breakable wall. With a critical ring inside. Get that. Come here, to the end. That's not a demon. That is a arch demon, I believe. Yeah, so come in here, get this blue chest. I'm always going to try and get blue chests as we go through the game. No matter what, no matter what point we're at in this guide, we're almost always any nearby blue chest. Always, it's always a good idea to loot them, guys, just because of their RNG nature. So in this room, another blue chest. Them fried fish, by the way. You get them in blue chests in Forbidden Waterway, but they're actually very, very good healing items. And they, they spawn in them blue chests quite often. So down here, uncover the bottom right map tile. And then come this room on the bottom left. To find another red chair, guys. We're going to sit down, lick our wounds, and save our game. Now we're going to make our way up and to the right. And they should uncover all the map tiles in this room. Yeah, these rooms I've been coming through so far. Make sure you are uncovering all the map tiles in them. A lot of these will not be coming back in. So, a breakable wall here with a capacity max up inside. Smash it with your sword, just attack the wall. The brick, it will break eventually. So, in this room, you've got some underwater enemies. And as you see at the moment, you can't really swim. You can float, but you can't swim. So, you see that shard we just got, Aqua Stream. You actually need that to progress. These decima, these jellyfish type enemies drop it. They're called decimas. Now you want to keep killing them until you get that shard at Aqua Stream. But even if you get a first time like I do, you want to make sure you kill at least eight. So you want to kill at least eight of them decimas. So keep coming in. You know when you've killed eight because you'll see the tally on the bottom right. It's actually for a quest. I mean, it just said five of eight for me. This will be six of eight. There you go, bottom right. So, you want to do both of things, guys. Get Aqua Stream and also kill eight of these. This should be number eight, so we can carry on. And once you've got Aqua Stream, as you can see, this is what it does. It allows you to move, sort of, sort of like a, it like propels you in the water, as you can see. Don't know what I was doing there. I think I was just checking there, so no more left. But yeah, that's eight guys. You actually can't loot anything in the water for now. Yeah, I, I don't think I realized I'd killed eight. Oh, there we go. Now I have. Yeah, so any chest within the water itself, underwater, you can't actually loot them yet. You need another shard to do so. So do not be tempted to try to loot any chests. You will not be able to. Just make your way through. These enemies, you don't have to worry so much about killing them just yet. Obviously, because you're propelling yourself away from the enemies, your water is naturally just hitting them. So, whatever. But even if you don't get any shards, which I just got, like I got that shard from that uh, fish, Fornius, don't worry because we will be coming back and killing that enemy later. So, through here, carefully avoid them traps and get this MP max up in the bottom right. We will be coming back in this room, so don't worry about uncovering every single tile. Yeah, them traps, be very careful. They do do quite a lot of damage, and it's quite a way before our next save point. Yeah, if you do need to use any healing items, you can do, I guess. 
Yeah, you got fried fish, remember, which you just got from them blue chests in the recent area. Forbidden waterway. So in here, we're heading to the desert now. Now the desert, the blue chests in this area can drop gold. Gold is one of the rarest materials, but it's also one of the most expensive. And it's a very low chance to get them in blue chests here. On earlier guys, on earlier drafts of this, I used to farm this area for gold, but we do it a completely different way now. There's hardly no RNG involved now in terms of us getting gold in this. Just costs a bit more money. But yeah, come in here guys, uncover that warp gate. We'll be warping here later. Carefully make your way through here. Like I say, if you're low on health, be very, very careful. There is a warp gate there. So if you want to, you could warp away to another area with a close by save point. Save your game to refill your HP and MP and then come back here. So be very careful coming through here. Do not want to die without saving it. And this all lose all that progress we just made in the water world. So yeah, carefully come down here. All these blue chests are looting along the way. You do the same. If you're lucky, you'll get gold. If you're not so lucky, you won't. Like I say, don't worry too much. I've added my strategy of getting gold in this guide. Doesn't use any RNG now. So don't worry about it. Another blue chest there. Then make way up here, guys. And there'll be finally be a safe point on the left. That's it. Put your feet up and save your game. So this boss here is probably one of the hardest bosses you've faced so far. Yep, yeah, if you thought other bosses were difficult that we've already beaten this game, this one's going to be harder for you. You want to use high ether for this fight. High ether times three. You shouldn't need any more, but if you've got extra, of course it will help. So if you're having too much trouble, you might just want to go back. Use a waystone, stock up at the hub area, and then come back and try them again. Or you might want to go and upgrade your flame cannon further by going to the pirate ship and um, destroying the cannon enemies. So you get your shard to nine. To get a shard to 9, grade 9, all you need to do is keep collecting the shard. You need to collect the shard 9 times. That will increase your damage output. You could also get the Augment Intelligence Passive Shard from the Demons back in the Cathedral. That will increase your damage with the Flame Cannon as well. And not Flame Cannon, any fire, any fire based attacks like Inferno Breath as well. Yeah, all that will increase your damage with Inferno Breath. Unfortunately, with Inferno Breath, you can't increase your grade on it. Because it came from a boss, you'd have to keep doing New Game Plus. I mean, you can upgrade the rank by talking to Johannes and using whatever materials it requires, but I don't really upgrade Inferno Breath. I mainly upgrade the Flame Cannon. That's pretty much it. But yeah, this is what we're doing, guys. Just a bit. Just keep chasing him down. It's annoying. He keeps running away. I need to jump over him when he's about to attack and then attack from the other side. So be very careful. He will lob all different elements down. He'll lob ice down, flames, poison. He'll use curse attacks, he'll lob these sort of time spheres around which will slow you down when you walk inside him. So yeah, just be very careful guys. Like I say, it's a little bit, it's quite a tricky fight at this point in the game with the very minimal build we're rocking at the moment. It's one of them, you just you keep chasing him, avoiding his attacks you basically can and you just try to heal through it and then um, recover your MP at the same time and just keep attacking him. Inferno Breath works well just because of the DPS. I mean, you might want to try a Flame Cannon just because you don't waste so much MP with Flame Cannon. But the thing is with Flame Cannon, it seems to just make this fight take a lot longer. Inferno Breath works well on him, but it obviously can be tricky to get in. Get into an opportunity where you can use it for a good sort of few seconds. And once you beat him, guys, you get our trophy. So once you beat him, we're going to come left here, we're going to go back to the elevator. We're going to go down into the middle room, which should now be unsealed. Yeah, seal is now broken. Come inside and you'll get a shard, Deep Sinker. Make sure you fully explore this room. Deep Sinker, basically that gives you sort of gravity underwater, so now you can actually loot chests underwater as well. Then come in this first stop on the elevator, the only one we missed. Make sure you uncover. Every map tile here, and then get his blue chest, guys, and that'll be it. Like I say, make sure you uncovered every map tile here, and then use the waystone. Right, so back here, talk to um, Lindsay again, and hand in that quest. We get a speed belt, that's a quest 
for Martha for killing the 8 Decimus. Accepts any other quests she's got available. And then come to the bottom left, we're going to talk to, um, uh, I was going to say Lindsay, let me just spoke to her. We're going to talk to Dominique. Now it's going to sell some items first. First you want to sell the Muku, the Makua hilt. Sorry, I think I've said that completely wrong. But yeah, the Makua hilt. You also want to buy the Honibami. Uh, sorry, sell the Honibami. You want to sell Critical Ring, sell Rose Ring, and sell the Speed Belt. And then after that, you want to buy High Potion times 3, High Ether times 5, and Waystone times 5. If you've got enough, max out your high potions if you can. You can do the same with normal potions and normal ethers. Yep, there we go, guys. Pretty much all we needed to do there. Yeah, apologies on my pronunciation sometimes. A lot of these words, I've no idea how to pronounce them. Never seen them before. Yeah, once you've done all that guys, go back to the warp gate and now we're going to fast travel to the entrance yet again. Making our way to the bottom left side of the map now. And we're going to make a save point before the next boss. I would say, so you just beat that guy. I mean, he's probably been the hardest boss so far. Yeah, get that blue chest on the way down here. We're going back into Forbidden Waterway, pretty much. Yeah, we're going all the way back in down to uh, the first fork. Now, sorry, the second fork. And we're going to go left this time. Actually, I think in the first fork, I go left to begin with. Or do I wait until I get accelerator? Yeah, maybe I do. We're basically going to fork and taking the other path to which we took originally. But yeah, that boss we just fought, probably one, like I say, one of the hardest bosses so far. In terms of hard bosses left, we've got about... There's three more hard bosses in the game. And the rest are relatively easy. Yeah, so you want to come down the shaft now, you might want to save your game as you make your way past the save point. Yeah, we've got three more bosses. This next boss can be a little bit difficult. Um... Probably two bosses, actually, if I'm honest. Yes, two two tricky bosses left. Yeah, yeah, two tricky bosses. The rest are not too bad. Yeah, so we went left at the fork this time. And then we're coming down this shaft. And we're going to come left into this room and get a blue chest. Remember them, five fish are really good healing items. Carry on down this shaft. Now we've got a deep sinker shard. Yeah, this... Bottom left wall, you can break it to get MP max up. Yeah, now I've got a deep sinker, you can actually loot chests in water now. Like I say, now you've sort of got gravity in water with that deep sinker. Basically, it makes you really heavy. So, in here, just carry on to the right, there'll be a blue chest. There you go. Like I say, we're also always going to try and get blue chests nearby when we're making our way through areas, even when we're going through the area again. We'll always try and get any new by blue chests. Another blue chest here, guys. In the water. Grab it and then take this exit on the right. In this room, make way over to the right and then drop down. Do not go into the top right room. Just drop down on the right here. Smash the bottom right wall. To reveal a secret room. Come inside. Grab the gold chest for some money. That's it. 2,000 gold. And loot this HP max up. Kill the horsey, she gets in your way. If you're lucky, she might drop some it for you. But regardless, we will be coming back and farming them later anyway. Another blue chest there. I just want to uncover all the map tiles in this room as we make our way through. Yeah, couldn't let left here. Now this room you can use reflector ray to um dart through there. So yeah, make sure you use Reflector Ray, you get through that little gap. Carry on left. Through this room, get the blue chest. There will be a save point soon. 
Yeah, carry on up here. Come to the space at the top. Let's break the wall on the right for a plunder's ring. That is very, very important. Increases item drop rate and gives you more luck. And loot that chest there, guys, for the swordfish weapon. We're going to equip that weapon now, the swordfish. Yes, yeah, so like I say, make sure you've got that breakable wall on the top right as well for the plunder's ring. And then take the door on the top left, guys, to head into the next area. The secret sorcery lab. There'll be a little cutscene when you first come in. Just watch out for the enemies in the traps here. They will do a lot of damage. Yeah, so in here you want to take the room on the top right to begin with. Because there's a blue chest waiting inside for you. Yep, get that blue chest. That's it, then come into the top left room to unlock a warp gate. Ready for later. Yep, like so. And then come down to bottom left. Get that blue chest over there. And then take the bottom left door once you can. And in the bottom right, guys, it's a safe room. And that'll be the end of this video. That door on the left is a tricky boss. Yeah, like I say, you've probably got two hard boss fights left. So, got to kill Doppelganger to begin with. Like I say, Doppelganger, she is quite a difficult fight. You're basically fighting yourself. And, yeah, I'm just making sure my swordfish was on my shortcut menu. Okay, so, with Doppelganger, she's very mobile. You're basically fighting yourself. Which seems to have better attacks. Yeah, you're basically... She's very mobile. So we're going to use Flame Cannon. And when she uses this attack, quickly switch Inferno Breath. And if you're quick enough... I mean, I wasn't even quick enough then. Yeah, you can switch to Inferno Breath and damage her quite a bit when she does that Dragon Attack. Basically her own Inferno Breath. Kind of. But yeah, this is all you're doing. Pretty much keep trying to get behind her. Use Flame Cannon when you get an opportunity. Make sure you heal when you need to. You have to use at least height at the times too. And some healing items. So yeah, and a good thing with this woman, try not to get too close to her. Always good when you're attacking her, try to stay out of her. You see that attack she's just done? When she sort of swiped a sword in like a arc, circular arc. When you're attacking it, try to make sure you're outside the range of that attack. Because that attack comes out of nowhere and it does quite a lot of damage. And if you're attacking her from like up close, it's going to hit you. But if you're just outside the attack range, it will miss and it really helps. So if you miss the attack, uh, sorry, the dodge opportunity, the attack will miss you anyway because you're outside the range. Yeah, so again, when she does that dragon attack, you just saw me do it. Make sure you can quickly get behind it. So you always want to be reasonably close. But not too close, not too far away. And like I say, when you just dragon attack, get behind her and use Inferno Breath for to do a lot of damage. I think she's doing it again, is she? Yeah. So you know when she's about to do it, there'll be like a red aura, which will be around her. That'll indicate she's about to do that dragon attack. Quicker, get behind her, use your own Inferno Breath and do a lot of damage while she's stationary. And just keep up, guys. Like I say, it's quite a difficult fight, that one. If you're having too much trouble, we can go back. You can buy more healing items if you wanted to. You know Rice Ball? Yeah, you want to come back to save game afterwards, of course. Just so if you die, you ain't got to redo it. And to um, refill your HP and MP. Yeah, so you probably gathered by now. When it comes to potions and ethers, you can only buy a certain amount of stock. But when it comes to actual food, you can buy up to 99. So what you can do, if you want to make, if you want more healing items, you can actually farm a bit of money. And go and spend a lot of your money on rice balls. And so you just come into battle with rice balls. And they can just sort of, sort of try to outheal her. Obviously keep damaging her and just outheal her. You basically can. Yep, so um, we've beat her. We've come down here next. Try to uncover all the map tiles in this room. We're making our way down the bottom. So we want to get that blue chest. This one just here. Carry on across. You'll see this ball pointing out the wall. Try and give you a little clue. But yeah, smash a wall here to get the cut purses ring. Yeah, that fake wall, just break it to get the cut purse's ring. The cow gives it away. Then carry on right, and then down, and then left into the Inferno Cave. 
Inferno Cave, we're going to get the shards invert. Yeah, it lets you go upside down. Which basically allows you to go pretty much anywhere, almost. There's a few things which are still locked to the final sort of movement shard to get dimension shift. But with invert, you can pretty much go anywhere. To, to use it, just press up, down, and then I think it's up, down, and jump really fast. So this area, do not worry about covering the map tiles. The enemies do a lot of damage and you just want to get through it as quick as possible and to the next save point as soon as you can. So in here, carry on right. Like I said, avoid getting all the map tiles, we will be back here anyway later. you got to carefully get up here and go left, up and left and then up and right. That's all my fried fish gone. Yeah, while you're in this room though, you want to break this wall on the top left to get the lethality ring. Yeah, top left to get the lethality ring. This gap, you're going to have to use reflect ray to get through. Just use it and then switch back to your normal setup. Almost at save point. It's in an, actually two rooms away. Take the bottom right door in this room. Jump over the yellow chest. And here it is guys, save room. So yeah, safety game here. Right, this boss you want to use Inferno Breath. So make sure you've got Inferno Breath ready. And I tell you, bottom right door, guys. That's it, this guy. See, he's walking on the ceiling because he's used Invert. When you kill him, you're going to get it as well. So yeah, this boss is quite easy. Just use Inferno Breath. Use, probably going to have to use two high ethers. It's actually a really simple boss fight this one. There we go. Got a trophy guys, Rodeo Star. Yeah, we should get invert. That's it. So now you just press up down and then jump I think it is to invert. Yeah now come to the left and then left again guys to unlock the warp gates. And you want to warp to the Tower of Twin Dragons. We're going to get the armor now which lets you walk into traps and not take any damage. Yeah, these paintings here, they can be a good source of money for now. Like I say, they drop oak and um, you can sell elk. Oak sells, it sells for quite a bit. So it can be helpful. And if you equip the plunder's ring, that make the enemies more likely to drop their items. And then outside of the plunder's ring, you're going to have high luck. So we're going back in the room where we fought the boss earlier. But when we get here, we're going to invert. Go all the way down to the well, bottom slash top. Invert. And then get his chest, guys, for the Aegis plate. The armor. That's it. I'm just going to edit that onto my shortcut. And then I'm going to use a waste stone. So back here, we're going to go to Dominique. We're going to sell the Invisible Blade. We're going to sell the Lethality Ring. And we're going to sell the Cut Purses Ring. What are you looking to sell? Yeah, so Invisible Blade, Lethality Ring, and Cut Purses Ring. Is this right? Thank you. Invisible Blade will be hard to find, guys, but you should be able to find it in there somewhere. That's it. Once you found them, uh, sold them, you're going to buy as many high potions as you can. And high ethers. That should be five high potions and five high ethers. We're going to save the game. Yes, yeah, we've got a long time now until the next save point. And we're going to head right back into the entrance. Just going to take the normal front gate. Yeah, we're going to go and knock, knock on the front door and head inside. Yeah, so just make your way through here like before. We're still moving quite slow. We're, we're not far away from getting that accelerator shard, by the way. Accelerator is one which makes you move at like 10 times the speed. It's actually awesome once you get that. 
Yeah, so here, invert to get that final map tile in this room and also to get his capacity max up. Yeah, we get Accelerator in the next video, guys. So part five, you're going to get a shard which makes you move mega, mega fast. It changes the pace of this game completely. It's a shame you can't get it at the start. Yeah, massive shame there. Yeah, so in the entrance. Yeah, and as you come through here, make sure you lock the gate. That's it. Make sure it's locked. You'll find out why later. Yes, make sure the gate's locked. Then come in here. And now you're going to make your way to the far top of this room. But you want to uncover every map tile on your way up. So you're going to have to invert. You're going to have to sort of go up and back down a few times to uncover all the tiles on both sides. Yeah, make sure you've got that Aegis plate equipped, by the way. Remember, that makes it so you don't take any damage from uh, hazards. Not even lava. You don't even take damage in lava with that Aegis plate equipped. Yeah, so in this room, get the HP max up and this shortcut shard. We're just looting these uh, rooms, on this, these side rooms, as we make our way up. Yeah, so we need to use craft work here to move the Iron Maiden. That's it, just get that tile before you come in this room here. Sorry, on this ledge. Move the uh, Iron Maiden again with craft work. Now we're at the top. You can come in this final room, side room on the top left. If the orientation is correct, yeah, be top left room and get the crow hat. You can equip that because it gives you a little bit more defense. Yeah, make sure you got the final tiles in the shaft. That's it. And then take the room on the top right, guys. To head into the Oriental Sorcery Lab. The enemies here will do a lot of damage. So again, just try to get through here quick, avoiding damage best you can. Like I say, the safe room for this, safe room, there's only one safe point in this area and it's right at the end, unfortunately. Yes, look at that chest, 2,000 gram, uh, sorry, 2,000 gold. You should get a trophy treasure, hun treasure hunter. If you don't have that yet, don't worry, you'll get it naturally at some point. It's for looting 100 chests in total, I think it is. You can't miss it. If you didn't get that then, you probably missed a chest somewhere, which I got. So just bear that in mind. Right, in this room, go through that gate from the left. Go through that gate. Jump over this one. Yeah, just follow me there and try to do that same route. you got to make sure you walk through the gates from the same direction I am to end up in the same place. And this room here. Yeah, so kill this enemy. Loot this chest for the ramen recipe. Now, you're going to keep killing this enemy until you get a bovine plume. Oh now, look at me, I've got it for sort of second time. Yes, like I say, you want the bovine plume. Very, very important, you want one of them. And then come back in here and take the same path I do through these gates. Yeah, so again guys, bovine plume, that is very, very important. Make sure you keep killing that enemy until you get it. I was quite lucky there, it normally takes me like 10 or 15 kills to get it. But yeah, bovine plume. What that will let us do, after we've done this area, it's going to let us craft a new shard. Which basically gives you, lets you jump to the very top of the screen. So you don't have to keep using invert, you can just jump mega high then. Very useful. And then come in here, break this wall on the left for your MP max up. Yeah, you can also equip that plunder's ring which we got earlier to increase item drop rate and increase your luck. You can actually equip that when you're killing that enemy for the bovine plume, just increase the chances of it dropping. But yeah, obviously, you've got it, guys. You make it through here. You've got that MP max up. In this room, attack the nose and it will drop a food. Yeah, the man you. Make sure you grab that food from him. Carry on down here. Get this blue chest. I'm inverting through this room just because it makes it easier to avoid the enemies when you're on the ceiling, as you can see. Almost at a safe point. Yes, in the stream, grab the blue chest and save points. Yes, not many blue chests in this area, and you do actually have to farm quite a few of them later. We're going to be doing that much later, guys. Right, so save your game and get ready for Zangetsu, number two. He's a lot, e he's a lot easier this time. 
All you want to do is stay on the ceiling with invert. Yeah, you find it with invert, you can make a lot of bosses easier. Yeah, so stay on the ceiling. Again, just keep going behind him. And use a flame cannon. Very easy, guys. Just keep, like I say, keep behind him. That's it. That's all you got to do. Just keep doing that. You might have to use height at the times too. Because he normally takes that much. Um, but the current damage we're doing, it's normally, yeah, it's normally about height at the times too. I need to kill him. Yeah, each time he turns around, just make sure you go behind him. And you see him buff his sword with different elements throughout the fight. That sort of indicates what stage he's at. So, flame. He'll also go buff it with ice. I think he buffs it with curse as well. Quite a few different elements. But yeah, it's pretty easy this way. There we go, you got our trophy, his blade. Once well, you've got that, go and talk with him afterwards and you'll take his sword from him. Zangetsuto. Right, and you want to equip that sword but also make sure you put it on your shortcuts. Right, and use the waystone guys. Just make sure you take his sword before you use the waystone, do not forget that. You actually need that sword, it's story related, that sword is, it's needed to a progress. Right, now we're going to come back into um, the hub area. Now we're going to buy max high potions and max high others. Right, then we're going to go head over to Johannes and we're going to craft the high jump shard. High jump, this is the shard you need that bovine plume from. And you'll see how helpful it is in the moment. So yeah, craft, go into shards on the far right and high jump. Like I say, you need bovine plume and du double jump. You have double jump anyway, story related. But yeah, that's it. And yep, yeah, now look what you can do. You can just press this button to jump really high. I think you just jump up and press circle. Hold up and press, yeah, jump in the air. While in airborne, hold up and press circle. And you'll launch in the air. Makes it much quicker to get around. Right, then we're going to walk back to the cathedral. Yeah, kill that demon. That's demon three or four. I've got augment intelligence then. That's the shard which can make it so you do more damage for your magic. Yeah, so kill this demon as well. That should be demon times four. That's it. That's all four demons killed, guys. So I don't need to kill any more demons. Unless you need, need to get augment intelligence later on when we do the farming. So yeah, use high jump, guys. Get up here quickly. Up here, take the second door on the right. No, sorry, go straight to the top first. Get the HP max up in that bell. Now you've got high jump, you can get up easier. Yeah, straight to the top, now you've got high jump. Top left, you'll find this chest, the very fine equipment recipe. And over here, you'll find 2000 gold. Yep, and take the second exit on the right from the bottom. Get this blue chest. That's it, carry on right. Going to make our way to the top of this area, uncover it fully as we make our way up, but also loot all the items. So over here you've got a familiar Silver Knight Shard, makes that a bit more powerful. Head into this bell to get a MP max up. There's a red chest down there with 2000 gold inside. Make our way up to the top left. And get the key to the carpenter's room. Unlock this shortcut gate. Come in here. Loot that red chest for another 2,000 gold. Grab that HP max up. Right, and take the store here, guys. On the top right. It's going to take you into the Hall of Termination. Right, we're going to begin by taking this room on the top right. Just going to ignore past all these enemies. Ignore past, that makes sense. Going to get past them all. In this room, go left and get his blue chest on the bottom left. This one here. Then take the room on the top right. And 
and get that chest find equipment recipe back in here go up unlock that shortcut gate on the right smash this wall on the left and get these glasses the gauge glasses what they do guys if you equip them on your um, accessory slot it will let you see enemies HP it doesn't really it's done in a weird way you don't you only, you only see the HP you t remaining when you attack him it doesn't actually show the gauge it just just shows you how much HP they have remaining when you attack them so you attack them once it'll say like 300 attack them again it'll say 280 attack them again it'll say 250 it's a really weird way to doing it but yeah save your game there and then come in this room don't loot anything don't worry we're going to be reloading that save in a minute do not loot anything guys and also do not save just make sure you just saved your game back there but after beating this guy do not save you'll see why in a second now all you want to do just kill him there's actually two ways to kill this guy and one of them well you can get a missable trophy so you want to kill this guy you want to make sure you've got Zanget suits, um, Suto equipped I mean I'm not using it but I've got it equipped yeah Zanget Suto make sure you got it equipped and just uh, kill him with flame cannon guys keep jumping behind him we'll go down soon enough you'll get a trophy just a flicker and you'll get another one as well Yeah, these are missable. Yeah, that one, a serper. So for one of these, the missable one, yeah, you normally have to you have to kill him with Zangetsuto in your inventory, that sword. That gives you a missable trophy. Because if you kill him or if you kill him without it in your possession, you'll miss out on the trophy. Or if you just do him if you kill him the way he's supposed to the good ending, and um you can miss that trophy as well. But yeah, once you killed him, just quit the game. Well, it'll quit anyway. Load the save back in. You'll begin here before the boss fight. Now we are going to grab the loot. We're going to unlock this warp gate first. Yeah, so now unlock that warp gate on the left. Come in here. Get his chest at the top with the legendary equipment recipe inside. Smash the staircase in the middle. Drop down. Grab the capacity max up. And then grab the MP max up, guys, on the right here. Right, and go back to him. So, what we're going to do now, you need to make sure you've got Zangetsuto equipped, of course. Now, you do not want to kill him properly. You can use the gauge glasses if you want to, to see how much health he's got there. Basically, when he's in critical health, the moon in the background will turn right. Uh, yeah, turn, uh, sorry, turn red. And you have to attack it with Zangetsuto to, to sort of carry on progress towards a good ending. And to open up the last part of the game. Yeah, so at our current damage level, about nine flame cannons will be enough to make the moon go red. See? Yeah, about flame cannon times nine, as long as they all connect. Like I say, the aim is to get his health to critical. That made the moon in the background turn red, and then you and then you attack it with Zanget uh, Suto, and that basically puts you on the path towards the good ending. So if you accidentally killed him, just load the game back in, guys, and try again. And once you're on the path to the good ending, like say from slashing the red moon with Zangetsuto, use your waste, uh, waste stone, guys, head back to the hub area. So back here, going to talk to Lindsay, going to report back the death of um, Porter. We get still times five. Come in here, talk to Dominique. What are you looking to buy? Now we're going to buy some things. We're going to buy potion times max, high potion times max. Ether times max and high ether times max. You're going to buy waystone times max and going to sell any other money, guys, on rice ball times max. Is this right? Many thanks. Thank you. Come back anytime. Yeah, the reason for doing this is because this next boss is going to take all your money, so just spend everything on rice ball. By what I just said, potions first and waystone, then spend everything else on rice ball, guys, till you've got nothing left. So we're going to get to the um, X. Accelerator. I'm trying to remember the name of it then. It's going to say accessibility. Now we're going to get the accelerator shard at the start of this video, and it's one. It's probably the most useful shard in the game because it makes you move at like ten times the speed at which you currently are. So you just get through the game much, much quicker. Makes farming quicker. Everything becomes so much quicker once you get this. 
So yeah, part five guys, all we're doing, we're coming up here first. We're coming over to the um, fast travel picture and we're gonna warp to the Garden of Silence. Yeah, so once we're here, now we've just killed um, Gebel in the last, or Jebel, Gebel, Gerbil, whatever you wanna call him, in the last video. We just killed him twice, got the miss missable trophies connected to him. And we finished off by slashing the moon, the red moon, and then going back to Arbonville and making it safe. Yeah, here, grab this MP max up, guys. And then come over to the left, smash this breakable wall, and get the fried egg from inside. Save that until you need some HP, and then you can use it. Right, and slash the red moon. Yeah, you can't slash this moon until you've um, defeated Gebel. Well, not defeated him, but brought his health down to critical. And you slash that moon in the background on this, on this sort of boss arena. Then it lets you come here and slash that red moon. Then you press up to go inside the little portal. It'll warp you to the far east side of the map. To the den of behemoths. This is basically like a enlarged area. You're like mini here and everything else is gigantic. But as you make your way through here, any rooms which we pass through, we're going to try to explore every tile in the room. First, we're going straight to accelerator. But yeah, once we get that guy, we're going to try and make sure we uncover every map tile as you make your way through this area. Because a little bit later, we're going to need 99 point, well, 99% map completion and over. And we're just going to have enough. When it comes to the point where we need 99% map completion, I've got, I think, 99.30%. 99.30%. And I think normally two map tiles normally covers around 10% on the completion tracker. So, yeah, you really do need to make sure you're exploring every single tile that I am. So, yeah, come in here. There'll be a blue chest. Make sure you explore every tile. Honestly, you're going to love it once you get this accelerator shards. It completely changes the pace of the game once you get this. Yeah, you can get that blue chest there in the corner. And it's going to drop down. We're going to go in this first door on the left here. I almost... There's one point when I was rooting this speedrun, this platinum speedrun, on, um, on the randomizer mode. Because on the randomizer mode, it, it moves all the shards around. And it makes it possible for you to get accelerator at the very start of the game. So there was one point when I was rooting Platinum on there. The problem with Randomizer is there's a good chance some items might not even be sort of present in that playthrough. Yeah, smash that wall there guys for capacity max up. Yeah, it's possibility, possibility there might be a few items or a shard or two which you will not be able to get just because of the way the Randomizer works. And they've, they've patched the Randomizer a lot of times and... Um, I'm still not confident that there's going to be every single item in the game. I think there will still be an item missing, so... That's the reason why I didn't really go for Randomizer. I wanted to, just because, like I say, you can get Accelerator at the very start of the game, but... To do so, you have to move everything around, and um, it can make it so you don't get everything. So yeah, just doing it on the story. So yeah, get that blue chest, guys. Come in here, and you want to make sure you've got the um, Aegis Plate equipped. There's going to be quite a few traps in here. Aegis Plate, and you also want to have Reflector Ray. So Reflector Ray Shard and Aegis Plate. And you got to beat this guy in a race. There you go. And the way I beat him, I keep running along and using Reflector Ray. Because that will allow you to dash ahead, but it also freezes time as well for a moment. Yep, obviously here you can just use High Jump to move really quick. But once you get here, you should be quite far in front of him already, like I am. That reflector ray really helps. All you got to do is pass this finish line before him. That's it. Once you've gone through it, you can start making way back. Don't worry. As long as you've gone through the finish line, you'll win. And then once you get through the finish line, you'll get your accelerator shot. Here it comes. You'll see in a second how quick it makes you. So you want to change this for your own million manipulative shards on all your builds yeah look at this crazy so yeah that's pretty much it guys now we're at that point where we're ready to start farming and such 
but we're just going to get a bit further on in the story to get the dimension shift shards with dimension shift you've basically got all the ability shards main sort of movement abilities so you can access everything in the game at that point and what's your health in this area so at this point you know I'm quite low level my armor isn't great and you're gonna take a lot of damage so just be careful and we're gonna get all these blue chests on the way back remember make sure you uncover every tile in this area as you make your way up so yeah, just make your way back up to that big chamber yeah you got blue chest at the top here as well yeah problem is the enemies are so big you can't help but just run into them Right, yeah, so then rice balls coming in handy now. So yeah, we're going to drop down here and just uncover all the map tiles on this bottom part. Yes, yeah, make our way all the way across. Yeah, just uncovering all the bottom map tiles to begin with. Because the way we want to go in is actually in the middle on the right. So yeah, all the way over here, guys, get that MP max up. That get all your MP back. Because accelerate it, just slow the use of MP. So yeah, now I'm going to cover all these map tiles to the left, which I missed, and we'll go back to the right. Get this chest here, guys, from Millionaire's Key. Very important. Yeah, your MP is going to start going down really quick now, especially now you're using the accelerator all the time. But in the next video, we should... I mean, we're going to start doing a bit of prep in this one, but in the next video, we should get the ability... the, um, the food to make it so you recharge your MP really fast, which is going to be really helpful, guys. You actually re start recharging MP. You don't really recharge it now that fast. But you will do in the next video once we eat the foods. So yeah, get that hem HP max up. Again, make sure you're uncovering all the tiles here. Get this blue chest. Now this red chest down here, do not loot it. We're going to loot it later. Do not loot that red chest, guys. Just uncover the map tiles. And then come in here. Get that blue chest. Make way down. Yeah, this boss coming up, he nicks all your money off you. And the more money you have, the more damage, the more money he's going to be able to pinch from you. And so it's more it's going to heal him. So um, we want to leave that gold, that chest until later. So it's not going to basically aid the boss fight. I mean, there's some money you would have collected between the last save point and getting to the boss, which you can't really avoid. Yeah, so through here, we're going to go to this room on top left. I'm going to kill this dragon. If you're a bit low in HP, just go down a bit more and there'll be a save point on the right. Go in the previous room, go down and then go right to there'll be a save point. And come in here, yeah, just kill him. Kill him once, loot the blue chest, uncover every map tile in this room. And then go back in here. That enemy we just killed, by the way, that big dragon. That's the enemy in the game which gives you the most XP in the least amount of time. So if you want to farm levels later, you can just keep running to him from the save point, killing him. Well, keep killing him by leaving them going back in. And then go to the save point when, when you need to recharge. And what we're going to do now, guys, is so equip the Kung Fu shoes and keep doing a Kung Fu kick on him. It's a movement technique. I'll show you the controls. So if you come into here, so that's what you need to do. Down to forward and square. So make sure you equip the Kung Fu shoes. Very, very important. You should have them. I've... I did not advise you to sell these, so you should still have them. So remember, press down to towards, down towards, and square. Basically, like the movement you do for a Hadouken in Street Fighter. Yeah, so down towards and square. And you just keep doing that. And once you run out of MP, come back here and um, rest, recharge it. And eventually, once you've done it enough, you should master that technique and get a trophy. If you, for some reason, haven't got Kung Fu shoes, there are other weapons you can use, but the move might be different. If you look on my collectible guide, linked in the description, just look on the um, mastery list, and I'll, or technique list, I'll have a section somewhere on that collectible guide with all the, um, all the commands for all the techniques, depending on what weapon you have, and those weapons which have techniques. They don't all have weapon. Not every weapon has a technique, only some of them. And once you've got a trophy, guys, just knock one of these down, and then keep doing a sort of jump kick on the top and once you've done 10 in a row 
We get our trophy. Kickstopper. Once you've done so, guys, come back and rest. Save your game. Get ready for a boss fight. Right, so yeah, we're making a save, guys. And let's go and engage another boss. Valifar, we call him. He's sort of like the casino player. Yeah, for him, you're going to invert and use flame cannon. Make sure you've got Aegis Plate equipped so the spikes don't hurt you. If you need to use any ethers, just use normal ones. Do not use any of your high ethers in this area or your high, po high potions. You're going to need them for um, the Gremory boss coming up. Yeah, so try not to use any high ethers or high potions. Just use normal ones. But if you do have to use them, don't worry too much. There is going to be a point where you can actually walk back to Arventfield and restock if you need to before the next boss after this one. So yeah, once you're doing enough damage, he'll suck up all your coins and at this point you can't damage him. Now he's hooking up all your gold. And as you can see, it's healing him. This way you want to try and have as little gold as possible by the time you get here. Now what he'll do, normally you lose that gold, but he'll try to attack you with it. And you actually get the money back if you let him attack you with it. Like you'll see that I've got the money back in a second. So yep, and then just continue attacking him, guys. And he's toast. Yes, yeah, so like I say, he nicks you money, but you can get it back if you let him sort of attack you um, with the gold. Yep, yeah, once you killed him, we get our trophy. All bets are off. Right, once you killed him, come down here. We're going to loot this red chest for that gold. And I'm going to get the Valkyrie tiara in that chest hidden behind the um, behind the tokens. Right, you're going to equip that so it gives you luck. Yeah, so equip the Valkyrie tiara, guys, and make sure it's actually in your shortcut as well. So you don't actually go to assign your shortcut. You don't switch one of your shortcuts. And you don't realise you haven't actually got your Valkyrie tiara equipped. So that can happen quite easily. You switch back to a shortcut, but you won't realise you haven't actually changed your equipment on that shortcut. But yeah, once you killed him, obviously grab the loot, come back in here, just save your game, just to um, restock on your HP and MP. And then make your way back to the left. Left past the boss room. Remember, make sure you uncover all these map tiles. Yeah, now in this room, get that HP max up, just above the doorway, the entrance. Come to the top here and loot that blue chest. Yeah, but as you make your way to the left, just make sure you uncover every map tile. Get that blue chest in the top left corner. Uncover this room, well, come into this room on the left. And in here, make way to the bottom, get that blue chest. Go back up to the top and go in the door on the top left. I actually missed, missed a map tile in there, do you see it? I think I remember this one. Yeah, in here, you're gonna have to kill some of these flame cannons so you can get past. You might be able to just invert on the ceiling and then slide beneath them. Look like it's a little bit of a gap. Yeah, but look at that chest for cashmere equipment recipe. Make sure you've got every map tile, guys, and then come back into this main chamber. Now you've uncovered the top half of all the tiles in this room. You can go to the bottom now. It's actually going to take to the exit as well. Let's make your way to the bottom right. Remember, make sure you've got all the other map tiles before you come in here. Yeah, smash this wall on the bottom right and it will reveal a MP max up. Once you've done so, come down here into the final area of the game, the Glacial Tomb. Make sure you uncover all the map tiles as you come in. That's it. Now the enemies in here are going to do even more damage than the previous area. So just be very, very careful around the enemies in this room. Yeah, so get this blue chest down here. Get this blue chest on the top right. Yeah, this room here has two blue chests inside. And you've got blue chests down here as well. Yeah, this is a good, a good spot to farm them three blue chests. You just grab them three. Go back out in that top left. Back to the previous area. Come back in. Loot them three again. And just keep doing so. The bottom right, guys, it's a warp room. Make sure you unlock it. Loot that chest for crystal armor. Get that MP max up on the bottom left. And then smash this wall on the top left here for the weighted wing ring. Yeah, if you need to restart, guys, on high ethers or high potions, use that warp point. Go back to Arventville. Restock because there's going to be a boss fight coming up and you need the high ethers and high potions. And, um,. If you're not if you're not stocked up, you're gonna to have to come all the way back here just to walk back. Yeah, 
And then in here, guys, go down, loot that blue chest. I'm covering all the map tiles along the way. Make way through this long corridor. Yeah, you see, these enemies can kill you very quickly. You should be very careful. Watch your HP. Got plenty of rice balls left. Right, I just want to loot this chest here. So I kill that flame cannon. And loot that chest for war horses. Key. Drop down. Go in this room on the left here. And loot the blue chest at the end. Head back out. Don't bother killing these enemies, guys. You're just going to take too much. You're going to lose too much. I mean, we're losing enough HP as it is. Trying to kill them, you're going to lose even more. Yeah, I'm going to take this bottom right room. Ignore the bottom left for now. Yeah, bottom right room in here. Loot that chest in there. For the Fragorak. That's a very important weapon, guys. That dismantles into... I think it's... Yeah, that dismantles into two gold. And it only costs nine alkes to dismantle it. Yeah, loot that blue chest as well on the bottom right. And then come down here into this next room. Yeah, come over here. I just killed that enemy so it wasn't blocking my way. On the top right, there's the safe room, guys. I'm just going to come down here first, though. Smash that broken wall on the right to get MP max up. Drop down here. Get this blue chest. Right, and we're going to go save the game. So, yeah, this is one of the hardest bosses in the game. In this route we're doing. Yeah, it's a blue chest there. Right, so, yeah, save your game, guys. And get ready for, one, like I say, one of the most difficult boss fights in the game. If you've been doing a little farming yourself, or you know, been trying to build up some of your shards yourself, upgrade them outside of what I've been doing, this might be a lot easier for you. This is probably the hardest it's going to be how it is for me. So you want Zangetsuto, and um, you want Flame Cannon, and all you're going to be doing, guys, try and evade his attacks the best you can. Almost all of his attacks are quite tricky to dodge, and just keep using Flame Cannon. Use your Ethos to obviously restock your MP. Use healing items when you get low in HP. And just keep doing it, guys. Yeah, the purple flames will curse you. The curse just wear off eventually. And when he does that, he's going to summon sort of all this arm to come out of the floor. You can just invert to avoid them and sort of get away. Just keep inverting. Yep, and just keep using flame cannon, guys. Now, when he spins these sort of spinning, these spinning scythe type things. The orange ones, you can just run into them with Accelerator active and you actually destroy them and they won't damage you. But the red ones, you can't destroy. So you need to actually try to evade them. But yeah, the yellow ones, just run into them with Accelerator and you'll destroy them. They won't damage you. Yep, just repeat that, guys. Yep, so when he's doing that, like I say, he's going to summon his hands coming out of the floor. Be ready to invert to dodge them. You see how quick he um, damages you? How quick he brings your HP down? Yeah, at this point, you pretty much, when he, you see that little brief cutscene, he's pretty much about half HP. And you'll enter this next stage. So just keep applying the pressure. Like I say, this might take you a few tries. You could always restock a bit more if you wanted. You know, I know you can only buy a certain amount of stock when it comes to ethics and potions. But you can buy an infinite amount of food, you know, 99 of each. So if you have plenty of money, you can just buy loads of food after buying all your ethics and whatnot. Yeah, when he does that, he'll sort of teleport and do like a scissor attack. When he does the two beams, that's quite difficult to dodge. You have to sort of slide underneath it. And then keep inverting and sliding. But yeah, so keep it up, guys. Hopefully, you'll get him soon enough. Hopefully, it doesn't take too many attempts. Like I say, my, my sort of loadout and the stats are pretty much the worst it can be at this point. So if anything, you should be doing a bit more damage than what I am, I hope. You can upgrade your flame cannon to do even more damage. You can have augment intelligence slotted on your passive shard. Have that upgraded, that increases damage as well. There you go, got him. Yep, you'll get a trophy guys from Moonscraper. And you'll get your final, not your final shard, but one of those sort of final shards which you use to access hidden areas. Yeah, dimension shift. Uh, basically, it lets you sort of teleport to the right within a certain radius of your current location. About, it lets you teleport sort of five steps in any direction. Use that for um, teleporting behind obstacles to get loot. Yeah, so once you've got that, you killed it. 
walk back to Arventville by using a waystone. Yeah, I'm just getting some of my shortcuts ready. So when I need to switch to any of them abilities, I can just use the shortcuts. Yeah, safety game. So now begins the process, guys, of farming for everything. Yes, how far are we into this? This is what, part five? So we're about two and a half hours into the game. Yeah, the rest, the other, the other sort of four and a half hours, it's literally farming, guys. Yes, yeah, literally just farming. So we're, we're going into Galley Minerva now, back into the um, original area where we started the game. Now we can access everything. So we're going to come up here, go right, get that pirate hat. Along the way, make sure you're uncovering every map tile, guys. As well as getting all the items, we're also going to be uncovering every map tiles now. I'm going to be farming certain enemies along the way. You don't have to light that cannon, but you can light it while you're there if you want. Makes a little shortcut. So make sure you get all the map tiles. Loot. All the blue chests you encounter along the way. Just give you more items which are going to come in useful when it comes to crafting and whatnot. Another blue chest there. Now kill this dull hammer. Jump up here. Smash that hidden wall to get a plunder's ring. Second one. And loot that chest for the sand gun weapon. Now what we're going to do guys, we're going to equip both the plunder's rings. You should have two, if not you've missed one. So both plunder's ring. We just got one in that hidden wall just there. So what they do, they increase your item drop rates. And they also increase your luck. So now while we are farming, we're going to have them equipped. And what you want from this enemy, this dull hammer, this one we're killing now. You want to get his shard. You can get head fail times one. And you're going to want to get sea urchin times four. And the seamer, which I'm killing, you want to get writhing limb from him times one. If you want to list this, guys, you need to go look at my text guide. So yeah, dull hammer. You want head fail times one. You want its shard. And you want the sea urchin times four. And the seamer, you want writhing limb times one. I've already got the writhing limb from it, so that's why I'm just killing the dull hammer now. Yeah, so just keep doing that guys, running in, killing him, running out, coming back in and repeating it. Yeah, like I say, do the hammer, you want it shard, you want the um, head flail times one, it's the urchin times four. I got them a long time ago, I just pretty much kept killing him for the shard, but I just got it then. Once you've got them items guys, come in here, get the blue chest, save your game here. Right, continue left, up here. Get that blue chest. Upgrade your flame cannon there if you want really quickly. Just keep running in, kill them the five flame uh, cannon morts. Get that blue chest there, guys. Yeah, keep running in there. Kill them five cannon morts, running out, going back in, killing them. And to get your shard up to grade nine. You need eight extra shards from that to do that. It'll increase your damage a little bit. Yeah, up here, save your game. Come in here, loot that chest for a rusted ring. Loot this chest at the top right for a hair apparent 12. Come this room on the top left, come all the way to the end. Loot the chest for a country dress and then smash this wall on the left for a HP max up. Come down, go back near to where you started the game now and jump up here. Come to room on the far left, get the capacity max up and loot the chest for a culverin. And then come to the far right, guys, to get the warp room. Right, now we're going to warp to the cathedral. Yeah, so cathedral next, guys. We're almost at the end of this video. Just a little bit more farming. And that'll be it for this one. But yeah, this is pretty much going to be every video now. <laughs> every video going forward is going to be farming like this. But we're farming. We're just farming. A, we're doing a limited amount of farming to begin with to get certain foods so we can increase our MP recharge rate and get increase our look pretty much and then we'll sort of go through we'll go through it again yeah I have got a strategy to the farming we're gonna be doing guys so yeah now we're killing this enemy here yeah you want all you want from him is apple times six just keep killing this enemy until you get apple times six and make sure you killed it six times in the process as well once you finish your quest yes yeah, so you keep killing him apple times six you can check your stock by obviously going into your items and checking. Yeah, I don't farm too much to begin with because our look is very low. It makes it take longer. Like I say, what we're trying to do, first of all, is increase our look and increase our MP charge rate. 
So we're just basically getting a few certain materials so we can go back to Arbonville and craft the necessary fruits or items. See, so yeah, Apple Time 6. If you need to recharge your MP, you can actually just drop back down to the bottom there. Back to that, down that shortcut in the safe room on the bottom right, just before the craft work boss. Or if you go through this door on the right and go right again, that will lead you to a safe point. Yeah, the safe point just there if you need to recharge your MP. And then just get back up there quickly and resume the farming. Yeah, so Apple time six. How many have I got? So you come in here, you can check. I've got two. Wow, killed him so many times, I've only got two apples. Most of the items he drops, you actually need them at some point. So, you know, you are actually getting some of some of the other items, which are going to come in useful. But yeah, apples what we need at the moment. Because you'll find most of the sweet foods, like the, the strawberry cakes and chocolate cake and whatnot, they're normally the ones which will increase your look. Or give you um increase your MP recharge rate. Yeah, it's normally all the sweet foods. Got another apple there. Not much, pretty much done, almost done guys. I'm just looking at the, the timeline in the video. I think I've pretty much almost got them all. I think that's it, I think that's six. Yeah, then once you've done that, come over here, loot that chest for a cake recipe. Make sure you unlock that shortcut door, uncover all the map tiles in that room. And come along here guys, and now we're just going to save the game. Yeah, get that blue chest as you come through. Put on white and save the game guys. Yep, so that's part five. Like I say, that's pretty much going to be how it's going to be for the sort of the next, probably the next seven or eight videos. Doing a bit of farming, crafting certain items, farming again, crafting certain items, and just working up to that. In the part five, we should have made a save at the end of the cathedral. And we're going to head past the bloodless boss fight from earlier, and we're going to continue right this time. Yeah, so again, as I said at the end of the last video, we're just trying to get a few things built up first. Just make the farming quicker. So we're not going straight into the farming, you know, farming everywhere. We're just grabbing a few things to begin with. So grab that red umbrella from that chest as you come through, guys. And now we're in the top of sort of Liv X Machina. Yeah, do not forget that red umbrella. Come down here, put the bookcase on that switch. That should lower them stairs. Come in here, take this top room. Either use reflector ray to get in there, use dimension shift or invert and slide in, whatever you prefer. Make way across here. We're going to get this blue chest. We will need some garlic at one point from the Vex machine. Now, I'm not sure if I farm it now or farm it later. But yeah, now we just got garlic. Yeah, we'll need, need, I think it's about six or so garlic at one point. Yeah, get that recipe from the bottom left. That should be a drinks recipe. Do not forget that. And come in here, make sure you have to, what you have to do is put craft work back onto your man manipulative. So um, you've got to unequip accelerator for a moment. Go that bookcase, carry it across and drop it on that switch to lower that staircase. Come up and grab that familiar shard for Silver Knight. Just increase it a bit more. Yeah, m make sure you do grab it. Do not exit the room before it actually penetrates you from behind. And then come down here. And come back. Yeah, come all the way back now. All we did, we went up there, guys. Just get that blue chest mainly and get the drink chest P. And we got that familiar Silver Knight upgrade shard while we were there. Now, uncover that map tile, which I just did. Then come back in here. Break that wall on the left for the traverse spring. Loot that chest on the bottom left for the gold equipment recipe. Grab this blue chest. Hopefully get some more garlic. Uncover all these map tiles in this room to go through, by the way. Come in here, make sure you've got the Aegis plate equipped so that these traps do not damage you. Drop down here, get that HP max up from in there. Yeah, if you find it hard to keep up, guys, remember my text guide, every single thing is listed. I mean, at least here in the video, you sort of see what route I'm taking. Because the checklist, it's more like a sort of, my collectible guide, it's more like, it's more like a sort of checklist. Just so you don't miss anything. Yeah, come in here, we're going to teleport past here. Just use Dimension Shift or Reflector Ray. Come down here. And you're going to be underneath OD. Now we've got High Jump. We're just going to boost him from underneath. Keep boosting him. You'll get a trophy for doing this. You actually need to do him 50 times to get two items. 
So even once you've got a trophy, keep doing it until these two chests appear. So nose glasses will be in one, and macaroni and cheese will be in the other. Make sure you keep bumping in without dropping. Now what we're going to do, we're going to unequip Sage's Tome, and equip the Godsend Tome. I think Godsend becomes available at 70% map. You see me, I'm at 73.20% map completion at the moment. So yeah, you want the Godsend Tomb. Unequip Sage, and equip the Godsend Tome. I think that gives you an extra 15 look, which is a massive boost. So yep, now what we're going to do guys, we're going to come back in here. Now we're going to farm this enemy briefly. We will be coming back to her later. She is called Takamo Tamako Death. Yeah, you're going to farm her. You want strawberry times six. And you want smoothie times one. Yeah, strawberry times six, guys. And one smoothie. If you run out of MP, you can actually use the smoothies, which she drops. And that gives you some MP. And the smoothie is a one-time use. A one-time bonus, sorry. But you'll get one second towards your MP charge rate. It'll basically recharge one second quicker. It doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it is. Yeah, so all I'm doing, I'm trying not to use my flame cannon too much, otherwise my MP is going to deplete too quickly. I'm sort of darting across, trying to attack a few times with the sword, and then using flame cannon once to kill her. Yeah, so you can use that smoothie if you get one. But yeah, like I say, keep farming her until you get strawberry times six and smoothie times one. I've got three strawberries, so should need to do a few more kills. We'll be farming more strawberries later, but we're just getting enough now just to um, purchase some of them foods, guys, which will give you more of your MP charge rate. Yeah, eventually it gets up to eight seconds, so it's going to charge eight seconds quicker, which again, doesn't sound like a lot, guys, but it's a massive boost, massive boost. It doesn't refer to your whole bar, it refers to like one, you know, your MP gauge is slowly going up by one MP. Well, your recharge rate will affect each of that one, each one MP it recharges, it will recharge quicker. So when you get one MP at eight recharge rate, that one MP will recharge eight seconds quicker. And it's it's quite a lot, so I think the default is only like one second or something. So it's a massive boost. Yeah, then once you've got them six strawberry guys and the um, smoothie, come down here. And you want to farm this enemy now. Now what you want from her, you want the Sacred Shade Shard, which she drops. You want Lemon times 5, and you want the Flame Whip. So again, you want the Shard, Sacred Shade, that blue one which she drops. You want Lemon times 5, and the Flame Whip. And then once you've got all them, you're going to fast travel to the Garden of Silence. So you'll just go left, up twice, then left again and to the warp room and warp to um, Garden of Silence. This one's a bit easier to do because um, there's a, a lantern above her. So each time you kill her, you can just grab a lantern to recover some MP. Like so. If you are farming that previous enemy, there is actually a save point just a few rooms down and to the left from here. You can go to save point if you need to recover your MP. It's not too far away. Yeah, like I said, this one ain't too bad because you've got a lamp there to recover your MP. Yeah, it takes so long to farm at the moment. Remember, you want to make sure you're getting two plunders rings equipped. So it increases the drop rate. And how many have got? Didn't even see it then, that's too quick. You'll get quite a few rubies from her as well. Yeah, you will, there will sometimes be droughts like this when you kill them. You kill them quite a few times and they just don't drop anything. And then be other times when they just do not stop dropping stuff. That's the look. That's the look statistic for you. It's all about RNG. Right, I think I've got five lemons now. So once you have become a lemon, and you have five, yeah, come back to here, guys, like I say, and warp to the Garden of Silence. Uh, 
That's it. Try not to make any noise here. Right. We're going to come right here first. Yep, yeah, we're going to come down here. Come all the way across. Try to uncover these tiles as you come down. Up here, loot that blue chest. Yep, yeah, in here. Now you're going to get these map tiles up here. You're going to get this chest for the moon belt. And the black belt, map chest. So you've got blue, the moon belt and the black belt. Then take the exit on the right, in the middle. Come near, safe point here guys, you want to save. Yep, and then come in here. And keep killing this enemy now. So when, whenever you need to recover MP guys, just go left, two rooms, save your game. Well not save game, just sit down, recover your MP, and come back. This enemy, this is Zagan. Now with this one, you actually want to get, you want to get the shard from him, which is Alchemic Bounty. One second, just got to edit my text guide a moment. A uh, second. Yeah, I didn't put a space for this guy. Yeah, so um, you want to get Alchemic Bounty Shards. You want to get Beast Milk times 9. Renet times 1. Beast Beef times 4. And Monster Horn times 1. On your way to get the Beast Milk times 9, you should get everything I've just mentioned. Getting the Beast Milk times 9. But just make sure you have, so again, you want Alchemic Bounty, the shard he drops. You want Beast Milk times 9, Rennet times 1, Beast Beef times 4, and Monster Horn times 1. Like I say, by the time you've got the Beast Milk times 9, you should pretty much have everything I've just mentioned. And then once you've got all that, guys, use the Waystone. Yeah, there's the shard. Beast Beef and the um, Beast Milk are the rarest drops for him. The Monthorn and the Renit, he drops them quite often, they're more common for him. Yeah, we'll actually have to come back and get some more goodies from him later. But this is all we need for now. Yeah, and this Alchemic Bounty Shard, each time you're crafting at Johannes, you want to make sure you've got that equipped. I'll be doing it anyway, and I'll mention it again. But each time you've got that equipped and you're crafting something, there's a chance that you might craft more than one of the same item. It's like a bonus. It'll be it'll take the same materials as crafting one, but you, get, you might have a bonus and craft more than one. If you upgrade it, obviously it's more chance, and it's more chance of crafting more than two. I think you can craft like perhaps four if you're lucky and it's upgraded. But yeah, that's why it comes in useful. Right, so I've just got to recover my MP again. Go and kill him a bit more. Yeah, this is all it's pretty going to be like, guys, for the like, next... Probably for the mid for the remainder of the game, actually. Yeah, remainder of the Platinum. This is basically what we're doing. So I'm just going to check. Beast Beef, I've got 8 of them. Uh, beast Milk, I've got 9. So yeah, like I say, by the time you've got 9 Beast Milk, you should have everything else that you need. And then once you've got all them guys, use your waystone to walk back to the hub area. So what we're going to do first, come and talk to Lindsay. Now we're going to report back these two quests. The death of Rosalie and the death of Dario. You should get Uni Rice Bowl times 3 and Heavy Cream times 5. Now come and talk to Anne. Now what you want to do, you want to sell Swordfish. You shouldn't need these weapons ever again. So sell Swordfish. Sell Flame Whip. Yeah, Swordfish. There you go. Flame Whip, Culverin, yep, Riding Habit, weird name for armour, hey, can you pass me my uh, Riding Habit, yep, uh, Weighted Ring, and the Black Belt, that's it, yep, Equipment Burden's gone down quite a lot now after um, selling that Weighted Ring, right, so what we're going to buy is Flower times 10, yep, so 10 Flower, that's F-L-O-U-R. Eggs times seven. Do not drop them. Yeah, sugar times 16. Yeah, 16 granules of sugar. Mucko oil times four. And cinnamon times four. Got them back to front. Yeah, cinnamon times four. Then mucko oil times four. Milk times three, guys. Make sure it's semi-skinned. Soda water times one. Cotton times three. And Halite times seven. You might have some of these already. Um, 
it's just a good idea to always buy the amount I say just so you got them if you do need them because sometimes I ask you to buy extra yeah so once you bought all them come into Johannes now first thing you want to do come to armor and craft the apron now what the apron does it makes it so when you craft food you got a chance to craft more than one like a bonus so what we're going to do now this is going to be your crafting build all you're going to do is shortcut a build with the um, apron a sea armor and alchemic bounty as a shard so alchemic bounty there you go it's passive and armor as apron like so and then make sure you shortcut this guys yeah so whenever you're crafting something always make sure you've got the apron and alchemic bounty equipped guys apron makes it so you've got more chance of crafting more than one food and alchemic bounty makes it so you've got more chance of crafting more than any equipment or supplies for example right once you've done that we're going to prepare now we're going to craft some butter by the way when you craft anything with johannes it becomes available to buy in the shop yes yeah, so you're going to craft butter and then you're going to craft cookies like so you're not going to craft more because once you like say once you crafted something for the first time it becomes available to buy so once you craft a butter and some cookies we're going to go over to um Anne. yeah and we're going to buy cookies times one we're going to buy butter times two yeah butter times two then any spare gold buy ethers and potions yeah, ethers and potions and then anything else you can buy rice balls. Yep, so ethers and potions, any spare money and anything extra, buy rice balls. You'll need them for later. Right, back to Johannes. So now what we're going to do, we're going to prepare some more food. So heavy cream. Yep, craft heavy cream. Craft pie dough. Yeah, by the way, if you ever find you haven't got any materials, which I have, if you look at my collectible guide, you can chase any collectibles down really easily and find out exactly where you get them as well. Yeah, then craft fried potatoes. So we've crafted heavy cream, pie dough, and we've just crafted fried potatoes. Next up is sponge cake. Then strawberry cake. We've all probably already got some sponge cake, guys, but we're crafting it so that you can buy it. Yeah, so strawberry cake next. And then apple juice. I'll go with this. Yep, and then strawberry all eight. I'll go with this. Then some lemonade. Great. And finally, a smoothie. Great. Like so, just crafting it so that it becomes purchasable. And just in case. Some of these things I'm crafting them just in case you had really bad luck and you didn't actually find them from enemies or from blue chest. Right, so now what you want to do, only eat the ones that give you MP quick charge. Yep, so only the ones which give you MP quick charge. Remember, it's only a one-time bonus. If it's got the knife and fork icon by it, you've already got a bonus, so there's no point eating it again. So yeah, what you should have eaten is um, sponge cake, strawberry cake, apple juice, strawberry or late lemonade and a smoothie of course and now your MP's recharging a lot quicker look how quick my MP's recharging right and anything else any other foods do not eat them until you need them so any foods which you do not yet have the bonus for leave them until you actually need them to heal guys otherwise you're basically waiting a free heal yep so now we've saved that game and we've walked to secret sorcery lab now keep coming in here and killing that dark elemental all you want is his shard if he drops anything, bonus. But all you want is a shard. So keep going out, coming back in. Quickly hitting him with one flame cannon, which should kill him. There's a lamp there, which you can break when you come in to get your MP back. Yeah, look how quick my MP is recharging now. Nice. And eventually we'll get that up to 8 seconds. I think it's on like 4 seconds at the moment. So eventually that'll be doubled. So yep, yeah, like I say, all we want, guys, is the resist darkness. That's a shard this enemy drops. Resist darkness. Right, there we go. And then we're going to come to stream on the top right. Get the blue chest. Yep. And we're going to come down here. Get this blue chest as well. Try to make sure you've got the Aegis plate equipped in this area. There's a lot of traps and you do not want them to damage you. Yeah, grab that blue chest. Come in here. Save your game down here if you want to. Come all the way left through the boss area and to this far left shaft. 
take the top right room and get the armor spiked breastplate. Yeah, so she's going to go back to the left now. Go down the bottom of the shaft. Yeah, make way up here. Head over to the cow on the bottom right. And we're going to get our blue chest. Watch you don't step in any cow poo when you come up here. Give the cow a little stroke as well if you want to. There you go. And then come here. And now what we're going to do, guys, see this little enemy in red, in a little red bikini? I guess more like a, a onesie. Yeah, she's called Lamashtu. Now you want to make sure you kill it at least six times while we're farming here. Yeah, for the quest. Yeah, so make sure you killed it at least six times. And what you want from her, you want her shard, which is whip expertise. Yeah, her shard, whip expertise. And you want to make sure you got queen's tail times one from her. Queen's tear and the beast killer. And that weapon is not as dangerous as it sounds. Yeah, so kill it at least six times while you're farming her. Like I say, you want to make sure you get the shard from her. Get queen's tail times one, queen's tear times one. And beast killer times one as well. So I think it's pretty much all of her drops and her shard as well. It makes you kill her six times in the process. The annoying thing is with her is um, it takes like two flame cannons to kill her. But don't hang around for too long because if you do, you see that black pussy cat to the right. It will cast like a poison spell on you, like a, sort of like a little poison whirlwind. And if you're standing in the area when she casts it, you'll get poisoned. Obviously, that's going to take a lot of your HP down. So to try to come in here really quick, I normally come in, lob one flame cannon, duck to dodge her attack, cast another one, grab whatever she drops, and get out. You can try to invert and come in, but it doesn't really make it any simpler. This is sort of like the best angle, just because you're like right close to her, and you can sort of duck to dodge her attack. But if you're not quick, you'll get hit like I did. So yeah, if you need to heal, use these foods which you haven't used for the first time yet. So as you use them, you're also getting that one-time bonus as well. That permanent stat bonus. This farming, it will get quicker later on. It's just because as we're raising our stats, it is quite slow to begin with, but it'll keep getting quicker. You know, just as we're raising our look and our damage is increasing. And of course our MP recharge rate is increasing as well. Yeah, it will get quicker. It's just with low stats, it takes, a, you know, it just takes a bit longer. But at least we've got accelerator. That speeds it all up. I think, what am I waiting for? Oh, I'm trying to get a shard, ain't I? I remember this one. It took me ages to get a shard, I remember this. Yeah, I think I've got plenty of the items, but it's a shard. Yeah, some of these shards are like 2% drop or something. And I actually think that Plunder Shring, I mean, it doesn't affect shard drop rate, unfortunately. I think I think the look statistic does, but I don't think the Plunder Shring doesn't affect shards, unfortunately. So they still take quite a long time to drop. Thing is, with this enemy, the safe room is quite far away as well. It's actually one of the, yeah, that's that poison tornado. You've got to try and make sure you don't stand around for too long. Because that black cat will cast it. Yeah, it's actually one of these enemies to the right as well. So you can actually come in from the right side of this room. And keep doing it. Yeah, so this is what it's going to be. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're just taking ages or some or like some glitch and it's not going to spawn. Yeah, we've all had that before, when we've been farming for ages and we think it's glitched, but you know, it's just real bad RNG. I'm going to try and leave all my farming in, by the way. So farming like this, yeah, I'm going to try and leave it in, just so you see exactly how long it can take. But this has been quite bad luck for me. I mean, I should have had that shard drop a long time ago. But so yeah, now I'm switching over to this one. thing is she does quite a lot of damage to you as well oh so that's marathon that's a trophy for um i think just covering like 500 kilometers or something which will come naturally 
as you know, going towards platinum. I think it's probably impossible to miss that one, actually. Come on, drop me the shards. Fine, there we go, finally. Got it. So, whip expertise. Yeah, once you've got everything, so remember, we we'll need the whip expertise, the shard, queen's tail, queen's deer, and beast killer. Go in that shaft, come into this room, grab the blue chest, go back through. Just don't worry about that black pussycat for now. We're actually going to be killing that in another area. So, don't worry. Yeah, I think it's in the um, hidden, I think it's the hidden sorcery lab or something. We're going to kill it in there. But yeah, for now, just come into here now, guys. Inferno Cave. We do not need to go back into that previous area, Secret Sorcery Lab. We've done everything that we need to do in that area. Right, so come in here. Yeah, almost every area we go into now, we're trying to com fully complete that area as we make our way through. So get that chest for the Flame Scarf. Come over here, get that blue chest. Make sure you uncover every map tile as you come through here. Oh, this dragon is a bit of annoying. This dragon's a bit annoying. We have to farm this dragon for a few items. And it takes quite a while. Yeah, so come in here. Get that blue chest in the middle. If you've got Aegis Plate equipped, lava, lava will not damage you. Yeah, loot that blue chest. Then you want to get past that blue dragon. Uh, blue dragon, it's a green dragon actually. Yeah, get past him. Now we're going to farm him a little bit now, guys. So what you want from this guy? You want dragon scale times six. Yeah, you want Dragon Egg times 5. And you also want its Shard. Yeah, you want its Shard as well. Got to make an edit in my text guide. One second. Yes, yeah, so like I say, when it's shard as well, guys. I think I actually don't get shard in. I do it a bit later in the game. But it's just a bit of an edit I've made. But it's just better if you do it here. Yeah, he'll drop Draconic Rage. That'll be a shard that he drops. So what you want from this guy, you want Dragon Scale times 6, Dragon Egg times 5, and Dragon Talons times 1. And like I say, you want his Shard as well, Draconic Rage. Yeah, this will, it will take quite a while to do. you will actually go past one of these later, so you can actually get a Shard later if you want, like I do. But you've got to farm him for a little bit now, so it's just a good idea to try and get it now as well. Yeah, I just remind you, so you want his shard, Draconic Rage, you want Dragon Scale times 6, and you want Dragon Egg times 5, and Dragon Talons times 1. I had one point when I saw him in these in um, one of my practice runs, and he just wouldn't drop Dragon Eggs. I had loads of scales, but he wouldn't drop any Dragon Eggs. It looks like I've got them all already. Yeah, then come in here. Grab that blue chest, but you didn't see me get a shard, did you? Like I so, said, I do get that later, but try to get a shard now if you can. Then once you've got them items, guys, come in here, smash that wall, get the risk ring. Yeah, like I so, said, that dragon, you want a shard, dragon scale times six, dragon egg times five, and this dragon talons times one. And then you make way up here, remember, make sure you're getting all these items which I'm getting and I'm mentioning, and we'll cover all the map tiles along the way. Come in here. Get past there, loot that chest for ultimate ammunition, the recipe. Yeah, then come in here. And save your game. Right, so here guys, just going to loot. We're going to farm these last few enemies and this is pretty much it. Why is this, this video is like 39 minutes long. But I'm on 27 minutes at the moment. This is going to take me 10 minutes. Well, okay. So you've got a save room just to the right guys. So you've got... Easy access to get your HP back and your MP. The farming is great when it's next to a save point. So you can just quickly save the game, recover your HP and MP, and then resume the farming. So in between these two rooms, you want to be farming. You, you want to be farming the Hellhound, the um, Bloodbug, the Death Trap. That, death, that chest is called a Death Trap. 
So, um, I'll mention these enemies in this room first, and then I'll mention the chest in the the um, death trap enemy in the room on the right next. Otherwise, it's gonna, you're gonna forget what I'm saying. But remember, everything's listed in the text guide. So, from the Hellhound, from him, you want his shard, which is called Summon Hellhound. And you want the Demon Claw times one, which you can drop. Yeah, so that Hellhound, you want his shard and Demon Claw times one. These two sort of bugs, they're called, um, they're called Blood Bugs. From them, you want Nerve Shard, Red Remembrance. And you also want the one grotesque shell from them, one Inhuman Carapace, and the Poison Kukri times one from them. And then this Death Trap in the other room, from him you want um, you want Augment Look, the shard which he drops, you want Cypress times 5 and Mahogany times 2. If you just keep switching between both rooms, killing you know the two enemies in that room, well the two enemy types, obviously you've got three enemies there, and they're coming in here and killing the Death Trap. Just keep moving between them, killing them until you get what you want. You should find, hopefully, by the time you've got everything you need, from the Hellhound and the Blood Bugs, you'll probably still have to farm the Death Trap a little bit. So I'll just mention it again guys, and I'll probably just leave you to it while I finish this spot of farming. So yeah, Summon Hellhound. You want Summon Hellhound from him. Yeah, the Hellhound, you want Summon Hellhound Shard, sorry. Yeah, you want Demon Claw times one as well. The Blood Bug. You want Red Remembrance, Grotex Shell times one, Inhuman Carapace and Poison Kukri. And the Death Trap, you want Augment Look, the Shard, Cypress times five, and Mahogany times two. So I've got plenty of Cypress, Plenty of mahogany. Got my dragon scale. Should have my dragon eggs. So I think I've got everything I need from the death trap. So now I've just got to farm these. So I can just ignore the death trap now and just keep coming in here. To make it a bit quicker. I think I've got what I need from the blood bugs. So that's why I'm only killing the hellhound. I think all I need now is a demon claw which he drops. Yes, yeah, so make sure you've got a plunder's ring equipped remember they will increase your drop rate both of them you always want both of them equipped the plunderous rings and then once you've got everything you need guys final thing we're going to do is we're going to kill this fire elemental this fire elemental what you want from him is the resist fire shards i think this is where i spend the next five minutes yeah, you want the resist fire shards you want ruby times four and big spike times four as well you've probably got plenty of rubies already so you probably don't need to worry too much about the rubies but if you do it this way, clean with Aqua Stream, you can sort of kill it before it moves. Just do not run too far left, otherwise it will start moving. If you just come left a little bit, you can see it floating down the bottom, just at the bottom of the screen, and it won't move, and then you can actually use Aqua Stream and kill him. But if you go too far, it will start moving around, and it makes it a bit trickier. So yeah, just do what I'm doing. Just come to the left a little bit, use Aqua Stream to kill it before it moves. Run down, see if it dropped anything. Come back switch rooms and then do it again guys again just rest at the um, save point if you need to get your MP and HP back and yeah just keep doing that guys I'll just say one more time so you need his shard resist fire and you also want ruby times four and a big spite times four like I say you likely got a ruby already so what you're really focusing on getting from this guy is a big spite times four and then resist fire shard Right, so what, I'm what I've done here, guys, I've just cut out that... There's, there's like an extra five minutes I spent farming in. Just get them before Big Spike. So I've just cut it out. Um, like I said, I'm not doing anything special. You've seen what I'm doing. So yeah, there's not much farming like this. Most of it, we, we get done pretty quick on each enemy. But yeah, some you'll find. You'll probably spend maybe ten minutes or so. But it's not many like that. But yeah, like I say, all you want from him, you want his shard. Four rubies and four big spikes. And then once you're done, guys, make a save, and that'll be the end of part six. It was a lot longer to begin with, but it's quite a bit of farming in this one. I mean, there's going to be in every single part, as you know, you know, for the next sort of five parts. But there's quite a few enemies in this where I'm stuck on them for about five minutes just trying to farm items. Yeah, make sure you go in there, get that blue chest. Come along here, we are fully exploring these areas as we make our way along, guys, grabbing all the items. Yeah, loot that chest with Lohingrin weapon. Make our way down here, up to the left, smash this wall for the lethality ring, and then loot that blue chest, guys. I think that should give us two of them. We might have sold one already. Yeah, break that wall for the lethality ring, guys. Grab the blue chest. 
and they're coming here. Now we're going to farm this enemy here, the um, Volcano Mort. What you want from this guy is you want his shard, that's it, flamethrower, and you also want a demon bone. Yep, so that you don't use all your MP too quick, and you see he's quite resistant to fire, man uh, fire damage, of course. He has created all the fire. So yeah, just run in, attack him twice, probably do one flame cannon, hopefully kill him. Like I say, you want his shard, flamethrower, and a demon bone times one from him. Come in here. Break that wall, get that chest, and get the egg souffle from inside it. Come in here, and go into the hidden desert. Yep, that should be the um, Inferno Cave should all be complete now. And sorry, we're in the Forbidden Underground Waterway now. And make sure you put that wall which I just broke, guys. In that wall was a supreme dish recipe. Do not forget to get that one. Quite easy to miss because it's a recipe, but it's inside the wall. Do that blue chest, come in here. Do that chest for the ultimate dish recipe. Go left there, loot that chest for the fairy scarf. Loot this blue chest, carry on up. Loot that chest for steel lightning. And there's also a blue chest here, almost forgot it. Yep, and that one. So yeah, very important, make sure you've got all them items, guys. Like I say, it's all in my um, text platinum guide. you got a supreme dish recipe from Breakable Wall. Fairy scarf, ultimate dish recipe. The steel lightning and of course all the blue chests throughout. Make sure you've explored every area there, even the warp room. And then make way into the hidden desert, guys. This is pretty much where we're going to remain for the rest of the video. We'll do a bit of um, crafting back in the town, back in the hub area, near the end of the video. Yeah, before we do that, just going to clear out this area and farm quite a few enemies. So that wall there, it's got MP max up inside. And what you're going to keep doing now is just going up, coming back down, and you're going to farm this enemy. I'm going to edit this in a minute, so I'm, I'm here for about 7 minutes. So what you want from this, this is Living Fossil. If you get really lucky with drops, make sure you kill him at least 4 times to complete the quest for Lindsay. But what you want from him, you want his his um, his shard, which is Resist Thrust. And you also want Dragon Bone times 2. So like I say, you want a shard, Resist Thrust, and Dragon Bone times 2, guys. But once you've got them, then move on obviously like I say I'm gonna edit the video in a second so you'll see what I'm doing next anyway but yeah just make sure you got them items guys and then continue into the next room wow I literally just cut out about seven minutes worth of farming yeah I think this way I'll get my dragon bone there we go finally got my two dragon bones yeah come into this room next guys and then um, make way over to the left, you can kill these enemies as you come through. We're going to farm almost each, almost each and every one of these enemies here. Yeah, come to this far room, loot that chest for a weighted ring. Another one, I think we sold the early one. Now what you want to do now guys, of course make sure you've got plunder's rings equipped of course. Now you want to farm this red knight enemy, you're going to farm the red ghosts and also the elosa enemy. The elosa is that sort of spinning thing to the right. And what you want from these, the one you're going to be farming for longest is the Red Ghost. Yeah, that spinning one there. And then just keep going to the room on the left, coming back in and killing them all again. There's two Red Ghosts in this room. And what you want from these guys, so the Red Ghost is called Amy. From Amy, you want her shard, which is called Lethargy. And you want Alkahes times 54 and Ectoplasm times 1 from the Ghost. From Zipar, that's this Red Knight dude. From him, you want his shard which is called throw spear you want the uh, reed, reed bar weapon from him one of them and you also want platinum times two and then the spinning elosa enemy to the right all you want from that is a shard guys augment constitution or augment con i think it's called for short yeah so to mention that again guys i'll come back to red ghost in a second because red ghost is one that you're going to spend more time farming but yeah so the red knight you want the thargy the shard uh, sorry, you want throw spear from Red Knight, and you want a reed bar times one, and platinum times two from Red Knight, and the spinning thing, the spinning Elosa enemy, all you want from that is its shard. Right, so once you've got them, along the way you've been killing the Red Ghost as well, obviously watch your HP, and then once you've farmed them, you've probably still got to do the Red Ghost, Amy. And once you've got Red Ghost remaining, that'll be quicker, so you'll be coming in, killing that first one, going back, coming back in again, and just keep doing that. 
There is a lamp on the left there, so you can actually come in, get your MP back that you used to kill it, and then go back. Yeah, and what you want from Amy, like I say, you want the Shard, the Tharji, you want Alkahest times 54, and Ectoplasm times 1. The important thing is Alkahest times 54, and you're likely to get everything else from Amy. So, yep, yeah, just keep farming them, guys. I'll just leave it until I've only got to farm Amy. So you see exactly how quicker it is when you're just farming the ghost. Like I say, the main thing you want to get from the red ghost is Alkahest times 54. And that should pretty much make it so you've got everything else which you can drop anyway. There we go, got the shard from the rolling thing. I think that's everything from the Zipar and Elosa. And it looks like I've still got to kill the Red Knight for a few things. Yeah, I think I still need a Reed Bar from him, the weapon which he drops. And there it is. So that's the weapon he drops. So now once you've got everything from the Red Knight and the rolling thing, guys, you've just got to keep killing the Red Ghost. So come in here, kill the red ghost, and back out and back in again. It drops two alkes at a time, so it's a lot quicker to farm. Alkes is quite expensive to buy. Um, it doesn't matter later on, once we've got a, a way to farm money infinitely really quick. But at the moment, we don't have that option, so this is the best way to get alkes at the moment. So yep, yeah, first of all alkes, guys, I'm going to make a little edit here. Right, pretty much done now. Almost got 54. I think I just need a few more to collect. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's 54. Right, so once you've got everything you need, guys, from that room, come to the right, the top right. Remember, make sure you explore every room we're going through along the way. Get this blue chest down here, and then we're going to go into the room on the bottom left. Yeah, watch your HP. Yeah, so there's actually a hidden blue chest there. Yeah, in the sand, there's a hidden blue chest. And then you want to come over here and kill this doggy called Rocky. Just keep coming out and killing it. All you want from Rocky, you want the shard that it drops. Resist strike. So just keep going out, coming back in, guys, and killing Rocky. And you got that. There we go. Nice and quick. So once you've got a shard, continue left. Break this wall here. And there should be a... Yeah, behind this knight, loot that chest for the traveller's hat. Yeah, there's a hidden chest in there. Like I say, you get a traveller's hat from that chest. Once got that, go back to the right, and then gonna enter this room in the middle. Come up to the top, behind the sand, loot that chest for potent ammunition recipe, and also get the HP max up on the left there. Right, once you've done so, come back down, go right, and then you want to farm this enemy here, guys, Volsha. What you want from her, you want her shard to rave, and you also want one times Ambrosia. I think Ambrosia is only needed for one craftable item in the game, which we have to craft. Probably needed for other things, but we've probably got them. Yeah, the only item I have to we have to craft following this route, we only need one Ambrosia, and this is where you get it from. So yeah, keep killing her, guys. You'll get her shard, like I say, one Ambrosia. I don't think it takes me too long to get it. I remember I did get quite a few flame rips in the process. And there we go. So once you've got that, take the bottom left doorway. Get this blue chest. Go back out, make way to the right. There's a blue chest over there as well. Always loot any blue chest, I always tell you. Always loot blue chest. Now this frog here, be very careful. If you run into it, it'll poison you. It will actually drop the antidote for poison, Mithridate. And what you want to do is keep coming in and killing that frog quickly. What you want from here, guys, it's called a poison toad, by the way, this enemy. You want its shard, resist poison, and you also want a sinister eye. Just one of them, which it drops. So you want its shard, resist poison, uh, poison, and sinister eye times one. Then once you got that, you'll make your way to the top of this room. 
I seem to be really unlucky with shard drops when I was recording this. Because on all my practice runs, I've always got shards like mega quickly. A lot of times even by mistake when I was just sort of moving through an area and just killed an enemy that's in my way. Yeah, so if you do get poisoned, farm this enemy, you might have got the, quite a few Mithridates and you can just use that to heal up if you need to. I'm going to edit this in a minute guys, I'm going to be doing this for like another two minutes I think. Okay, so I've about got it. Yeah, it's about a minute I had to cut out there. Siri, this series is going to be very short if I have to, if I keep cutting out most farming. I think that living fossil, I think that was the worst one for me, if I remember. Yeah, come to top here guys, get that MP max up. Yeah, that living fossil to start this area. I think, I'm pretty sure that's the worst one. Yeah, grab that blue chest. Bottom left there, come back in here. Now you might remember this this part from early in the game. We came through it earlier when we killed um, Alfred. Yeah, now in here, make way to the right. Now you want to fall down the sand here. Yeah, let the sand suck you up and it'll take you down to the room below it. Down here, there's a hidden chest over here to the right, a blue chest. Loot that, come over here. Get this blue chest on the right before you let the sand suck you up. Because you can't get back up, you'd have to go all the way around again, come back in from the top. So yeah, get that blue chest and then fall down the sand. Smash that wall there for uh, capacity max up. Loot this blue chest. Come here, loot this blue chest at the top. If you can, keep running past it then. In this room, continue right. Yeah, you've got HP max up over here. And then come up. Remember to fully explore this room. Yep, then come into this room on the right. Get this blue chest on the bottom left here. And come into this final room at the bottom right. Yeah, go to the bottom right corner, get that blue chest first, come to the bottom right corner, break the wall, there'll be a secret room. Don't think even broke it then, there's just a room there anyway. But yeah, just go in that room on the bottom right, make sure it's discovered, and then make way past these guys up here. There's a save point on the left there if you need it. Uh, but once you're done, come up here, go into the first room you reach, and loot the blue chest, make sure all these rooms are discovered guys, check your map if you want to double check. That's it. And then use a waystone to walk back to um, the hub area. Right, all we're going to do now, guys, do a bit of crafting and such, and then that'll be it for this video. Alright, so come to Lindsay first. We're going to report back the death of Carl and the death of Saliyu. You should get diamond times one and crystal times two. Yeah, come over to Anne. You want to purchase coca bean. That's C A C A O. Yeah, coca bean. You want to buy two of them. Yeah, they need to buy baking soda times two, butter times two, and heavy cream times one. Yeah, once you bought them, guys, head over to Johannes. Now you want to prepare some cheese. Yeah, going to prepare. Yeah, like I say, cheese. Make sure you've equipped the apron and the alchemic bounty, remember? I think I just did that. So yeah, prepare cheese. Uh, cocoa. Flan. Flanny, yep. Yeah, craft some of that. Um, chiffon cake. Egg souffle. We've already got an egg souffle, but we're just crafting it so it becomes available to buy because we need more than one. Um, by, sorry, craft fruit juice Great. I'll go with and then craft a nectar. Great. I'll go with this. That's it, then once you've done all that, go into your dismantle menu and you want to uh, dismantle Fragorach. Yeah, so dismantle. Yeah, you can use that. Um, you can use that fruit juice to get some more MP recharge. Yeah, go into dismantle. And you want to dismantle the Fragorak, guys. Dismantling that costs nine, it costs nine alcohest, but you'll get all the materials. Sword fragment times one, gold times two, and then um, the other one. 
And you want to come to craft and craft it. So the, the items you got when you dismantled it, you can actually craft it with the same items. So yet now craft it. What that will do, it will make it available to buy. And then once you've done that, guys, we're going to go over to um, Anne. Yep, and we're going to sell a lot of stuff now to get a bit of money now. So you want to sell platinum. So we're trying to make, we're trying to make now about about seventy three thousand. So I've got nothing. You need about seventy three thousand gold. So you can sell platinum. You must keep three. So sell any excess platinum, but make sure you keep three. Sell any excess crystal, but make sure you keep two. Sell any excess silk, but make sure you keep five. Walnut, sell any excess, but keep one. Mahogany, sell any excess, but keep two. Cypress, sell any excess, but keep five. Yep, and then you can sell poison cookery, the sanyi gun, traveler's hat, spiked breastplate, lethality ring, weighted ring, and the risk ring. Yeah, like I said, I've got all this listed in my text guide. Like I say, you try and get about 73,000 gold, but you just got to be very careful. You do not sell something which you're going to need later. But if you sell what I just mentioned then, you should have, I mean, I've done, I've probably done the minimal amount throughout this game. You should have at least more than me, I'd say. You wouldn't have less, probably at least more. Because obviously you're new to the game, you've probably been killing more enemies and whatnot. So you should at least have a little bit more. So once you've done all that, guys, you want to come into purchase. You want to buy cookies times three. Cocoa times one. Cocoa. Yeah, cocoa times one. Uh, Pido times five. Yep, and Fragorak times four. This is all very, very important. See, so yeah, Fragorak times four. That's it. Did I say 73? It's more like 63,000 you need. Sorry, apologies for that. But I'm sure you noticed. Yeah, 63,000 it seems. Yeah, once you've done all that, come back to Johannes. Now you want to prepare all this food. So you want to cook an apple pie. Cook an apple pie. Remember to make sure you've got the apron and alchemic bounty equipped. Yeah, so apple pie, lemon cream pie, strawberry pie, chocolate cookies. If you're missing anything, guys, it's probably because you've missed some back in the guide. Yeah, then the chocolate cookies, then the cinnamon cookies. Yeah, everything we're crafting now is going to increase your look once you eat it. Pretty much everything. Yeah, then cheesecake. Then the chocolate cake. Yep, and then the rolled omelette. And the fried egg. Okay, right, so go back into dismantle. Now this is going to take 45 to dismantle all of these. You should have just enough if you loot, if you um, farmed 54 earlier. So craft all five Fragorak. All five. That's it. Should get out, you should get from this Sword Fragment times 5, Gold times 10, and Holy Water times 35. And come to Crafting Menu, go into Shards, and you want to upgrade Augment Gold to rank 9. You have to craft it eight times, eight or nine times, but yeah. Upgrade, augment gold guys to rank nine, and now you're gonna get lots more money. Yeah, now you always always want augment gold equipped as your passive, yes, augment gold, always. Now from lanterns, you'll always get more money dropped. It'll just be nice going forward. It'll get even better later on, but for now, it's gonna have to do a rank nine. Yep, so that'll be it for that one guys, just save your game. So we're going to be sort of completing the entrance in this part and Forbidden Underground Waterway. We're not going to be doing everything in the um, entrance, but most of it. Of course, like the last five hours of the game are going to be quite a bit of farming here. So coming here, Ivanville, you see this guy here, Bone Mott. You want its shard, which is Bone Toss, and you also want one Melting Skull from him. 
and a stone mask. You can kill the bat at the same time, you're going to have to farm the bat set in a second. So yeah, get a shard guys, and like I say, melting skull and the stone mask. Once you've got them, continue all the way to the right. And you see this birdie, the Alo. You want to kill this one, it's Shard, the Gale Crawler. You want Tomatoes times two from it. And you also want a Monster Bird's Tear. So it's Shard, Gale Crawler, Tomato times two, and Monster Bird Tear. Most of the enemies we're farming here, they only take me like a, a few minutes here. Not like the Living Fossil in that last video and... Um, uh, what's it, Amy? Amy the ghost, the female ghost. Yeah, Amy as well, we had farmers for some Alkest. So once you've got all that, drop down here and then make your way along here, guys. Now we're gonna farm this rat. So giant rat, you wanna get the shard. Summon rat, um, you wanna get its rat tail. I've just lost my spot in my guide. Oh, here we go. No, I haven't. Yeah, so you wanna get a shard, summon rat. You want rat tail times two and rat teeth times one. Yeah, just a sand. Very nice. Just put some plastic gloves on or something. But yeah. You want it shard, summon rat like I say, rat tail times two, and rat teeth. If you get cheese in the process, bonus. But when it comes to things we need for crafting, if it's not something we actually get from an enemy, a lot of them I just buy it. Just in case you know you had real bad RNG and you didn't get a lot of it from the enemy. I've tried to decrease all the farming as much as possible, so where we can, I am trying to buy stuff from the shop. Just because obviously that's always there. Whereas if you're farming an enemy, you could have really bad luck. So all these items we farm on all these enemies throughout the guide, by the way. The items which you can't really get anywhere else, or they're just really difficult to get elsewhere. And I've sort of shown you the easiest, the easiest source and fastest source to get that item. Yeah, any items we're getting throughout this whole guide, the way we're getting them is the easiest and the fastest sword to get that specific item. There's always various ways to get different items, but I've tried to go with the way which, like I say, might be the quickest or the highest drop rate. So yeah, so what am I trying to get still? Rat tail? Was it? It's teeth. Oh, there we go. I've got his teeth, yummy. Yeah, once you've got everything you need from the giant rat, just continue to the east and you should come underneath the main door to the entrance. The you'll come yeah, you'll come to the entrance to the entrance. Right, so um if that gate is open, just use the dimension shift to get past it. And then go through the entrance and into the entrance. Right, so through here, kill the bats along the way. Because from the bats you're gonna need some things which I'll mention a bit later. Yeah, don't worry about the bats, I'll mention them soon. So this guy, you want his shard, sword expertise, make sure you kill him twice in the process. Sab knock. Yeah, you want his sword expertise shard and you also want line main times one from him. So you want a shard and line main times one. That's a shard, I think that's the second time I've got it actually. I'm just trying to get his main. No, he dies pretty quick, so that's why I'm not using my magic. Getting quite a bit of steel there. Oh, long sword. No, we've already got a long sword, actually. Oh, there we go. Lion main. So once you've got that, come up to the top left. Get that blue chest. Come up a bit more to the top right. Loot that red chest for 1,000 gold. And break this wall on the top right, guys, for MP max uppy. Right, coming here next, and you're gonna farm this sort of death creature type thing. I have no idea how to pronounce his name. Do not even ask me to try. So you're gonna farm this enemy next. So what you want from this, you want his shard, which is called Death Cry. You want Witch's Tears times three. You want Sinister Rag times three, and Cursed Ring times one. I'll just say that again, guys. So you want Witch's Tears times three. Sinister Rag times three and Cursed Ring times one. I just got to check something with this um, Sinister Rag a second. Yeah, we just need three of them. Just 
I just remember something about them when I was doing my last sort of practice run. I think I had it as two originally, but then I realised you actually have to get three. Which is a little typo, I guess. So, yeah, so again, guys, just mention it one more time. It's shards, which is tears times three, sinister rank times three, and it's cursed ring which you can drop. Hold on, I might have to edit this out. I think. Just let me check how long I'm fighting this enemy for. Yeah, I just trimmed a minute, a minute off there. I mean, it only took me about a minute longer, but it's a, um, it's a extra minute off the length of the video, of course. So this room next, guys, in the top right, the axe outsider. Make sure you killed it five times, as well as the shield outsider. So all these enemies here, make sure you kill the axe outsider and the shield outsider at least five times each to complete the quest. Obviously, you get the items in here. You got capacity max up. You got blue chest, and you got that chest on the far end with the meat dish recipe inside. So make sure you loot all the items in there and start farming these guys. So the axe outsider, obviously that's the first guide with a axe. You want the throwing axe shard from him. Really original that one. And um, you want mithril times three and Damascus times two from the first guy. Okay, second guy. Again, very original name, shield outsider. You want directed shield from him, his shard. You want Sinister Skull from him. You want a steel from him. And you want... Oh, sorry, you want a steel breastplate. Got ahead of myself, didn't look on the next line. You want steel breastplate from him. And then this sword in the background, this sort of flying sword, you just want its shard. That is all you need. So I'll just mention one more time, guys. So from the axe outsider, you want its shard. You also want Mithril times three and Damascus times two. Shield Outsider, you want Directed Shield, it's Shard, you want the Sinister Skull times one from him, and you want Steel Breastplate from him as well. And the Sword in the background, Bloodbringer, you want it Shard, Familiar Bloodbringer. And that's it guys, so just keep killing these enemies, remember make sure you've killed the um, Shield guy and the Axe guy at least five times each for the um, respective quests related to them. I mean, you could get really good RNG and only have to kill, you know, the axe guy three times and the shield outsider once. That'd have to be crazy good RNG, though. But yeah, just keep doing that then, guys. Actually, I think I'm done in a second. Yep, I think just like two more laps into this room. So, of course, when you're attacking the shield guy, attack him from behind. Attacking the shield, obviously, de deflects some of the damage. So, um, always a good idea to try and get behind the shield. Just like common sense, really. If you've got a shield, attack behind the shield. Yeah, so um, once you've done that, back in here, guys, and to the bottom right. Loot that chest there for the leather chest guard. Come to this room. Now in this room, you're going to farm a, this dog type enemy, Gearmund and Bats. So make sure you killed at least four Gearmund though, at least when you come through here. That's that dog type enemy. And you also want to be killing them ghosts. And what you want from these guys, so Gearmund, the wolf, the dog, you want the shard, shard from him, summon Gearmund. You want demon dog fang times two. And you want hound skin times one. Yeah, from the bats, you want their shard, which is summon bat. You want small webbing times two and bat fang times one. And from the ghost, the blue ones, you want summon ghost from them, guys. So I probably wouldn't worry too much about the bats. Just kill them as you're coming through. Um, what I mean is don't worry about looking at their items they're dropping. Because you'll kill so many bats doing this, you, you're bound to get what you need from them. Um, obviously from the blue ghost all you want is shards and the dog you want it shard and like I say demon dog fang times two and hound skin times one but I just mentioned it all again guys just make sure um, we're on track so Gearmund the dog type wolf you want a shard called summon Gearmund you want demon dog fang times two you want hound skin times one the bats you want the shard from them summon bat you want small webbing times two and a bat fang times one and the ghost, you want someone ghost a shard. That's all you want from them. 
Right, I think I'm doing this for like the next minute or so, so I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit, guys. Right, so yeah, pretty much done. I think I've just got to get this shard from the... Oh yeah, shard from Gearmond and the shard from the ghost, I think. I know, it seems, I guess I've got a shard from the ghost. It's just the shard from Gearmond I was waiting for. Alright, so we come into this room on the right once you farm them enemies. Some items I mentioned. Come back into the Bidden Waterway by dropping down that sort of shaft. Well, the blood was earlier. Now I come all the way to the left in this room. Now I actually forgot to get the shard from this guy. Like at the end, when I checked all my things, I was missing one shard, and it was this guy. So you want to farm this guy now, the Archdemon. Make sure you've killed him at least six times as well in the process for the shard. You might find it better to invert, just easier to win in then. Attack him, and then go back. Yeah, like I say, while you're farming him, my guys, make sure you get. Make sure you've killed him at least six times for the quest. And what you want from this Archdemon. So you want his shard, which is the words of wisdom. You want Demon Tail times one and Demon Fang times one. Yeah, so Demon Tail times one, Demon Fang times one, and his shard. Yeah, like I say, I forget to get this is the only shard I actually forgot. I was, I was quite lucky actually. I thought I'd, I thought I would have messed up and missed more things. But it's only that enemy shard. So yeah, just make sure you've got everything you need from him. Then come up here guys, loot that blue chest in the water. Loot that blue chest as well. You should get fried fish amongst other stuff. All doing in here is making our way through and uncovering all these map tiles. So through here next, it's going to take you back up near the entrance to the entrance. Right, once you've got all the map tiles discovered along this way, make way back now to where the Archdemon was. Because you left the area and come back in, these blue chests um, should have respawned. You can loot them again. I can't believe I forgot, I um, didn't get the shard from this guy. I must have completely overlooked it when I was looking at my, uh, my text guide and checking what I needed from him. I must completely overlook the shard. But yeah, now what you want to do, you come into a safe room and then um, you want to farm this water leper next. That's a sort of frog enemy with wings. Yeah, frogs with wings, really weird enemy. But yeah, it's called a water leaper, which is not in water. Yeah, so you want the shard from it, summon water, summon water leaper. You want toad heart times one and toad weapon times one. Then once you've got them, you'll make your way down here, guys. Loot that blue chest. And carry on. Belong here. Loot this blue chest in this room. Yeah, carry on to the bottom of this shaft. Yeah, so this enemy, you want to kill it for its shards. Yeah, this is called the Seeker enemy. So what you want to do is get a shard from it. So just keep um, leaving, coming back in and using flame cannon. There's quite a few lamps near to get your MP back, so it doesn't matter that you're using magic to kill it. Yeah, so just keep going out, coming back in guys, killing it. Hopefully it shouldn't take you too long. Like I said, the shard this guy drops is called Detective Eye. There you go. Just make sure you don't leave the room before the shard actually enters your body, otherwise you won't actually collect it. Right, down to the bottom, loot that blue chest. And then coming here next. Right, we're gonna loot this blue chest here. Come to this bottom right room. Now you wanna farm this enemy now, Glashton. So this underwater horse. So from this guy, you want amphibian speed, that's a shard that it drops. You also want water horse main times three. Water horse hoof times one. And the Ayama weapon times one. So just say again guys, if you want the shardy drops, which is amphibian speed. You want water horse main times three. Water horse hoof times one. And I am a times one. That's a weapon it drops. I think I only got a few more kills left. Yep, yeah, so once you've got what you need, yep, yeah, gonna hoof out of there and come at the top right. And you've reached a warp gate. If I can get up there without getting knocked back down, here we go. Yes, yeah, so just make way along here. 
and you want to warp to the hidden desert. Yeah, so warp to the hidden desert, guys. And make sure you've got the um, remember, make sure you've got augment gold equipped in your passive menu. And you should be getting quite a bit of gold along your journey now. Alright, so from that warp point in the hidden desert, we're gonna go left and we're basically making our way back up to the um southeastern part of the forbidden waterway. Just a little, a little bit quicker coming in from this way. Alright, so from here. You remember, when you're low on HP, try to use anything which you've not actually consumed for the first time yet. You actually increase your luck at the same time. So in here, loot the blue chest and then loot that green chest for the strider belt. Yep, so you can use reflector ray or um, dimension shift and then just slide. Yeah, so loot that chest for slider belt. Loot the chest on the top right for 500 gold. Throughout these rooms, make sure you've got the Aegis plate equipped, guys, just so you don't take damage from the traps. Yeah, loot this blue chest in the top right. And now we're going to farm this sort of clam type enemy. Shither, Skither, Shyler, whatever. Yeah, you want resist slash the shard that it drops. Yeah, loot that blue chest as well. So the clam type enemy, you want its shard, which is called resist slash. And you want clam times two. Yep, so farm the clam enemy for clam times two and the shard, guys. Yeah, it doesn't take me too long. I can actually see part nine coming into view on my text guide, so there's not really much left to do. Just farming. I wish they didn't put this 100% items trophies in this game. You see how quick we got first story? And it's basically all you're doing now for the light room, the last 70% of the platinum time is farming. Yeah, I would have preferred like speedrun trophies, maybe high difficulty trophy, you know, a few other things. A few other misc runs, for example, maybe go through a game without changing weapon. I don't know. I always quite enjoy them type trophies. More, you know, more so than actually just farming, farming items and whatnot. Right, so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to farm this guy, uh, sorry, this fish, four nears. From this fish, you want the shard it drops, that is sure. And you also want four nears fillet times six that it drops. Yeah, so you want the shard, guys, that is sure. And you want four nears fillet times six. So yeah, just keep leaving, coming back in and connect, like I say, it's shard and four nears fillet times six. I'm going to just make a little cut here. Little teeny weeny cut that was. Yeah, but I only need a few more. You know, I think this series is going to be only about six hours long. With me cutting out some time, you know, farming time, it's cutting a lot of time over the length of the video series. It took me seven hours, five minutes to get platinum here. So um, some of this time I'm cutting out, you know, grinding, it's actually taking time away from the length of the series. Obviously not a platinum time, but the series time. Okay, so in here next, obviously make sure you loot that blue chest in that previous room. Now what we want to do is farm the Decima enemy. Yes, that's a sort of je jellyfish type, you'll remember. So from that, you've got a shard already, obviously. Aqua Stream, because we needed it, it's like story related. So you want to farm these Decima. You want aquatic fillet times two. Aquatic blood times one. And slimy leather times one, guys, from these. So say again, you want aquatic fillet times two. Aquatic blood times one and slimy leather times one. Getting plenty of shards here. Plenty of shards. Um, I don't have to kill it many more, so we'll just stay here, kill it a few more times. Yeah, good thing is you've already got a shard. Aquatic fillet times two, aquatic blood times one, and slimy leather. I've already got a slimy leather already, I just saw it drop a moment ago. You've already killed these. We had to kill these for a quest as well earlier, but we did that much earlier in the guide. I think we did a quest, the kills for the quest, when um, we are actually farming it for this shard earlier in the game. And obviously, make sure you've uncovered all the map tiles in the stream as well. Yep, so once you've got what you need, come here, guys. You come here and save if you want to. You don't have to, but come and save. Just, you know, be safe. To be safe. 
Right, once you've done that, come in here, come back, and uh, go in that room at the top. Yeah, you're going to come up here, use Dimension Shift or Reflect Ray to get through there. And then come up here and use that shortcut lever. Come in here next, and um, get this blue chest in the bottom left corner. So what we want to do next is we want to farm Toad. Yep, it's basically the frog, the toad. Yeah, so you want to kill that next. So from the toad, you want its shard, which is called Release Toad. And you also want Toad Eye times two. Yep, they are little guys, so I'm a bit annoying to hit sometimes. I mean, it's a bit overkill using your flame cannon on them, but I guess you can do if you want. So yeah, you want the shard guys, Release Toad, and also Toad Eye times two. And then loot that green chest I just looted for um, the fish dish recipe. Loot that blue chest on the left and then come into this room. Loot that chest for the traversus ring. And then come up here guys into this room on top right. And over here guys on the far right. It's a HP max up. All over here waiting for you. Right so once you've got that HP max up. Drop down here, go left, loot that gold chest, uh, sorry, red chest for um, 500 gold. Loot that wall there for the voice changer, that breakable wall. Yeah, you got the voice changer inside. I think it just makes it so your character is a little bit squeaky. You know, like when she said ha, huh, then when she fired the flame cannon, it says she'd be like, ah. yeah, it makes your voice a bit squeaky. Not deep, squeak, squeaky, as far as I remember. All right, so um, yeah, farming these, what is that? Four enemies? Oh no, three enemies now. The other one's in the next one. Yeah, so what we're going to do now, guys, is going to farm these three enemies. You've got the Shovel Knight. you got the... Um, the Carabia. And you also got the Shovel Armor. Uh, sorry, Bower Armor, the Carabia, and the Shovel Armor. Yep, okay, so we'll go for the guy, the blue guy first. Shovel Armor. So Shovel Armor, you want his shard which is the summon shovel armor shard you want x shovel armor from him steel times five and shovel times one all right real armor that's a guy who keeps loving the um, spinning enemies you want its shard from him which is summon bower and the decarabia that's a circular sort of blade type thing in the middle you want circular ripper from him and you want durable leather times three Alright, I'll just mention them again guys, so I can say it's quite a lot to um, try to remember there. Or just look at my text guide. I know I could have put all these on screen, but it just it would have been too much work guys. You've got my text guide if you need to refer to, um, you know, written instructions. So again, going from left to right, shovel armour. You need its shard, which is summon shovel armour. You want the X shovel armour times one item. You want steel times five. And you want shovel times one. Okay, and from the blade type enemy in the middle, the Carabia, you want the circle ripper shard from him, and you want durable leather times three. And then the bull armor enemy on the right, all you want from him is a shard, summon bower. Okay, so just farm them a little bit more, guys, and then we'll just move on into the room on the left. Yeah, I think that's about two minutes I just cut out. Right, so once you've got what you need, you're going to come into this room on the left, and now you've got this rolling enemy, so Bower. So from these, you want to farm these for Liam Pelt times 6, and Monster Fang times 1. If you just sprint over here, you can normally kill 3 quickly. They do keep, seem to keep spawning in this room, but if you want to kill these 3, run out, come back in. It just seems to be a bit quicker. So yeah, like I say, you want Liam Pelt times 6, and Monster Fang times 1. I've got about another minute doing this, looking on my timeline. I'm done, guys. Yeah, we're pretty much done in this video. I mean, we're just going to make our way up to the top left of this room now, uncover all the map tiles, end up back in the entrance, go to save points, and yeah, call it a day then. Go to save room as well, just save the game. Yeah, so like I say, from these guys, you want Liam Pelt. Leah 9 Pelt times 6 and Monster Fang times 1. 5 more, 5 more laps by looks of it.
There are still quite some difficult enemies coming up, by the way. Um, it's not until we get... Once you find every single shard in the game, by the way, there'll be an item which appears back in the hub area, and it gives you infinite magic. Once you get that, the game becomes a lot easier. Farming money becomes much easier as well. But the problem is you have to get all the shards before you can do that. Yeah, that's the thing with this 100 items. Uh, some of the items you have to get, you have to do other things to make other items available. Like you have to get every single shard to make this item available. You have to do all the quests to get some items. Even though there's not a trophy for doing all quests, you have to do all the quests because there's items locked behind it. Just stuff like that. Yeah, so back in the entrance, guys. Unlock that shortcut gate to get the HP max up. Get this blue chest on the top right here, and I'm just going to save the game. What I'm going to actually do, I'm going to do it here guys. There's two mini bosses we have to sort of farm. And farming them can get a little bit messy. Um, I'll show you the best way to do it. And hopefully you don't have too much problems. I mean if you have really good RNG. Then you're in luck anyway. But um, it, it all depends on your RNG really. So um, that's where we started from. Remember suspended my save there at the end of the last video. We're going to come up here and we're going to farm the Mako Weed. What you want from Mako Weed is you want its Shard, which is Fly Trap. You want Fey Leaf times 6 and Mako Leak times 1. This one don't take too long. Just farming this enemy quickly. It takes like a minute or two. Yeah, so in this video we're going to finish Garden of Silence, guys. Like I said, it's going to be a mini boss we have to farm here. Um, we're going to finally finish Forbidden Underground Waterway. Basically go in by another entrance and finish that. And then we'll be heading up to the Oriental Sorcery Lab, finishing that. And also do a little bit in the Cathedral. But yeah, the Oriental Sorcery Lab will be the last thing we sort of do. But yeah, remember what you want guys, you want this Shard Fly Trap. You want Fey Leaf times 6 and Mako Leak times 1. I think they're in the ingredients menu, yeah. You know, food ingredients. Yeah, there's Fey Leaf and there's Mako Leaf. So yeah, once you've got them, make way right past there. Drop down here and they come into this room on the top left. Now, almost all these enemy types we're going to farm. Obviously, we don't need to farm the, um, the Mako Weed on the floor no more. We farm the rest. So, the fat sort of flying pig thing called the Plume Palmer. From that, you want a Shard. And you also want Plume Pork times 11 it drops a food but I don't that food is like a I think it's like a 0 0.5 0.05 percent drop it's a very low drop rate or it might be one percent so um I decided not to bother about farming that and we just craft it later if you do get some great but don't worry about the food it drops so yeah so the plume palmer that's a fine pig you want it's shard summon plume palmer and you want plume pork times 11 from it um from Barbados that's the archer type enemy with the sort of green green hat on. Yeah, from him, you want true arrow, that's a shard he drops. You also want dreadful rag times five and HP rounds times three. And then the knight in the middle, guys, the blood grinder knight from him, you want his shard, which is called heretical grinder, and the spiral sword from him, the weapon he drops. So I was mentioning it one again guys and then I just skip ahead a little bit, let you do this yourself. So the Plume Palmer, you want its shards and you want Plume Pork times 11. Barbatos, you want its shards, you want Dreadful Rag times 5 and HP Rounds times 3 from him. And the Blood Grinder Knight, of course you want his shard and you want the Spiral Sword from him. So just farm all these guys until you get all that. There we go, cut out about two minutes there. I think I just needed one more dreadful rag, but I've got it now. So next we want to come in here and explore all these map tiles at the bottom. Loot the chests. You can dimension shift past that or use craft for it to move it. Loot that chest, guys, for best, uh, sorry, beast berry. Definitely not the best one. Yeah, the beast berry. Loot this chest for the obsidian equipment, the recipe. Carry on to the left. Now in here, guys, going to be a mini boss. Now if you want to invert, when you fight this boss you want to invert 
and just attack him from the ceiling by just jumping up and um, using flame cannon. He can kill you very, very quick, so be careful. And um, yeah, what you'll find if you do, if you do have farming a few times, I think I get quite lucky. I get everything I need on my first kill. Quite lucky. Yeah, you want to actually equip flame ring for him as well. Otherwise, your damage will be so small it take you ages to kill him. So just put flame rings on. I know you're gonna decrease your item drop rate a little bit because obviously you're taking, you're only equipping the thunderous rings, but. It's just a lot better just be doing a little bit more damage to this guy. And that's basically how I do it. You can see each hit is doing like 150 damage. Obviously heal up if you need to, but just watch your healing items. That's going to be a more difficult fight um, a bit closer to the end of the video. Just going to try and save most of your healing items for that if you can. And this guy, there's a save frame closer to him. So um, what you can do, if you do have farming a few times, you can just go out um, in the next room. On the bottom right, there is the um, portal. You can walk back to the pub area, guys. Save there and then come back. Shouldn't be too long. But yeah, this guy is called the Revenant. And from him, you want his shard. The shard he drops is Runa's Root. Or is that supposed to be Hood? We'll see in a second. I think I might have wrote that wrong. Yeah, and you also want Imbrued School times one from him. I got a trophy there, Dare to de Devour. Yeah, so um, like I say, you want his shard, and you also want a imbrued skull times one. The item he drops, we do need more than one, but we just need one to craft a specific item, and then later on, we're just going to keep making that dismantling it to get more. Otherwise, it will take you to farm this guy a lot more. So, yeah, it's better just to farm him for one, and then we're just going to dismantle to get the others which we need. So, yeah, like I say, you just want his shard and the imbrued skull, which you can drop. Yeah, they take a long time to kill these guys. So um, I've tried to minimise the items you need from these as much as possible. It's only two of these. It's this and another mini boss. There's three mini bosses, but the third one's really easy. Because it's literally like a save point. Two doors to the left. And each time you fight him, you can just sprint it over, save your game, and then come back. Right, got him. Oh, th yeah, there's your shards. And there's the item. Oh, it's Rhino Street. Yeah, and there's the item, guys, in Brood School. So hopefully, you'll get them on your very first attempt. You could actually suspend your save. You, before you face him, you could actually leave the room, come back in, suspend your save, and then go into the boss room. You can't suspend while you're in the boss room. But if you leave that big area, that big room, go out, come back in, and then suspend the save, and then enter the boss room. So then, if the first time, you don't get what you need. You just go back in, fight him for the first time again. It's so that that way it saves you using up all your consumables. You can keep trying that until you get lucky, or just keep like say leaving, going back to hub area, save your game, come back. Yep, and once you're done, so guys, come over here. Now you're going to farm this enemy now, Carabos. For her, you want her familiar, Carabos, and you want Fairy Dust times three, and Fairy Medicine times one. So you make sure you get the shard from the fairy, and you want Fairy Dust times three and fairy medicine times one and then equip that familiar call her and then sit at this piano guys and then basically what's going to happen she's going to sing a song let the whole song play out don't be tempted to um you know move if you get bored you have to let this play out then right at the end you'll get a trophy so i'm just going to skip ahead a little bit guys and let you enjoy this wonderful melody yeah so you'll get a trophy recital listen to the fairy song that's it. Once you've got that, you can re-equip your other familiar if you want to. Remember, if you had flame rings for that boss fight, make sure you've gone back to Plunder's Ring. Right, go in that room, just been in, get a blue chest, come down here in this room, get that blue chest, come across here, get that capacity max up. And then drop down here, guys. Like I said, we're going to finish Forbidden Underground Waterway now. Yep, so back in here. Yeah, at this point, um, Garden of Silence should be all fully explored, I think. Yeah, so over there you got a breakable wall, guys. MP max up on the top right. Come down a little bit, take this first room on your left. At the top here, there's a chest with the elemental ammunition recipe inside. Like I say, this can be the last time we visit Forbidden Underground Waterway. 
I, I guess probably except for me because I had to get that shard, which I forgot. Yeah, but so um, what if you do here? Try to make sure you fully explored and done everything here. So I say you're not going to be coming back. So save your game, then come down here, get that sh uh, shortcut shard, get that HP max up on the left, back up here and head left to this room with the waterfall. That chest there has got curry powder inside, and that chest in that room has got curry dish recipe. Take them. Take that capacity max up from there. Make sure you've um, discovered all these tiles, guys. Get that MP max up. Drop down. Smash that secret wall there. Come in here and you'll find... Is it Benjamin? The Stranded Man. Right, give him a waystone. He'll give you 5,000 gold and a little bit of XP. Back here, drop down. Get that blue chest. And just above the blue chest is a secret wall. That's got a capacity max up inside. Pretty weird spot that to have a breakable wall. Yeah, on the bottom right, smash that wall. And then come in here, guys, get that chest for a critical ring. Make sure you go up a little bit and just make sure you've discovered all the map tiles in this waterfall room. Take the bottom left exit. Carry on through here. And loot this blue chest along the way. Make sure you get a fried fish if you don't already have one. Yeah, if you. If you Use all your fried fish and you don't have any more. Suspend your save. If after you've looted these blue chests in this room you don't get any. And then try again. You need a fried fish. Coming up for something we're going to do back in the hub area soon. Yeah, fried fish. Like I said, if you don't get one from them two chests and you don't have any. Suspend save to reload this room and then try again. And then carry on through guys. We want to fully explore this room. That's it. Once you've done so, head back. Back through here. And I'm going to take that top exit now. Yep, on the bottom right there, so breakable wall, guys, for the MP max up inside. Safe room over here. Then carry on to the top. Take the room on the top right. And this chest will have a steel equipment recipe inside. Steel equipment. So um, steal that from the chest. And then come over here guys to get the remaining tiles that should be forbidden underground waterway all fully explored now. There we go. Right, so um, use a waystone to head back to the hub area. Right, so now we're going to report back to Lindsay. So head over to Lindsay which is still standing in the same place as earlier. So yeah, you can report back the death of Annette, the death of Lisa, death of Simon. Death of Edward, death of Trevor, death of Matthias, and the death of Richter. With from them, you should get the rewards hemp times five, brigandine times one, obsidian times five, silver times three, Damascus times three as well, and then the platinum times two, and the bandit blade. The bandit blade, equip it, equip it, because it's going to be your strongest weapon at the moment with the strongest attack. So, yep, yeah, once you get bandit blade, equip it, guys. There you go, and then come over to talk to Anne. Now to Anne, you want to buy potions. Basically buy as many potions and high potions as you can. And then buy as many waystones as you can. Yep, and then once you've done so, come back over here. Now we're gonna warp. Yeah, we're gonna warp to the cathedral area next. Yeah, so to the warp point guys, and warp to the cathedral. Okay, so go left into this room. I'm going to go into the bottom left exit. Now we want to farm this evil looking meow until we get Rigor Storima. So yeah, just farm this enemy until you get a shard from it. Rigor Storima. Shouldn't take too long. Yep, there we go. And then once you've got that shard. Go back to the bottom right and farm the ore dog next for the shard that he drops. As the jet. There we go. Then come in here. Now all these enemies, quite a few things to farm here. Okay, so the killer barber, that's the Edward Sisterhands type enemy. You want dagger expertise, the shard that she drops. You want rubber bureau times six, that's a weapon that she drops. So you want six of them. Sharp razor times four. You should get the sharp razor and the shard from that killer barber while you're trying to get the six 
weapon she drops, the rubber bureau. The demon, then the shardy drops, augment intelligence. You also want sinister fang times one, which he drops, and sinister heart times one. And the gargoyle, guys, you want the shard he drops, petra ray, and the gargoyle stone. So I just mentioned it all that one more time, guys, and then I'll just give ahead a few minutes. So I've got it all. So the killer barber, you want the shard. You want Rava Bureau times six and Sharp Razor times four. The Demon, you want the shard that he drops. You want the Sinister Fang times one and Sinister Heart times one. And the Gargoyle, you want Petra Ray, the shard he drops, and the Gargoyle Stone times one, guys. Right, I'll leave you to it, guys, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah, you'll probably find that'll be the last item you need. Um, by time you've got your six Rava Bureau, you've probably got everything else that you need. And um, I should have said earlier, but there is a save point, guys. So um, just use magic on each one you need to. And if you need to um, recover your MP and health, just come to come right two rooms. And there'll be a save point, guys. Yeah, so once you've got everything you need, guys, obviously just saved your game. And then we're going to come this way next. So bottom left to exit. This will take you back into the entrance. I think this is actually the final part of the entrance. So you've got that blue chest there. Got a second blue chest there as well. Now destroy this floor at the bottom, it's a little secret. In here you'll find the Santa hat in the chest and also a capacity max up. Once you've got them, come back up here and take the bottom of the exit and I make way all the way to the left guys and to fully explored everything. There you go, every room's fully explored now. So from here, we're gonna carry on to the left. We're gonna make our way into the Oriental Sorcery Lab now. This way just seems a little bit quicker. Yeah, then from here, go all the way up. the save point on the bottom left there if you want to save your game. Yeah, come all the way to the top. Top left, exit. Discover these rooms in the meantime. That's it, all the way back into this tall shaft at the very, very start of the entrance. Now we're going to make our way to the very top. And into the Oriental Sorcery Lab. Yeah, so you can just keep inverting and um, using Dimension Shift. Remember, you might want to use Aegis Plate for this bit as well, because there's a lot of spikes around, and they will damage you. Right, there we go. Yeah, so this room, the, the mini boss here, is quite annoying to... Um, farm because the save point is really far away and the enemies hit very hard as well in here yeah so um, you want a dimension shift in this little spot here and Ben will be here I think is it Benjamin yeah you want to give him another waystone finally yep yeah, it'll give you 10,000 gold and a bit of XP if he's not there guys it's because you've missed a step in his quest somehow I have done it all like I said if he's not there though it's because you missed a step in his quest and you have to go back from a text guide yeah, then loot that chest, guys, for the talisman scarf. Come inside here. Come up here, guys. This is going to take you into the top of the cathedral area. Yeah, fully explore this room. You'll have a MP max up inside the bell. Loot this two chests at the top here. you got a potion and a hair apparent too. And I forgot to... You see that little tile on the right there? I forgot to explore that and I'd come back at the end just get that one little tile. So make sure you've discovered all the map tiles in that room, guys. Right, then come in here. Go through this exit the same way as me. There you go. Yeah, make sure you go through them the same way as I do. We'll bring you to the bottom left, smash a wall to find a secret. And get the Kisuni mask from that chest. And go through these the same way again until you reach this guy. You're just going to have to watch to see the best way to come through. Trying to explain how to go through them doorways gets a bit confusing. It's best to just watch what I'm doing. I mean, I've explained it in my text guide. Yeah. If you actually watch my video, it'd be better just to watch what I'm doing rather than me explain to you. And that enemy we just farmed, Higanti. From him, you want his shard, guys, Petra Breath. And you also want Flying Beef times one from him. We do need more than one Flying Beef, but similar to the Imbrued School from earlier. We're going to get more flying beef later from crafting something and then keep this mantle in it. Yeah, then come in this room, guys. Get a Crimson Knight equipment recipe from that chest. 
In here, up there. Over here. Come to this room on the right. Just explore that and then come back in here. Go to the bottom left to finally reach the warp gate. There you go. So if you do need to use a waystone, you can walk back here and you'll come in that entrance. Yeah, now loot this chest for 2,000 gold. Then make our way back across here. Come into the bottom right of that room. Sorry, I know it's a bit inverted. <laughs> My um, directions can be a bit confusing. Go in that chest, uh, sorry, that room. And loot the chest for the Hero Apparent 8. And then back in here, guys, loot that blue chest. Get any blue chest you see. There's not too many in this area. And we want to keep killing this this big cat here. This is a Kamikaze cat. Do not confuse this with the cat from earlier, which we found in the cathedral. This one is different. I think this one's like more white. Yeah, the enemies we want to farm now is that big white cat, which is called Kamikaze, this one. And that flying sort of red bat enemy called Gap. Yeah, so from this cat, uh, this cat Kamikaze, you want Tornado Slicer. That's his shard that it drops. And you also want Silk times 5. And then this flying sort of Cyclops type bat enemy. What you want from him, you want his shard, which is Augment Strength. You want Demon Horn times 2. And Demon Wing times 2. But while you're killing the cat, that should fly up to you, allowing you to kill that on your way back. So again, the cat. You want the shard from the cat. And Silk times 5. And the gap. We want a shard, augment strength, demon horn times two, and demon wing times two. So once you've got what you need from one, you can just focus on the other and completely ignore whichever one you've already farmed what you need from. So I'm just checking up. I'm just going to skip ahead a minute or so, guys. Now it looks like I didn't need to. Pretty much done it. Okay, so what we need now... Yeah, you can farm the gap there. Another place to farm the gap is this room here. A little bit quicker. There you go, yeah, just come in. Go out, come back in again, farm that gap. So yeah, once you farm Kamikaze, and if you didn't get what you need from the gap, you might want to come in this room. Just a little bit e easier to kill him. Yeah, the safe room in the Oriental Sorcery Lab, you have to go right, you have to go all the way to the top. I mean, you can see it on your map. You did go in there from earlier. Yes, yeah, only one safe room in this area. There should have been a safe room here, you know, like halfway through as well. Just going to check. I've got two, de uh, what is it, two, two demon bones, and sorry, two demon horns and two demon wings. That's what I need from the gap. Right, little edit there guys, just cut out about 30 seconds of farming. There you go, got what I need. Okay, so once you've done that, got what you need from the gap. Come into this room, this is Carpenter's room. This is another mini boss type enemy. After this, this is the last sort of difficult mini boss. After this, every other enemy in the game is going to be sort of mega easy. Right, so again, make sure you equip both your flame rings just so you do a bit more damage. Now what this guy does is he can summon Arch Demons. Sorry, not Arch Demons, I think it's Demon Lords. Yeah, he can summon Demon Lords, and they take quite a bit to kill. He can summon three at a time, and what he'll do is throughout the fight, he'll try to craft, like, a sort of chest in the background. It's random. Sometimes he'll just craft a, a pot, which you can't interact with, like what he's just crafted now. And sometimes he'll craft a chest. If he crafts a chest, you can loot it for the item which you need from him. It's like another way to get that item. But each time he does craft something in the background, that's when he spawns the demon lords. So like I say, he can... For each fight, he can potentially craft three max. So that means you can have a max of three demon lords to spawn as well. But again, you just want to invert like you did with that previous mini boss. And what you want from the Master Carpenter, guys, you want his shard, which is Chisel, chisel Barrage, and you want Imbrued Bone times two from him. Like I say, he can, he's got potential to craft something in the background. He'll craft a max of three. He's already crafted them. A lot of times he'll just craft that sort of pot like he has in the back. That crate which he can't interact with. But sometimes he'll, he'll create a chest. And that chest will always have a imbrued bone inside. So you might get lucky. You might only have to kill him once. He'll get the shard from him the first time. 
and a imbrued bone and you'll also get an imbrued bone from a chest that he crafts. But yeah we have to come through this area quite a bit so what I normally do I kill him once now and then I make a lap of the area we come back in later kill him again on another lap go all the way through back to her area do another lap kill him and that's how I seem to do this area guys. So rather than keep going out and coming back in and you'll find you'll probably soon run out of um, magic and healing items. We just do one lap at this whole area because like I say there's other things we need. And you're not going to get them all first time so you're going to have to come back in here anyway. I'm talking about stuff in the blue chest. So yeah it's very annoying he does a lot of damage to you just be very very careful with him. When you go back to the hub area, can we stock on uh, healing items if you need to? Got him. Look, bad luck. You didn't drop anything at all that I needed. Like I say, you want you want his shard, chisel, barrage, and you also want imbrued bone times two from him. Right, I'm just going to try and make way to save point now, guys. Uh, so make way through here. You got a blue chest there. Up here, you've got a chest you want to loot for the Ofudu Talisman. So come all the way to the right. Yep, get that chest for the Ofudu Talisman. Come back to the left. Now we're going to make our way to save point, guys. Once you get to the save point, that's where we're going to farm the ninjas. Yes, these ninjas, we do have to farm them as well. There's a blue chest here. That's the sort of last blue chest in this area. So what we actually need as well, you know these blue chests, you actually want MISO times 3 from them and soy sauce times 9. Yeah, MISO times 3 and soy sauce times 9. That's why I said we have to come back in here a few times. And that's just a little edit there guys because I actually recorded this bit in two parts and I sort of stuck them both together. Yeah, so once you get to the safe room, just walk back to the hub area. I was going to do another lap. So this is what we're going to do each time we're going to go through, loot the blue chest, kill Master Carpenter, get to save point, use the waystone and then come back in and do another lap. So like I say from the blue chest we want Miso times 3 and Soy Sauce times 9. So you come along here, you'll loot this blue chest, dimension shift, carry on to the left. Yep you'll kill Master Carpenter again, hopefully you'll get what you need, I'm just going to cut this fight out a little bit guys so like I say you want a shard which he drops and you want imbrued bone times two like I say if you get lucky and he actually crafts a chest in the background you can loot that for another imbrued bone I had really bad luck with this guy on this particular run again he didn't craft a chest and he didn't drop anything again I had really bad luck with him right so once you killed him Hopefully you got what you need. So you're just going to go back, do another lap towards the save point, get a blue chest along the way. So again through here, get this blue chest. Like I say, you need three MISO and you also want soy sauce times nine. And then when you're on your last lap through here, so once you've got what you need from Master Carpenter and you also got what you need from the blue chest, that's when we're going to farm the ninjas. Yeah, just checking how many I've got, soy sauce and miso. So again, save your game guys. Now use the waystone. To walk back. Right, back in the warp portal, walk back to the oriental sorcery lab and we're going to do that lap again. So again, we're going to get the blue chest. We're going to go back to the master carpenter. We're going to kill him. So what I do guys, I'll just edit this a little bit. I'll get to the master carpenter fight just in case I get something good from him. So yeah, remember, just going to get his blue chest here. In fact, I may as well just lead us up to it. You get a blue chest again. It gives soy sauce and miso quite often, so you don't have to get too many of them. It's a massive carpenter, so hopefully now I'm going to have a little bit better look with him. Get something which I need. So again, just make sure you've got foam rings for him. And straight after the fight, go back to plunger's rings. So again, let's kill him. I didn't get a shard, but at least he dropped a bone. There you go, got a bone from him finally. Yeah, so I got one of them, I need one more, and I still need a shard. So again, just back through the area, guys. Get the blue chest along the way, back to save point. 
and then back to the hub area. In the hub area, if you do need to get any more waystones or healing items, you can just go and visit and buy a few. And then come back here, guys, and do another lap. And just check how many I've got. Um, okay, where are we? Six soy sauce, I think. So I just need a few more soy sauce. Right, so I'm just going to make a little edit, guys. Just back to the Mass and Carpenter. Hopefully... I get something good from him this time, but like I say, again, just walk back to the Oriental Sorcery Lab. Do a lap, get in the blue chest, and back to the Massing Carpenter. Can't believe how many times I've had to kill this guy. Well, at least I get a shard this time. I think I still need one in Brood Bone, though. But I've got the shard at least. Just one more bone. But what I'm actually doing now, I'm just going to come back in. Because I only need one bone, I'm just going to wait until he crafts a chest. So I shouldn't have to fight him. And he normally always crafts a chest on the third attempt. So you normally have to wait for him to craft the first two. And if he's going to craft it, it will normally be on the third attempt. I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure I've never had him craft a chest on the first attempt before. It's always sort of been the third. So um, I just edit it a little bit, guys, until he's crafted it. You can normally tell if he's crafting a chest because it will take him longer. Yeah, it'll take him longer. But yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah, so he's finally crafting. How many times I fought him? It took him all this time to craft a chest. There it is. So you can randomly craft a chest, and that will always have an imbrued bonus site. So that's it. I got what I need from him. Finally, the shard, chisel barrage, and um, two imbrued bones. And... I think I only need two more soy sauce. So if I don't get what I need, I'm just going to suspend safe so I don't have to come all the way back in here again. There's two more blue chests for me to um, loot. Soy sauce there, I think I need one more soy sauce. So there's one more blue chest there. And like I say, once you've got everything you need, then we're going to farm the ninjas quickly before we leave. Um, I didn't get a soy sauce and I need one more. So I'm just going to suspend safe to reload this room. And then come back in. Yep, and this ninja guy... All you want, this ninja guys, sorry. Yeah, all you want from the ninja, you want the shuriken shard and crim, uh, crimson knight times six and eastern fabric times one. Yeah, you'll see in a second. This part all together is probably taking me about an hour. I've edited out about, I think I've edited about 25 minutes of farming. Just that, that way into a sorcery lab, just a pain in the ass to farm the enemies. And there it is, my final soy sauce. So like I say, you want nine soy sauce and three misos. And this is best spot, uh, best spot to farm the ninjas because obviously you're close to the save point. And like I say, you want Crimson Knight times six. You want the ninja, you want the shuriken shard from them. And you also want the eastern fabric times one. By the time you've got these six Crimson Knight, you should also have everything else. And all you can do, just uh, you know, because there's a save point nearby, you just print him from left to right, killing all the all them that you pass. Obviously, they're hidden beyond the silly doorways. Just use flame cannon twice. Make sure you got plunder's ring equipped. I said, just keep running through, then back to save point, save your game, and come back and do it again, guys. Just keep doing that. Like I say, say one more time. So you want the shuriken shard, which I drop. You want crimson knight times six. That's very important. And you want Eastern Fabric times one. Crimson Knight is the rarest drop they have. So probably more than likely that will be what you'll be farming last with them. So I'm just going to make a little cut guys till I get my last one. Yeah so I sort of get my last one here. You'll see I've only got four Crimson Knights. But you want to get six. Trust me you want to get six. I think I had to get two more from somewhere. Can't quite remember. But in my text guide obviously that's a little bit more up to date. I think I got to the end of yeah, and I realised I was missing two Crimson Knight, but I got them from elsewhere pretty quickly. But yeah, just get six Crimson Knight from him, guys. That'll make it a bit easier. So instead of four, get a six. Yep, then over to the save point once you've got everything you need. Use the waystone to walk back here, guys. And then save your game or go to the safe room. Yeah, so we, we are getting there. We're getting there slowly. Just got a sort of the um, east side of the map now to finish it off in these next few videos, then quite a bit of crafting. 
So what we're going to do first, going to come and talk to Benjamin, he should be down on the bottom left considering he finished the rest of his quest. And he will give you the adversity ring. Once you've done so, come and speak to Johannes. Make sure you got the apron equipped, remember, and um, alchemic bounty. So yeah, apron and alchemic bounty. Then you want to prepare. Consume me. Yeah, consume me. And then simmered fornius. Yeah, so consume, simmered fornius, and then fish hot pot. Consume, Simmer Funius, Fish Hot Pot. So once you crafted them, we're going to go over to Anne, to the um, you know, shop to the left. We're going to craft five high potions, five high ethers, and as many waystones as we can. Yeah, so you're going to buy them things I just mentioned, like I say, as many potions and ethers as you can, and then as many waystones. And then we're going to come up to the um, fast travel room, guys, and walk to the cathedral. So what we're going to do first, once we reach the um, cathedral, we're going to go right and then up, up that shaft and through the shortcut we should have revealed earlier. Yeah, and we're going to farm the... Occupied enemy again, the bird enemy. Not the demon, the bird. Yeah, we farmed him a, a bit earlier on, but what we want from him now, we want to make sure we've got a shard. You've probably got a shard already when we farm the, um, I think it's apples we farm from him. But yeah, this guy up here, so just farming this guy again. Remember, there's a save point either to the right, a few rooms, or to the bottom right from here, if you need one. So we want to farm this enemy and the light elemental while we're doing so. So you normally kill him, kill the light elemental, and then drop back down here and repeat. So from the Occupied enemy, the bird, you want its shard, optimised, you want flight feather, times two, you want g-bone steak, times six, and apple times three. And the light elemental, all you want from that is its shard, guys. I know it's a bit annoying to kill that thing, but luckily, all we need is a shard it drops, resist light. So yeah, until you get the shard, you just come up, you'll kill the bird. Go a bit higher, kill the light elemental, drop that down, come back in and repeat. And once you've got the shard from light elemental, you just come up, quickly kill the bird, back down, back in, kill the bird, back down, back in and repeat, guys. Don't take me too long this, I mean I've got another minute farming. So it shouldn't take you too long. Your current look rate and your um you know your plunders rings equipped. Of course, make sure you've always got them equipped, guys. And any items which increase your look. I think I've got quite a lot, a lot of optimizer shards. That speeds up your attack speed, I think. Yeah, so I'll just say one more time, guys. So you, the Occupied, you want its shard. You want Flight Feather times two. G-Bone Steak times six. And Apple times three. And Light Elemental, you just want its shard, which is Resist Light. So once you kill these, you're going to go in the room on the right. There'll be actually be a blue chest in there as well, just on the upper part, which you can grab. Yeah, the blue chest. But yeah, this room on the right, after getting the blue chest, you want to farm the... There's three enemies in there we want to farm. So you've got the um, you've got the lance armor. You want its shard, spear expertise, and silver times four. The gamijin, that's a horse. You want the kick expertise, that's a shard it drops. You want hell horse hoof times one, and the hell horse main times one. And the simian, that's a little tiny thing in there, a little tiny enemy jumping around. You want the summon simian shard, it drops a monster blood times one. And monster fur times one, guys. So, yep, yeah, just um, checking, I've got a thing, got plenty of fight, uh, flight feathers. G-bone steak, yep, yeah, we're looking good. So, yeah, in here, so, yep, yeah, these three enemies along the bottom. I mean, there's two lance armors, make it a little bit quicker to farm them. The blue chest is up here. You can grab that on your first lap. Yep, so um, two top enemies don't need to farm them no more. So yeah, these ones along the bottom. Lance Armor, Gamagin, Gamagin, the horse, and um, Simeon. So I'll just say one more time what you need from these guys. Um, so Lance Armor, you want Spear Expertise that it drops, and you want Silver times four. Spear Expertise is a shard. You want the shard from all three of these. Yep, the Gamagin, the horse, you want Kick Expertise, 
that's the shard that it drops. You want Hell Horse Hoof times one and Hell Horse Main times one. And the Simeon, the little guy, you want Summon Simeon Shard that it drops. You want Monster Blood times one, guys, and Monster Fur times one. Obviously, once you've got what you need from one of the enemies, you can just avoid killing that one and just kill the ones you still need. Obviously, speed it up a little bit. Right, and I'll just skip ahead about 20 seconds, guys, and see you in a minute. Right, sort it. One or two more, and we're good to go. So once you've um, got what you need from these, this enemy in the next room, this guy here, the um, the souped up version of the um, bow and arrow guy from A Garden of Silence. Yes, this guy, Luria, Luria. You want the shard he drops, and you want the Turader gun he drops. So you want the shard, which is called Chaser Arrow, and you want the Turader weapon that he drops, guys. I just got a Turader a second ago. So yeah, just get a Turader and his gun. Safe room there if you need to save. Shouldn't take long to farm this guy. Not long at all. Yep, and then once you've done this, you're going to head take that right exit into the Hall of Termination. So you're going to be going past, you know where we fought Bloodlust earlier? Just going to run straight past there. I think this is it. I think this is a kill. Yeah, there we go. So I've got a shard now. So once you're done, guys, just make a save. That's it. Or, you know, just rest to get your health back. Yeah, we're actually going to come in this room here. So we're not actually going through the bloodless room. We're coming through this room. So, yep. So into the Hall of Termination via the top left exit. Uh, sorry, entrance. Or top right exit from... Uh, from a cathedral perspective. Yeah, so we're farming this enemy first. Tri Wheel Brewer. All you want from this guy is uh, Shardy Drops, a familiar brewer. You can get that from another enemy, but I get it from him because he's got a high drop rate for it. Yeah, get that blue chest. Come up here, guys. Get that chest and get a Blut Gang from inside it. Loot that blue chest at the bottom. Come up here. Come through this room. You're doing a sort of clockwise lap. And they're going to the top left of this area. So break that wall, guys, for a MP max up. Take the bottom left area. The bottom left room, sorry. Up here, loot that chest for the ultimate healing item recipe. Grab that blue chest there. Drop down here. Uncover that safe room. Safe game if you want to. Yeah, once you're done so, back out here, down the shaft, make sure you get that blue chest on your way past. Them axe guys, by the way, in this area, they're a good source to um, the axe outsider. Yeah, get that blue chest there. Yeah, they drop they drop a material, which is quite a common drop for them. Yeah, and break that wall there, guys, with capacity max up. Yeah, it's quite a common drop, the materials they drop, but they sell for quite a lot as well. So if you need to farm money at this point in the game, they can be a good source of income, guys, just because of how... Their drop rates and the items they drop and they sell for a lot. So yeah, they can be a good source of income. Alright, so um, in here, we're going to farm the Titania enemies. From these, we want the shard they dropped, Augment Mind. We want Ribbon times 2 and Vespine Wing times 1. So yeah, two ribbons, guys, and Vespine, Vespine Wing. Yeah, that's a shard. Try and get that wing. Yeah, and that door on the top right there, that's actually takes into like a little another mini boss room room. But this mini boss is really easy guys because um there's a save point two doors to the left. Look, just here there's a save point. So close to it. If only all all the other mini bosses had a safe room like right beside them. So all you want for this guy is you want Inferno Breath. You can just keep your um plunders rings equipped for this guy because after each fight you're gonna be going back and uh Rest in to get all your HP and MP back. Yeah, so just come in, guys. Use your Inferno Breath. So from this enemy, this jackpot. Um, well, it's called actually called Millionaire Spain. You want the jackpot shard that it drops. You want Imbrued Fang times three. Yes, yeah, so you want the shard it drops called jackpot and Imbrued Fang times three. So it's going to take you a few kills. Obviously, I just completed a quest, killing that for the first time. 
you actually need to kill it for a quest as well. So yeah, after each fight guys, just come back here, save your game, back across, Inferno Breath, kill them quickly. Obviously as you see me doing, when he goes over to the left or to the right and he spawns the coins from the ceiling. So make sure you stay on the, just on the outside of the coins, just so you're within range of Inferno Breath, but not close enough for the coins to damage you. And yeah, just repeat that guys until you get what you need. Like say you want the Shard Drops, Jackpot and Imbrued Fang. So just do that for a few minutes. Yeah, a few minutes. Took took me about five. I just cut about five minutes from the video. So I think this is my last Imbrued Fang. Or was it the Jackpot I needed last? Ah, uh, Imbrued Fang. Yeah, so that's all my three Fangs that I need. Right, so I'm just going to save the game one more time. Then we're going to go to top final rooms of this area in the top left, which is going to lead you to like a secret dungeon. So up here to room on the top left, loot that chest for hair apparent 11. There's a secret wall on the ceiling there, smash it, come inside and loot the three chests. You'll get a gram, celeste key and 2000 gold to make sure you loot them. And you'll also find a HP max up guys and a MP max up. Then once you've done so, come in here guys and interact with the bookcase to enter the 8-bit nightmare. So the enemies near drop a shard as well, but they don't drop items, so you want to kill all the enemies until you get a shard they drop. The 8-bit skull, that drops 8-bit fireball. The ghost drops 8-bit ghost. So I spelled that wrong, put 8 but. Yep, and the zombies drop the summon 8-bit zombies. So yeah, basically like I say, you just want to kill all these three enemy types. You've got a ghost, the little skull breathing fire at you, and you've got a zombie near the end. Yeah, so you can kill all these guys until you get the shard drop. You're going to be coming through here quite a few times unless you can just mega lucky if the boss drops. So don't worry if you don't get everything, all shards you need on your first run through. Just obviously on your next run through, just kill only the enemy you still need the shard from. And if you want to... The shard that them skull drops, 8-bit fireball guys, it's like a basically upgraded version of the flame cannon. It's much, much stronger. Probably does like two and a half times damage. Um, it uses a little bit more MP, but it's definitely worth it if you've got a time. So if you wanted to, when you're coming through here to kill the boss, you can actually farm 8-bit fireball. If you can get to 9, and then to actually upgrade it, you actually have to use... Um, gold coins uh, sorry 16 bit coins and whatnot they can be expensive but like I say if you want to farm the axe cider axe outsider in this area can be a good source of money so if you want to get a bit fireball farm it but you know why you're farming this boss but you don't have to I'm not going to use it I'm just letting you know guys in my old version in my old when I first started playing this that was my sort of go-to, I use flame cannon for the sort of first half of the game and then as soon as I can get that 8-bit fireball I go flat but I don't get it now just because it takes obviously a bit of time to um, grind it and to get the money you need to upgrade it so I don't really go for that much now but just let you know yeah so this guy, this is the 8-bit overlord what you want from him is his shard that's all you want, his shard he will always drop well, the first time you kill him, you'll get war back here and there'll always be that chest the first time with an 8-bit nightmare inside. That chest only spawns once, so once you've completed 8-bit nightmare for the first time, guys, and you spawn back there, loot that chest for the 8-bit nightmare. And then all you need to do is keep going back in there, guys, until you've got a shard from all of the enemies. The boss is the most annoying one because you have to go all the way to the end. But he dies pretty quick. You just get to the boss, use Inferno Breath, just make sure your MP is relatively full. And each time you kill the boss and get warped back to the normal world, go down, save your game, come back in and do another lap, guys. And then we'll pick up from there. So yeah, it's going to take you, I think this takes me about 10 minutes actually. I had quite bad luck. But if you're lucky, you've got every shard you wanted on your first run. If you are mega lucky. So yeah, just keep doing this, guys. So like I say, come all the way back here, Inferno Breath on him, save your game, come back through, repeat it until you've got all the shards from the three normal enemies in this area and this boss type enemy and I'll see you in a tick that's literally about 10 minutes I've just caught from there but yeah this is where it drops finally got a shard so yeah 8 bit flame 
So once you walk back, we're going to use a waystone, guys, to um, head back to the hub area. Damn, I don't know what to do with this. There's literally like two minutes left of the video. Hmm. Do I add another bit until the end? Yeah, so talk, come and talk to Lindsay. And then um, report back what you can. You should get a gold power ring. That Bix bite, you probably can't have that question yet. I think that's from the um, Demon Lord. But we will be killing more Demon Lords later. But yeah, all you want to make sure you do is hand in the Death of Just quest for the gold power ring. Then come down to Johannes. Remember, make sure you got the apron and alchemic bounty equipped. And you want to craft the Rava Vela weapon. Yeah, Rava Vela or something. And that's the weapon you want now, guys, for the rest of the game. This weapon is really good. It lets you attack while you are running with accelerator shards. Like so. And it makes farming a lot better in some spots because you won't have to keep using your magic. If you run to an enemy, spam that a few times, they're dead. Run back out and back in. Yep, then come over to um, Anne, guys. You want to buy as many high potions and as many high others as you can. You also want to buy Flan times 5 and Smoothie times 5. Just some extra sort of healing items and MP healing items if you need to. Just sort of last, a sort of last resort thing if you run out of others and um, potions. So once you've done so, we're going to fast travel back to the Hall of Termination. And then you're going to make your way along here. We're going into Liver X Machina now. That's Hall of Termination all done, guys, and A Bit Nightmare. So yeah, come through here now into um, Liver X Machina. This is sort of like a mini boss enemy type thing, which you can actually avoid um, if you just try and get through a game. But obviously, you tried 100% so we have to kill it. But as you can see, you don't have to kill it for story progress. Yeah, so um, kill this, see Abyssal Guardian, we did actually encounter one of these in the Den of Beh uh, Behemoths. It's one of the normal type though. But this one's, for some reason, it's considered a mini boss. But yeah, kill him, you'll get that trophy, Dragon Slayer. I guess you do have to kill him actually for the trophy. Forgot about that. Yeah, kill him for the Dragon Slayer trophy, guys. Come along here, guys. And there'll be a safe room. So now what we want to do is keep coming out here and killing this Thunder Elemental. What you want from Thunder Elemental, you want his shard, which is Resist Thunder. And you also want Emerald Time 6 from it. It drops Emerald quite, uh, quite often, so it shouldn't take you long. And yet, that's a shard you want, Resist Thunder. How many ele Emeralds do I have? You can actually check how many you have. If you already have 6, more than 6, you've already got enough. So that's it, I'm all done, guys. I'm just going to save my game. Yeah, but I've managed to com compress this a little bit into a smaller amount of time just because I've been editing out quite a bit of that farming. So yeah, three parts left. Two parts after this one. So when you begin, guys, we're in Live X Machine, and remember, come down to stream on bottom left, Celeste Room, unlock it and just head inside to discover it. And then make your way down here. Yeah, we cross here and we want this blue chest. Yeah, get that blue chest from him. And if you haven't got the shard, which are dragon drops, Get it now. You should have it, but if you haven't, get it from that dragon. And then once you've got a blue chest, guys, make your way back up here. Now this room, I actually miss a map tile. Do not do the same thing. And this ceiling in the middle, smash it for secret, guys. And loot that chest for the um, Diabolist's cap. Get that blue chest in that top right room. And make sure you get all the map tiles. You see, I miss a map tile there. Didn't even notice. Yeah, I can see it now on the map looking at it. Yeah, I'm such a donut sometimes. But anyway, you want to farm this chest, guys, the Mimic. Do not confuse this with that yellow sort of Mimic, just a standard one, and it will drop. The Shard, money is power. That's all you want from it, money is power. Yeah, it's a very accurate statement, that. So once you've got that Shard, money is power, come down here. Now you want to farm these guys. Now try not to let these touch you. I mean, if you do, it's not a big deal. They don't do much damage. It just turns you to stone, and you have to sort of rotate the stick and spam the button to get free. But yeah, just attack these. What you want from these guys, the Malediction. You want their shard, which is called Resist Petrification. And you want a harp here, which you drop. Yes, you want the shard, which I just got, and you want the harp. So harp times one, which I drop. Just keep attacking. It won't take long. They just they keep spawning. You don't have to worry about leaving and coming back in the room with these. Just stand, stand here, and they'll just keep coming for you. You can't stand on the bottom floor, because they don't seem to spawn then. You have to sort of stand a little bit into the room.
There we go, got it, harp. So once you've got that, guys, come down. Go left. Remember, we are uncovering all the map tiles in this area as we're making our way through. Come to the far left here. Break that wall, guys, for your capacity max up. While we're here, we're just going to pop down here and get a blue chest. That one's just there. So get our blue chest because we do want some garlic. And now we want to farm this chair enemy. Yeah, we're going to kill the chair. It's called a chair mimic. So from this guy, you want his, his shard, which is called summon chair. Yeah, so um, if you need to take a break, you can just summon a chair once you get a shard. And you also want chair remnants, which you can drop. So I guess I've already got that. But yeah, you want a shard, summon chair, and chair remnants times one. That's an item that you can drop. Come back along here and into this room. Now you've probably seen that switch on the top left. Yep, you've got a pick up list bookshelf on the bottom with craft work, so you're going to have to equip that. Then you're going to have to high jump upwards and then drop it on the switch, guys. That's it, just drop it down on the switch, that will open this secret door on the right. Head inside and you'll find a shard in there, familiar silver knight. You already have one, but it will just upgrade it a little bit more so it does a little bit more damage. And then come in this room, drop down, discover this tile. Go right, through here, down to the bottom, get this chest there. That chest has got a thunder circle inside. Loot it. Room on the left, make sure you discovered every map tile in this room. Now what we're going to do, we're going to farm this... So it's my battery going low on my phone. Yeah, we're going to have to farm the... Um, Carriage Mort enemy, from that you want its shard which is firearm expertise and you also want to farm that sort of book enemy called the Dantelion. From that you want its familiar Dantelion shard and you also want strange leather which I just got and you also want tome scrap times one. So again guys from the carriage you just want its shard firearm expertise and from the book you want its shard familiar Dantelion and you also want strange leather times one and tome scrap times one. This familiar, I actually keep this one equipped once we get it because it it doesn't attack enemies for the most part, but it, it buffs you and it will increase your damage, which is really helpful. So make sure you discover that room on the top left. I just went in and then came back out. And then up here, what we're going to do next, guys, we're going to farm Tamako Death again, like we did earlier. So this time, if you haven't already, you want to get her shard. Ignore me, I don't know why I'm going back up there. I think I wanted to get that blue chest and I realised I've already got it. Yeah, so now we actually want to farm this enemy, which we did earlier in the game. So like I say, you want her shard if you haven't already. Her shard is called Upbeat Heat. You want Silver Tiara times 1 if you haven't already got one. You need Strawberry times 5. So yeah, you want, from her you want her shard, guys. Upbeat Heat, Silver Tiara and Strawberry times 5. And then once you've done so... Then what you need to do is farm all the blue chests in this area until you get garlic times six. Now in the X Machina, that bottom right blue chest, you remember just near the um, exit into Tower of Tr uh, Twin Dragons, that blue chest doesn't seem to drop garlic. It's all these sort of blue chests sort of from here going upwards. So if you need more than six garlic, you just have to keep warping away, warping back and just running around and grabbing them blue chests. Yeah, I'm just checking I got her shard. Again, got everything here. Just have a little look. To be honest, to be honest I have no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> I guess I'm just having a little check up here. Got a dandelion. Yeah, you probably find you'll be doing that a bit later, just checking up on things. Yeah, once you've got everything, like I say, you want to make sure you've got garlic times six. So um, check your inventory and just double check. You'll probably see me check mine in a second. There we go. Yeah, so garlic times six, where is it? Oh, there it is, I've got five. I've got five garlic, so I need one more. There it is. So yep, just warp away, warp back. And if you remember where the blue chests are, if you want a reminder where your blue chests are in this area, you can just check my maps on my linked collectible guide in the description. You've got my linked platinum guide, which basically explains every single step we're doing. But my collectible guide lists everything. It's got maps, 
it's got where all the items are it's a very useful resource to um check up anything you're missing and exactly where to find it and it's really easy to use i've tried to make it so it it syncs really well with how the lists are displayed in game yeah so got garlic there oh i think i realize here that i need the shard from the dragon i think that's what i was looking at yeah so um early in the guide i did say to you when we farm we farmed one of these in the infernal cave and i said to you then make sure you get this shard um, I didn't, so I'm just getting that one. Right, so we've got six garlic. So next we're going to head down into Tower of Twin Dragons. Yeah, so make your way just to the bottom right of this area. And you'll find the exit. Yeah, so like I say, I like to try and equip this familiar because um, it buffs you. It buffs you with your attack. It increases your attack by like, I forget exactly, but it's about 10 or 20%. You know, you get more damage from that than you're, you're actually familiar, like Silver Knight, for example, attacking like once every 10 minutes. Right, it's going to save the game here once you get into Tower of Twin Dragons. Once here. Yeah, it looks like I'm just having to sit down for a moment. And... A little edit there. Yeah, I made a cut. I sat there for about 10 minutes, just pondering, pondering about life and stuff. And what to farm next. Yeah, so here, loot that chest for a hyperventilator. And that chest fully partisan. Up here, loot that chest there. I forgot to do it. You see that chest? Loot it. That's got a gadget band inside. But also, while you're in this room, you want to farm these enemies. So that guy. Um, build armor, you want to get iron breastplate from him. You probably likely already got a shardy drop from earlier. But yeah, farm in here for iron breastplate. And also, these blue dull hammer heads they're called, floating about. You want to farm these for the shard they drop, which is called familiar dull hammer head. And also for a dull hammer helmet. So yeah, like I say, farm the build armor for iron breastplate. Times one. Once you got that, you want to farm the Dollar Hammer Head until they drop the shard and until you've got a Dollar Hammer Helmet. Right, and while you're doing that, guys, I'll just make a little cut. Waste of time, it's like I cut out about 10 seconds, but it is what it is. Right, so yeah, I've got a shard right in here. Once you don't get poisoned by the frogs, remember, they can poison you. So loot that blue chest. We're always looting all blue chests, remember, when you're going through an area. Can attack most of these enemies you go past. Loot that chest for a pasta dish recipe. Yeah, pasta dish recipe. And then that chest in the far corner for hair apparent seven, which I just picked up. Continue up here. Loot that blue chest. Yep. Back down here, go right, watch these poison toads. Remember, we're also uncovering all the map tiles as we make our way along. Yep, and you slowly make your way to the top left and you'll find that chest, guys, with sweets recipe inside. And on the ledge just above, you find a MP max up. Yeah, make sure you uncover all these map tiles in this room. Yeah, up here should be a HP max up, if you haven't already got it. Don't worry about that wolf, we're going to be farming wolves a little bit later, the wolf man. And then on this top right chest near the exit, guys, is a weapon inside. So loot that chest for Konos Rebook. Right up here, loot that blue chest. Yep, up here, make way to the right. Carry on to the right. Past here. Do not go down the lift just yet. Blue chest there. Right now here, you want to farm this enemy now, Poltergeist. For this, you want the shard it can drop called Welcome Company. Got a blue chest there. Yes, you want the shard called Welcome Company, and you also want Oak Times One, which they can drop. Once, you, once you've done so, drop down to the bottom of this room. So you remember this room earlier? I actually came back in here. I backtracked because I missed a tile. I didn't need to because we're coming back in here again, as you can see, to make our way through it. Right now, in this room, remember safe room to the right if you need to. We're going to loot these enemies now, Kalino. Same time, we're going to uncover that map 
tile to the left. There's also, if you go a bit more to the left, there's a shortcut lever. You might want to unlock, I don't bother. But if you want to unlock it, yeah. Two rooms to the left, there's a shortcut lever. Just an elevator shaft. But yeah, you farm in these guys. You want the shard they drop, called Teps Ocius. You want Monster Bird Hair times four. You want G-Bone G Steak times six and Thunderbird Plume times six. Yeah, we did actually farm G-Bone Steak from another enemy by just just to split it up a bit because we've got to farm both of them, both enemies for different stuff. I um, I just put a six on this guy, six on these and G-Bone Steak on the other enemy, which is similar to these. But yeah, these specific ones, like I say, you want their shard they drop. You want Monster Bird Hair times four. Yeah, four strands of hair. You want G-Bone st uh, Steak times six and Thunderbird Plume. You probably noticed just then, they do drop Strawberry. The reason we farm Strawberry from Tamako Death is because she's got a high drop rate. And um, we just farm that while we're farming other stuff. Sometimes if an enemy seems to be taking ages to drop a shard, you can actually check if you already got it. As you can see, I've already got that one. I'm just going to check. I've got all the items I need. So G-Bone Steak. Should have, you should have all together now about 12 plus in total. Monster Bird Hair. Yeah, I've got four strands. G-Bone Steak, I've got nine, so I'm going to need a few more. So yeah, we farmed we farmed six from the... Um, get the name of it now. It's like one of these birds, but a yellow type in the cathedral. We farmed that one for six stakes. And we also farmed this one for six stakes. So you need like 12, uh, 12 at a minimum. And then once you've got these, we're going to make our way down. Yeah, this next this next room actually below us. There's a there's really carefully hidden secret. Quite easy to miss. So it's like a chest, but it's not actually on the screen. So it's really easy to miss. Right, come on, I think I need one more G-Bone steak. No, I've got plenty of, plenty of fruit, just no meat. Is that 12? Oh, I've got two then. That's got to be 12, come on. Yep, good to go. Just make a save. What are we on? Playtime 5 hours 16. Right, drop down here, and in this room, you want to use the mention shift. Now, see this gap at the bottom? Shift down there, there's actually a hidden chest. There it is. You'll find the Valkyrie sword inside. Right, once you've got that, come outside, jump up here, loot this chest for a, a Valkyrie dress. And you want to equip that, guys, because it's got a high look stat for armor. Uh, where is it? Yep, so equip the Valkyrie dress once you've looted it from that chest. Now make your way down this spiral tower and uncover every map tile on your way down. Just sprint down it for accelerator. If you did this early in the game, it would have probably took you about an hour. You know, at your, at your sort of base game running speed. So it's much better doing this with accelerator. Yep, and once you get to the bottom, just check your map because you'll probably find there's still probably one or two tiles at the very top of this massive room that you have to high jump up to. Yeah, likely up here on the top right. Yeah, high jump up there. Yeah, there you go, see I've got them. So yep, yeah, just make sure you fully uncover that room guys and take the bottom left exit. And then take the bottom left exit again. Yeah, so elevator shaft, bottom left exit. Got 12 G-Bone Steaks. Yeah, so we're going to farm the Wolfman now. It should be just along here. There he is. So it makes you kill at least three for the quest. I've just killed my third. It just makes you kill at least three while you're doing this. So you want a shard, which is called Beast Guardian. So you want a shard from him. You want wool times four. You want Lycan Claw times one. Wolf Hood times one and sinister pelt times one make a wish break 1000 candles so i just got that one 
I don't know when I got the one for killing 1,000 enemies. I don't think I saw that. It might, it might have been in a bit which I cut. But yeah, you'll easily get the one for killing 1,000 enemies. Probably, It's probably unmissable while going for 100% actually. We see at the end, you see in my save file that I've killed about 2,500 enemies. So you've killed more than enough. But yeah, like I say, just keep farming him guys for a shard, beast guardian, wool times 4, like and claw times 1, wolf hood times 1, and sinister pelt times 1. Like I say, if an enemy seems to be really, it, like it doesn't want to give you a shard, you can always check, see if you've already got it. But this enemy is not the problem here. It's these next enemies we have to farm are. Yeah, so there he is. Wolfman, looks like I've got a shard. Right, so once you've got everything you need, remember, make sure you kill him three times as well. Come all the way to the top to, to um, uncover them top map tiles. And then go left and you should be able to drop over here. Now you see, when I killed the enemy, it made a blood stain. If you kill with magic, well fire a flame cannon anyway, it won't make a blood stain. You want to just use your normal sort of slash and attack like this weapon we're using. Uh, Ravel Virol, I think it's called. And you want to make a blood stain from an enemy. And when you get a blood stain, it should make these, it should attract these enemies. These sort of flying bugs. They're called scythe mites. Yep, and then you want to farm these guys now. Yep, uh, but once you killed a few, we'll just get all the items in this area first. So come to the top left, there'll be HP max up. You can use Blood Steel along the way as well, but don't worry, we've got a good little farming spot for that later. Yeah, you want to loot this chest on the top right, near the top right exit, for sunglasses. There's a few more scythe mites. From them, you want you just want their shard. That's all you want. Called summon insect. Yeah, loot that MP max up, and then loot the blue chest beneath it. Come down here, loot that chest for hair apparent six. So to respawn this wolf, just go out of the room and come back in, like I say. You've got to do this with a fleshy enemy. If you saw earlier that bull armor, he doesn't really, no blood comes out of him, so I think it's more like a metallic type enemy, like some sort of robot. Um, but it's a fleshy type enemy, when you use just like a slashing type weapon, it'll make a blood trail. And that's what attracts the scythe mites. So sometimes you might have to move around a little bit, and you normally get two spawn at a time. I don't know what's happened to that one. It's like I say, you just got to keep killing these until you get the Charlie drops. It's quite annoying with these because you can't just run in, run out, kill him, run out, run in, kill him, run out, run in, kill him. You have to keep, you have to obviously kill that wolf to make blood. That attracts these, you have to wait for them to come. If they don't come, you have to run around a little bit, see if they've got stuck on something, because it can happen. And then once you think you spawn them, normally once you killed about four or six, you probably killed all that are going to spawn. They're not like an infinite spawn. Yeah, normally, like I say, about four or six will spawn. So once you kill them, just go out the room, come back in, and then just do it again, guys. So like I say, all you want from these is the shard that they drop. So I'm just going to make a little cut, guys. Just keep doing that until you get the shard from them, called Summon Insect. Crazy. Took me about, almost about eight minutes, that did. But yeah, I should be getting the shard any second now. There we go. So once you've got it, guys, Summon Insect. There's one more chest here we need to loot. This one near the... Bottom left exit. Yeah, you want loot that chest, guys, for flying edge weapon. Once you've done so, just check your map. Make sure you have uncovered everything. Them two chests which are on the map then. I think one was a blue chest and one is that chest I said I, I missed. I've got to go back for. So yeah, just say bottom left exit. Come down here, guys, and save your game. And then that'll be it for this part, guys. But it's just one more thing we're going to do. So Garden of Silence, you want to loot this area until you got four ginger. I've got five ginger. So like I say, just run through Garden of Silence, loot the chests until you get four ginger at least. You can just walk away at the fast travel point to the bottom left, come back in and just get the chest again guys. And then once you're ready, make a save here. So spawn here and make sure you've got them garlic, uh, sorry not garlic, the ginger I mentioned. Remember, make sure you've got at least four ginger. If you haven't, go and just loot some blue chests in the Garden of Silence. Walk away, come back, loot a few more. You want four ginger. And you're going to come in here. We're slowly making our way to the train. 
Uh, but in this sort of long corridor, we're going to farm the bunnies. Yeah, so um, from Lily, you want bunny morphosis, that's the shard they drop. You want Lily ears times two and Lily tail times four. The puppy in the middle, you don't need nothing from that, but make sure you kill it just so it fills out on the demon list. There is a trophy for actually filling out the demon list. And for an enemy to enter the list, if you, even if you don't need anything from that enemy, you still have to kill them just so their entry gets filled in in the demon archive. So yeah, all you really want from here guys, like I say, kill the puppy at least once. And the lilies, you want bunny morphosis, the shard they drop. You want lily ears times two and lily tail times four. You can get these slams along the way to get a bit of cash and also get some of the MP back. But it shouldn't take you too long. Uh, just make a little cut here, guys. Yeah, so I've got everything I need now. Like I say, bunny morphosis, lily ears times two and lily tail times four. So once you've got all them, make way to the far right. I'm going to board the train again, so make sure you've got your ticket. Now, you don't, you don't need any tickets. You can jump straight on it now. And it's always going to go to the same destination, the underground sorcery lab. Yeah, so once you come in, just make your way along. You kill these enemies. We will be farming them in a minute, so I'm not going to say too much for now. But you want to come in here, you want to sit down. Very important, make sure you sit down. And then you're going to see this little sort of... Um, you're going to see it outside pretty much and you've got to wait a few minutes and eventually, yeah just sit here, don't press any buttons, eventually this thing will appear, this enemy will appear outside and eventually he'll get really close and once he spawns in, invert and go on the ceiling. If not, this thing can kill you very, very fast, it'll like curse you and it'll inflict all sort of debuffs. So straight away, since it spawns in, invert and just shoot it from the ceiling guys and it's safe to shoot it from here. Like I say, all you got to do is sit down and wait two minutes for it to appear. All you want for its shards is, yeah, that's what you want its shard, guys, resist curses. And jump up here, get its capacity max up, MP max up, and the HP max up. The, the MP and the HPs are on the top, and the capacity is just on the bottom, on the roof of the train there. Yeah, so um, just back to that enemy, we just had to sit down, guys, and farm. If it doesn't drop the shard, just... Go to into your options, suspend, suspend, and then reload, and it will spawn you back at the start of the train again, and you can try again. Because normally you'd have to leave the train and then board it again, it takes a long time. So if you do not get the shard, just suspend, go to title screen, uh, sorry, go to the options, suspend. Once back on the title screen, reload the save, you'll be back at the start of the train, and you can try again a lot quicker, guys. And once you've done that, obviously make way off the train, come here. Make a save and you want to farm this enemy now, the assassin. Make sure you kill at least four while you're doing this so you complete the quest. And from this guy you want flying dagger. That's a shard it drops. You want the assassin's ring times one. You want assassin's vest times one. And you want durable rag times two. Yeah, and like I say, make sure you kill them at least four times, but I should come should come pretty much naturally. There you go, got the assassin's ring. So once you've got everything you need from him, make your way down to the bottom. I'm gonna head into the underground sorcery lab, which is um, underground, underneath a train. Underneath a train station. Right, once in here, we wanna farm this first blue chest because it's the quickest one to farm. You can just leave the area, come back in. Obviously, make sure you've got all your luck equipment. I don't think I had my flame. Did I have flame rings equipped? I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just changing so I can use dimension shift. So you want to loot that blue chest until you have eight black pepper. So there's my black pepper. I've got two. So to come out, uh, go out, all the way out. That's it. Then come back in, loot that blue chest again, and keep doing that, guys. So like I say, until you get eight black pepper. Most of the time, it'll give you black pepper, so you shouldn't have to do it too much. There you go. That's another one. So that should be three. Well, I'm just going to make a little cut, guys. Just do this. Run back in, dimension shift through the walls is quicker. Loot the chest, back out, back in again, and repeat, guys, until you've got eight. Right, I think I need one more. Yeah, I think I've got seven. Yep, that should be it now. So back to my normal build, you know, increase look. And these enemies here, the Gushin, you need to make sure you kill at least 13 of these guys for the quest. You see at the bottom right, it says Demon Slain, six of 13, seven of 13. There's six, six of them in this room, so it's a really good place to do it. And while you're killing them, you can use your um, blood, blood steel shard to suck up some of their blood to work towards a trophy. 
Yes, a trophy connected to him, sucking up so much blood with that shot. And yeah, keep killing these, so you make sure you kill at least 13. But you also want to make sure you get that shard called Pickpocket. You also want to make sure you get Demon Pelt times 3 and Red Beans times 2. Yeah, so like I say guys, you want that shard, you want Demon Pelt times 3 and Red Bean times 2. That's it, once you've done so, yep, come through here, there's a blue chest so you can loot as well. Come in the stream at the top and you'll find this black cat, Macaroni. Kill that, loot the chest beside her for Damascus equipment recipe. Come inside here for a MP max up and get the shortcut shard guys. Remember, loot that chest there. So you want to keep killing this enemy. What you want for Macaron, you want the shard she drops, which is tox um, Toxic Storm. And you also want Cat Ears times one. So yeah, you just want the shard she drops and Cat Ears times one. I think I got Cat Ears the first time I killed her. Got, got him again. I'm just trying to get a shard now. There we go. Toxic Storm. That's it. So once you've got that, make way back to the far left. Uh, sorry, top left. There's a save down the bottom here if you need to save your game. Just make way to the top left. Now on the bottom left is a secret room. Just smash the floor. Get that HP max up first. Yeah, and smash this floor with guys with secret. There you go. Down here you find a MP max up. And you'll find a chest. With the skull necklace inside. That skull necklace, it doubles your magic damage, but also doubles your MP usage. So once we get infinite MP, that like doubles your damage, it's really good. And I'm going to farm these enemies, guys, in here, and also loot this chest on the top left. This chest on the top left, it should have the silver power ring inside. And the enemies you want to farm here, you want to farm the bomber mort for its shard called Bolide Blast. Yeah, get that chest, guys, for silver power ring. Yeah, like I say, farm this bombing mort for the bolide blast a shard. That's all we need from the black enemy a shard. The sort of black goo. And this fairy, the Sid, Siddy, you want the healing shard that she drops. Yep, and you also want fairy ring times two, which she can drop, and you also want the best pine stinger times one. It's like I say, you want bomber mort, you want his shard called bolide blast. And the fairy, you want healing shard that she drops. You want fairy ring, uh, fairy wing, sorry, times two. And you want the best peen stinger times one, guys. Right, I'll just cut to the end of my farming for that bit. And there we go, pretty much all done. Uh, one more time, I believe. There we go, got my best pine stinger. So what we're going to do now, you want to fast travel to the glacial tomb, guys. Yes, yeah, so a glacial tomb. Right, so from here, we're not going to farm that ice elemental until later, guys, because it's it hits quite hard. It's quite difficult to farm actually, and with a current build, you don't. It's tricky to kill it quickly, so we're going to do it later. We're going to come up here, loot these two chests and that one in the cord, the shaft just before this. Yes, loot them two chests. This one here, I looted on the way up. That's it. Just loot them three chests, guys, and then make way back down if you want. You'd actually just leave this area via the top left, come back in and loot them three chests just one more time as well. well I'm going to drop down here, I'm going to loot this blue chest. Make way to the top, through this room on the left here. Right, let's make way past these enemies. Yeah, cross here. Then you want to kill this. This is the Gushin Cannon, just make sure you killed it once, that's all. Just make sure you killed it at least once, just so it enters the demon archive. Come near, loot that blue chest. Back out. Over here. Yep, and if you haven't killed the demon lord yet, if you haven't killed enough, you can do so now, guys. Yeah, that's the demon lord there. I think I killed enough earlier on, when I was fighting um, Master Carpenter. You know, he summons demon lords. But to kill these enemies quickly, because they're quite tough, it's the last, it's a, like final area of the game. I use Inferno Breath on these guys. So yeah, so the G Axe Outsider, the Great Axe Outsider, from him you want his shard called Axe Strike, and you want Fiend School times one. And then Demon Lord, obviously make sure you killed it enough times for the quest. You want the shard it drops called Foul Two. You want Fiend Heart times one. And once you kill once you've got everything you need from one of them, you can just focus on the other, back out, back in again. 
Yes, like I say, guys, the Axe Outsider, the G Axe Outsider. You want its shard, which is called Axe Strike. And you want Fiend Skull times one. And the Demon Lord, make sure you complete its quest so you kill it in time. I think it's only six. You want the Fouled Jewel Shard it drops. And you want Fiend Heart times one, guys. And then once you've got them items, we'll move on. You can actually kill this G Axe Outsider. Once you've only... Say for example, you've finished killing the Demon Lord and all you've got to do now is fight the G Axe Outsider. There's also a good spot at the bottom of the stream as well. Where you can just fight the Axe Outsider without worrying about the Demon Lord attacking you. So if you, if you get a thing you need from the Demon Lord before you get a thing you need from the Axe Outsider, you can go to the bottom of the stream and get a thing down there. I'll show you in a second. But yeah, I'm just going to cut this farm in a bit guys. Just um. So once you've got everything you need from the Demon Lord, you want to come to the bottom right, loot this blue chest down here, and if you still need some things from the Axe Outsider, this is the best spot to do it. So bottom left of the screen. Uh, this way you can sort of do it without magic, if you're winning out of magic, because I know at the moment you probably use quite a lot of um, consumables to kill them to enemies quickly. Yeah, but I've actually run out of MP consumables. So that's why I keep jumping up here and using my, my actual melee weapon. It's actually a save point not far from us. Can you see that save point on the map, guys? So if you do need to, if you're running out of consumables when you're farming these guys, just go to that save point a little bit to the right and then come back and just repeat farming them. But you remember what I wanted from this guy, like I said, I wanted a shard and I wanted Fiend Skull times one. Oh, there we go. Got it finally. I think it's quite a rare drop. And then once you've got them from them two enemies, come down here guys and you want to farm this one next, a tracer. So from the tracer, what you want from this tracer, you want its shard, which is called a summon tracer. And you also want fiend eye times one. This is the best spot to farm it, just on the right here, the right side of the ring. You just jump up on this wall halfway up and your attack should hit it. And you'll also collect its items as well from the enough. Somehow, somehow the item seems to glitch and... Um, you pick it up instantly, if though you're not near, too close to the enemy. Yeah, I messed that bit up then, I had a shard and I ran out. If you run out of the room before a shard enters your body, you won't actually get it. So yeah, if you see a shard coming, make sure you wait for it to penetrate you. Turn your back if you need to for a deeper penetration. And should be more effective then. But yeah, just because I missed that, I've got to, I've got to keep doing this. I think this takes me like another good minute to farm just because I ran out and didn't let that shard enter my body. Yeah, totally wasted two minutes then, but I finally get the shard again now. So summon tracer guys and then come to a save point. Yep, so once at save point you're gonna use a waystone to, to um well first we're just gonna get his two blue chests. You've got a blue chest there, and you've got a blue chest down here as well. Yeah, it's going to use a waystone now, guys. I'm going to come back here. Now, while while you are back here, you can come to Lindsay. You can hand in any quests which you haven't already. I think I actually do a state in my text guide, but it doesn't really matter. You can do it now if you want to. Yeah, it's just going to hand them in then. Like I say, or do it later. I think, like I said, I think I do it later in my text guide, but it doesn't really make any difference. So you're going to come to Anne. And you're going to buy as many potions as you can and as many ethers as you can. There you go. You can buy five flans and five smoothies as well. Just for some backup. Right, once you're done so, we're going to fast travel back to Glacial Tomb. Right, so what we're doing back here now. You know them three blue chests at the top of Glacial Tomb. We're going to farm them three now until we get Orichalcum times two. Yeah, so I'll show you, it's this, um, yeah, that, that material, you want two of them. I've got one at the moment, so you want two more. This really rare material. The GX Outsider drops them, but it's like a 1% drop, I think. Uh, but you can also get it from these blue chests. It's, um, it seems to come from blue chests more often. You know, it's more common to drop from blue chests than, the, like, say, GX Outsider, which is like a 1% drop rate or something. Right, so yeah, we're going to loot them three chests, we're going to go out, we're going to come back in, loot them again. Like I say, you're going to keep doing that guys, until you have two. 
I've got one, so I just need one more. I think I actually get it now. I think I was quite lucky with this. I didn't have to leave and come back in many times. No, nope. okay, so one more time. It must be this one now. Yes, and then once you've got all these guys, we're going to head into Den of Behemoths next and do a bit of farming in there. Nope. Nope. I think it's this one down here. I think this is where I get it. Yeah, there we go. So I've got two now. So like I say, once you've got two, we are good to move on. But it's very important you get them two. So Den of Behemoths next. We're going to farm these giant toads. From these giant toads, you want demon heart times three. And you want demon eye times one. So you have giant toads, guys. You want, like I say, demon heart times three and demon eye times one. Make sure you kill the bat. You don't need anything from the bat, but make sure you kill at least one. Just so they, they enter the demon's archive as an entry. Yep, so like I said, from the frogs, you want demon heart times three and demon heart times one. Uh, sorry, demon eye times one. Once you're done, come up here. Then what we're going to do, we're going to loot Giant Bower. We've got to loot these. We've got to farm these two enemies at one point. Um, so just kill them as we go past them. Yeah, so um, we need to farm this enemy, Giant Bower. From this guy, you want Kashmir times four. I've got one, so I need three more. So I'm just going to show you how I farm this guy. So yeah, you just come up here. You can also get this blue chest near as well while you're at it. Yeah, just in the bottom of this room is a blue chest. There you go, there's another giant bower I'll kill. Right, so back out and I'll show you how I farm it. It's so like I say, you want cashmere times four. So you drop down here. And if you drop to the bottom, I mean, I'll mess it up a little bit. But you can actually kill it without having to use some magic. If you drop down in the right spot, here. If you drop down on here, you can actually kill it quickly if you're um, rather be there before it moves away and you don't take any damage either. So again, just drop onto that rock, attack it, back out and come back in guys. So like I say, just farm that until you've got cashmere times four. Right, one more kill I think. I think it's where my cashmere drops for me. Yep, there it is. Right, so we're gonna get these blue chests as we, we're gonna go through the top right left, uh, sorry, right left, <laughs> top right exit now guys. We're gonna loot the blue chests along the way. We're just going to loot this blue chest. Yes, that wolf and the lion type enemy. We are going to farm it, but we're actually going to do it in the next video. There's another spot where we're going to farm them. But like I say, any witchy pass, you may as well kill if you've got the um, if you've got the health to spare and the MP. Uh, so if you're low in health, don't bother killing them. Get to the safe point across here first, and we'll just farm them later, which we'll be doing so anyway. Right, so yeah, I thought I remembered the blue chest being there, but I'd already got it. Yeah, right, so through here next, guys. Gonna save your game, just gonna farm one more enemy, and then that'll be it. Sorry, two more enemies. So yeah, save your game here. This is the final area we have to sort of um, clean out, guys. Yeah, so I'm on 90, 98.10% map completion. You should actually be on, I think it's about 90, you should be on 98.2, I think, or 98.3. 98 I actually missed two tiles. Right, so we're going to farm this enemy now, guys, the Abyssal Guardian. So from him, you want the Void Ray. You can loot this blue chest beside him as well, once you kill him for the first time. Yes, you want the Shardy Drops, Void Ray. Remember to loot that blue chest. You can farm this enemy outside here in the process as well. While you're switching between rooms, farm both these enemies. And if you need to recover your MP, guys, and HP, remember that's that, there's that save point close by. That's why I'm using Inferno Breath on him. So yeah, the Abyssal Guardian guys, like I say, you want a shard called Void Ray. You want Dragon Egg times four. You want Dragon Heart times two. And you want Dragon's Wrath times two as well. And the Giant Mako, you want Fell Leaf times four. Yeah, so just say one more time guys. So the Dragon, you want Void Ray, the shard he drops. You want Dragon Egg times four. You want Dragon Heart times two. And you want Dragon's Wrath times two as well. And the giant Marco, you want fell leaf times four guys. So let's farm them guys and then make our way back to the save point. Yes that's me all done. So yeah once you pretty much once you've got everything you need from one of them you can just farm the other. So for example if you finish farming the Marco leaf 
just continue farming the dragon, but obviously you don't need to keep killing the Mako Leaf after that. Or if you do the dragon first, just leave the dragon and then keep killing the giant Mako after that. I think I need one more dragon scrap. Yeah, I think that's the rarest drop from him. Yep, and that's it. Yeah, I've got a thing I need, guys. So I'm just going to make one more save. All right, so to begin, yeah, it should be a save point in the Den of Behemoths. And you might just want to go through your... Um, well, I'm just going through my shard list here. Just checking everything is sort of going to plan. That's where I realised I missed the Archdemon shard. So, yep. Yeah. What my shards look like at the moment, you all should be very similar. Obviously, you should have the Archdemon. Um, but that's the only one I'm missing. All the rest is going to sort of... We're going to come across them now. Yep, so um, should be very similar, guys. Like I say, the only one I'm missing is the Archdemon. And, um, yeah, in this video, guys, so we're going to be actually farming money at the end of it. We're going to end up with, like, 1 million. And you'll pretty much be able to get 1 million in about 10 minutes. So um, we're going to come up here. We farm the Abyssal Dragon already, and we farm the uh, Mako Leaf. Get its blue chest on the way up. There'll be another blue chest... In this room at the top on the right, I believe. Yeah, there it is. Loot that on the way. Come outside here. Loot that chest finally for 1,000 gold. Loot that blue chest. Yes, yeah, dude. We don't need to bother about killing that them dragons anymore. So what we're going to do now, we're going to farm the um, the silver wolf man. There's a blue chest on the top left here, by the way. Yeah, we're going to farm the silver wolf man. And the Marbus. And this is the spot to do so. These are quite annoying enemies to um, farm. You'll just basically go out, come back in that door we just came in at. You'll kill that Silver Wolfman and Marbus here. And then you run back out, come back in and repeat it guys. So like I say, what you want from these. Silver Wolfman, you want its shard, which will be Feral Claws. You want Fiend Fang times 2 and Fiend Pelt times 1. And the Marbus, you want this shard called Drain. You want Fiend Fang times 3 and Lion Lord's Main times 1. So the Fiend Fang, they both drop it, but I've just split it between them. But if you, if you for example, you need 5 total, if you get like 4 from one, that means you only need 1 from the other. But I've just put 2 from one and 3 from the other in the text guide, like I say. Between these two, you want five Fiend Fang. They both drop it. And the Silver Wolfman, you want its shard. And you want Fiend Pelt times one. And Marbus, you want its shard. And Lion Lord's Main times one. Like I say, Fiend Fang, you want five. You can get it from them both. So farm these guys. And I'll just cut out that bit of farming. This took me about eight minutes. So not too bad. But I think that's the last bit of farming we have to do. Pretty much. You know, other than the money. And, um, yep, crafting some stair gear. So I'll see you in a second. Yep, so this is it. I'm coming to the end of the farming now. I think I checked my stock in a minute just to double check how much I've got in total. Yeah, we've got one more enemy after this. Uh, but we just have to kill him. We don't have to farm anything. Just got to kill him so he gets added to the demon archive. If you haven't killed him already. So it's got Lion Lord's main there. I think that's all I needed, Lion Lord's main. So good to go. So once you've got what you need from them two enemies, come to top left, loot this bl uh, blue chest, and kill that enemy, Chariot Boa. I don't think I've killed one already, but if you come in your shard list, all enemies should be um, discovered now. That one there. Yeah, I think I'm going through my list now, just to check what enemy that was. Yeah, that enemy is actually Ice Elemental. That's actually last enemy we need to farm, but we're going to be doing that in a second, guys. When it's going to be much easier. So, yeah, don't worry about that one. Like I said, it's one more enemy left. You want to come all the way over here now, guys. Finishing, finish uncovering the rest of the Den of Behemoths. Let's carry on to the far right, top right. We're going to cover all the map tiles along the way. And at the end here, there'll be a blue chest and smash a wall, guys, to find a Gambler's Ring. Now, at this point, you should be on 99 point thirty percent map discovered. I'm on ninety nine point twenty and this is when I realised that I missed so I've missed a tile just there, you see it, that little gap? I've missed that tile and there's another tile. Yep, that one there. 
I'm just going to put a marker down there, you know. Yep. And over here. And that one there. So I've missed them two tiles. But if you've discovered them two tiles, you should be at 99.30%. If you're not, then you've missed something else. Just have a look around your map. You can compare it with my, uh, my map in my collectible guide. I've got all maps on there, guys, so you can check up on anything. So I'm just going to quickly make a sprint to them two places. Uncover them. And along the way, I'm going to kill a Archdemon as well. Just get that shard I'm missing. Because um, the thing is, here, you need 99% map complete. And then once you have, you're going to come over here to OD. You want to, you want to um, return the Fortune Tome. And you want to take out guys of Tome of Conquest. So do that now if you haven't already. Yep, yeah, so um, I'm going to uncover them with the tiles. But yeah, what you want to be doing now, go to OD, return the Fortune Tome, and borrow the Tome of Conquest. That Tome of Conquest, it makes a bonus boss fight appear later. Yeah, it makes a bonus boss fight appear. I'm just going to get them blue chests on my way up here to that map tile. Yeah, but that Tome of Conquest doesn't appear in OD's book list unless you've discovered 99% of the map or more. I mean, I'd already discovered enough anyway, so I'm 99.2. Um, but I should be on 99.3, you know, just by going by this guy. If you haven't missed anything, but yeah. If you're not on, if you're under, if you're under 99%, that time of conquest will not appear. So you're gonna have to go and just uncover a, a bit more of the map if you have missed any uh, before you do so. But yeah, just make sure you get time of conquest on OD guys, and then uncover anything else you've missed. So I've just got that map tile. I'm gonna continue to the top, uh, top left now. There's actually an Archdemon on the way into the Cathedral uh, at the top. Normally, most of the Archdemons are discovered in the Forbidden Underground Waterway. Yeah, if you look at my collectible guide as well, it shows you where all the enemies are. So this, if there is any enemies you need to chase down, guys, and you don't remember exactly where they are, yeah, just go in my collectible guide, go on the demon list, and there's a map showing you where every single enemy is. And the best farm, I, think, I don't think I show every single spot. I think I show the best farming spots. Um, if you need to, you know, basically where they're near a doorway, so you can quickly go in, kill it, back out. So yeah, we've got this Archdemon here. So this guy, I'm just going to kill this guy a few times, uh, just until I get that shard I'm missing. Yeah, I don't think I have to kill him much. Uh, let me just cut this bit out and get a little bit, guys, until the shard drops. I decided not to do any cutting, because he literally, literally the next kill spawned it. Yep, here comes his shard. So this was the one I was missing. There we go. Words of wisdom. Right, so now I'm just going to go and cover that final map tile. Like I say, what I'm doing now, guys, for these map tiles and getting that shard. You don't need to do this. I'm sort of showing you how long it took me just to run around the map and get them two tiles I was missing. And um, get that shard I was missing as well from the Archdemon. You should have them already. Of course, make sure you've got that book from OD, though. Right, and once got his map time, I'm just going to use a waystone to walk back. I don't know how I missed this one, actually. Even that, that other one was even simpler. I shouldn't have missed that. There we go. See, now I'm on 99.30% map. At this point, it should be on 99.30% map completion, guys. And the only shard you should be missing is the one from Ice Elemental. Yep, so what we're going to do now, we're actually going to head back to Glacial Tomb. Now we're going to farm the Ice Elemental, guys. So, yeah, back to Glacial Tomb. And this is the one we're going to be farming. So, you're likely going to have to put fire rings on your um, equipment loadout just so you kill an enemy quick enough. Because them Ice Elementals are quite strong. And what you want to be trying to do is kill it in one hit. Because otherwise, it's going to go inside the walls and it's going to be difficult to hit it. But if you put your both your fire rings on, at this point, you should do enough damage with one flame cannon. Yep, and all you're going to do, guys, is going to keep killing this. And what you want from this, you want is shard, yeah, which is resist ice. You want sapphire times four, diamond times fifteen, and Alex and Wright times two. Yeah, so farm this ice elemental, guys. Like I say, as long as you've got two flame rings, your aim is try and kill it in one shot. Just run out, run back in. Try to one shot at flame cannon. Even with flame rings equipped, it will still drop. Because he looks quite high at this point, it will drop diamonds quite often. So it shouldn't take too long, like I say, you get a shard, sapphire times four, diamond times five, and alexandrite times two. 
Right, and once you finish with it, we're just going to go and fight this bonus boss now. I'm just going to check my inventory. So, um... Yeah, I've got tw I've got plenty of sapphires. I've got 16 diamonds. I've got one extra. And I've got quite a few alexandrites. So, yeah, we've got it shard and we're good to go. So, we're going to go and fight this bonus boss, which we needed the Tome of Conquest for. If he doesn't appear, it's because you have not got the Tome of Conquest book from OD. And this bonus boss, he should give, he'll give you a shard, and after the shard from a bonus boss, we should be at 92% shards. And the last 8% of shards we craft at Johannes. So yeah, this bonus boss is up here, like I say, you need Tome of Conquest. And all you want to do with this guy, invert so you're on the ceiling. He does quite a lot of damage, so make sure you've got plenty of potions and ethers before you engage him, guys. If you haven't, walk back to Arvenville. Stock up and then come back. Yeah, his attacks did quite a lot of damage. I mean, look at that two, three, four, and they can hit you. They quite, they quite a few can hit of them can hit you and do quite a bit of damage. I mean, I think I did like 500 damage like in one go. Because he will freeze time occasionally and spawn them sort of crystals, which will do a lot of damage. So just make sure you keep your health high. Keep your health high and just use Inferno Breath, guys, when he sort of stays still. Do a lot of damage to him. You can make sure you've got your flame wings equipped so you do more damage. And yep, just doing that. Try not to have Inferno Breath active when he's doing the freeze time. Because Inferno Breath will still be um, wasting your MP when the time is being frozen. But you won't be doing any damage and it'll just waste all your MP. It can be a bit tricky. So you, you might not be able to tell exactly when he's going to freeze time. I mean, he does have like a little tell. He sort of moves his cape back uh, like so. So you see my MP is going down still, but I'm not actually damaging him. But luckily, it's quite low anyway. Yep, and just keep that up, guys. Keep healing. Recovering your MP with consumables. And eventually, he should fall. It shouldn't take too long. Basically, two, two full MP gauges, you know, with Inferno Breaths. Normally enough to finish him off. And then once you kill him, you'll get his shard, which is standstill. It allows you to freeze time. So yeah, hopefully this should be it. And there we go, got him. Right, so once you killed him, you're going to go back to that warp point and you're going to fast travel back to Live X Machina. Once the doors open up. Yeah, so back to fast travel room to Live X Machina. Now you've killed OD. Well, you know, I mean, you've defeated him in battle. Puny vampire. Yeah, stinking pile of flesh. Yeah, he's got a big nose now. So yeah, just borrow all this box now. You should be able to hold 21 now. You've beat him, guys. And you always get that trophy. Lending limit. I think that's for borrowing 10 books at a time or 10 books altogether. But yeah, just take out every book now. You've beat him. Get a massive bonus from all that. And then walk back to the hub area. Now we're going to go and talk to Lindsay. If you haven't handed in any quests, you should be able to finish them all off now. Yeah, so report any remaining quests to Lindsay. And they should all be complete. Right, then come and talk to Johannes. And then back at Johannes, guys, we're going to prepare. We're going to prepare Dark Matter. Remember to make sure you've got the apron equipped and alchemic bounty. So yeah, prepare Dark Matter. Prepare red bean paste, prepare pasta, and also creep dough. So yeah, dark matter, red bean paste, pasta, and crepe dough. Yep, then once done so, we're going to head over to the shop. We're going to buy high potion times one. You need at least high potion times one. You want at least high ether times one. You want one poison. You want five flan. You want dark matter times one. And when you craft that dark matter, you want to eat it. Yeah, so flan times five. Dark matter times one. And we just crafted it, so you should be able to buy it. Yeah, you want to buy heavy cream times ten. Heavy cream times 10, yep. 
Um, red bean paste times two. Cocoa times one. Pasta times six. Crepe dough times two. And dual blade times one. Yep, there it is. Buy that. That's it. Once you've done that, guys, head back over to Johannes. Like I say, make sure you eat that dark matter we just um, purchased. Right, so you're going to go to the shard crafting menu. And you're going to craft all these shards. So all these shards, which say zero, you should have enough. You should have all the materials needed to craft one of each. And this will be your final shard you need, guys. Before you started this, you should have been on 92%. And this will take you up to 100%. So like I say, every shard which is on zero, craft it. You should have all the materials you need. If not, just go to my collectible guide, you must have missed something. That's it, you'll get a trophy shard master. That's what I'm obtaining every shard. And this chest should appear, guys, Gebel's glasses. That chest appears once you have 100% shards, it appears in front of Johannes. In Gebel's glasses, it basically gives you infinite MP. So you always want that equipped now, guys. Now you've got infinite MP. Right, and now with infinite MP, guys, like I say, make sure you've got Gable's glasses equipped. Yeah, it's going to prepare just a few more things. We're going to prepare berry spaghetti. We're going to prepare shiruko spaghetti, strawberry crepe, and chocolate crepe. So four foods, guys, but like I say, berry spaghetti, shiruko spaghetti, strawberry crepe, and chocolate crepe. Right, and then we're going to eat all them. Then four foods, that should increase your look even more. Yeah, berry spaghetti, shiruko spaghetti, strawberry creep and chocolate creep. That's it. Make sure you've got Gabriel's glasses and uh, plunger's ring equipped. Basically, trying to increase our look now. Save your game, guys. Now we're going to go and farm. And then I'll leave it there at the end of the video once we get there. So I'm going to show you this farming spot. On the way to it... Make sure you loot the two chests in the Forbidden Underground Waterway, which we pass. And if you haven't got any fried fish, that's a food. We're going to need it for the next part of the video. Uh, sorry, the next video. Um, just leave the area and come back in. And loot the blue chests again when they respawn. Until you get fried fish. You only need one. We should find it quite easily. I mean, it's quite a common drop from these blue chests. Yeah, like I say, fried fish. You want at least one. So you make your way through here. You've got that blue chest there. So you've got a fried fish on that. And you've got this blue chest down here as well. Like I say, just leave the area, come back in, and then we'll respawn. Right, and this spot we're going to farm money, guys. Come down here, and what you want to be doing is you want to farm 1 million altogether. Once you farm 500,000, you'll get a trophy. You're not going to see me pop it, but I will pop it sort of um, I've just cut it. Yeah, so keep doing this, guys. It's going to take you about 10 minutes to farm 1 million gold altogether. That's where it is. Like I say, once you've farmed 500,000 gold all at once, you get a trophy. And yep, just keep going left and right through this room, like so, guys, until you've got 1 million. Like I say, take you about 10 minutes. Make sure you've got Gable's glasses equipped and augment gold. Definitely want augment gold equipped. The passive should be at rank 9. And yep, once you're done, guys, walk back to Arventville. Yep, and we'll um, we'll make a safe in a second and call it a day there. Yeah, so you should have at least over 1 million. And all we're going to be in the next part, guys, just going to do a, a massive spot of um, a massive batch of crafting all the remaining items and then finishing the game. Hey, welcome back, guys. So this should be the final part. Um, I did have a bit of a problem with this where once I'd finished, I actually, something happened to my recording, so I've had to record it again. Luckily, I had a save just before we begun this part. You know, I was making a save at the start of each video, so luckily, it came in useful here. So yeah, I had to record this part again, but because I've had to do that, I've already got the trophies, so I'm just showing you here where they all popped. So you'll pop all these trophies in this video. I'm just basically showing the, the PS5 video, which it took off each trophy. So yeah, you'll get a scrap heaper, you basically get that while we are crafting. All this part is is basically crafting for about 20 minutes, completing the quests, handing them in, and um, then going and finishing the game quickly, guys. But yeah, the, the main portion of this video is just messing about in the shops and Johannes' menu. So yeah, that one is for completing 30 quests. Like I say, you'll get all these trophies in this bit. 
item collector, that's the item I missed. Like I say, I had to go back and get that. That's one I missed. This one, Bloodstained. Yeah, you actually get that from Draining Blood. That's an enemy I'm going to show you a bit later. A good enemy to farm the Blood Draining, if you haven't already got that. Cartographer. That's 100% in the map. Eradicate the King of Demons. That's a story trophy, well, a true ending trophy. Complete the demon list, that's for killing the final sort of demon, um, completing the demon archive. Obviously, that would be the last boss, which would complete that. And then that trophy's for the ending. And, um, of course, Overlord for getting every other trophy, Platinum. The one for viewing the ending, you have to actually view the credits all the way to the end, guys. Otherwise, the trophy doesn't pop. If you skip the credits, you don't get a trophy for it. But luckily, you can skip the credits if you want to. You know, if you don't want to actually watch them all, you can skip through them a little bit quicker um, to, you know, scroll through them quicker to get to the end and pop that trophy. But yeah, so um, as, along the way, I tried to explain why each trophy should pop, just so you all know. So yeah, just going to load that game in. So what we did at the, the end of the last part, we should have one million gold to go into this. You're going to need almost all of that to do all this crafting. If you do find you need extra for any reason, you shouldn't. But if you do, you can just head back to that spot, farm a little bit more money. It doesn't take long. So yeah, luckily, I'd made this safe. Yes, yeah, so that's sort of... Yeah, that 99.8, ignore that. That's my completion one. Yeah, it's this one I wanted. So my stats when I loaded this, that's what yours should be similar to. Alright, so um, first of all, I'm going to head over to Anne. I'm going to purchase the discount card for 100,000 gold and also Alkahes times 15. So yeah, discount cards, that basically gives you a 10% discount on everything and Alkahes times 15. You need 15, but you might already have 15 already, but just buy 15, you know, just in case. Yep, that should cost about 12,000 gold uh, without the discount, which is going to make everything cheaper. So... Okay, so come to Johannes. What you want to do first is dismantle. Make sure you've got the 8 point equipped and alchemic bounty. You want to dismantle 1 gold. You should have 1 gold, guys. Yeah, so dismantle gold and then go into your crafting and craft it. With all the materials you got from dismantling it. That's it. Now you can buy gold from Anne. Yeah, so now you're going to go over to Anne and you're going to buy loads of items. Okay, so buy high potion times 5. High ether times 5. Yeah, if you don't already have that. Panacea times 7. Fried potatoes times 4. Cookies times 4. Flour times 8. I tried to mention this as I'm doing them. Flour times 8. Egg times 6. Sugar times 4. Mucker oil times one. Um, milk times two. Mucker leek times 11. Yeah, baking soda times two. Butter times 20. Cheese times four. Kazome times three. Kazome. Heavy cream times three. Pasta times 11. Alkahest, max them out, you want 99, max them out, that's it, sulfate times 1, gunpowder times 11, gold times 2, halite times 15, yeah then you want 8 bit coin times 19, you want 16 bit coin times 1, 32 bit coin times 1, you want main gauche times one. You want fragorach times three. You want hot food times three. You want pelicus times one. Shedder times two. Um, circlet times two. Ring times four. And flame ring times one. Like I say, you've probably got some of these what you need already. This is like a worst case scenario, so just buy what I'm advising. 
And once you've bought all them guys, come over to Johannes. Remember, make sure you've got the apron and alchemic bounty equipped. Now you want to prepare salt broth. Yep, soy broth. Tonkotsu broth. Miso broth. Chinese noodles. A loaf of bread, thick sliced. Um, pizza dough. Curry sauce. Make sure you check the um, best before dates on these as well. White sauce. Bongoli sauce. And meat hot pot. Yeah, meat hot pot. Right, once you've done that, go into craft. Right, now you want to craft. First, go into accessories. And you want to craft ice ring and thunder ring. Yeah, so ice ring and thunder ring. Go into accessories. Then go into weapons. Now you want to craft Florenberg times one. Kalad Bulk times one. Durandal times one and dice array times one as well. Then go into ammunition, silver bullets times nine, just one one uh, bundle, and armor, silk dress times one. Right, and then once you've done that, go to dismantle. Now and then fragrage we just brought from the shop. We want to dismantle all three of them. So all three of them, you're going to get a lot of gold from that. That's the cheapest way to get gold, I think, because they only cost 9 alkes to dismantle. Yeah, so dismantle 3 Fragorak. You might have got a trophy at that point for Scrap Heaper for dismantling a certain amount of items. Yeah, come over to it and next by Meat Hot Pot times 5. Yeah, Salt Broth times 1. Salt Broth times 1. Yeah, soy broth times one, tonkotsu broth times one, maisu broth times one as well, Chinese noodles times five. Yeah, a loaf of bread times one, pizza dough times five, curry sauce times five, white sauce times three. Bongoli sauce times one, Florenberg times one as well, Kalad Bulg times one, Dice Array times one, and down to Battle Geese, that's a that's a gun times one, um, Silver Bullets times five, Silk Dress times two, Ice Ring times four and thunder ring times three yeah you see i'm actually listing all these in order so it's not like going down and back up and down we're actually buying them all in the order they are in the menu making it really efficient okay so back to johannes and craft now we're going to go into weapon we're going to craft the owl mace yep owl mace craft that then into armor you want to craft the tea dress for a nice tea party yeah craft the tea dress I have one of them myself. Yeah, craft the hound vest. And the Tatanashi. Nashi. Yeah, craft Tatanashi. That's really good to dismantle for Orokalcom, guys. And, um, yep, yeah, Orokalcom and Crimson Knight. Okay, then, then go into head. And you want to craft frame, flame circlet. And then the ancient tiara. Craft them items. Then go into dismantle. And you want to dismantle meat hot pot times four. So dismantle four heat, uh, meat hot pots. Yeah, funnily enough, this seems to take... What's it, same amount to dismantle as um, the fragrance, and it's only a food. So yeah, dismantle four meat hot pots. And then come into prepare. Now you want to prepare apple risotto. Egg on rice. Yeah, on the rice. Curry and rice. 
Yeah, don't bother the chicken casserole. We're going to get some of that free from a quest. Yep, then it's beef curry. And then pork curry. Yep, then chicken curry. There's a lot of crafting to do. Yeah, so much. Yeah, then seafood curry. Then macaroni grating. Classic spaghetti next. And then I thought we'll eat some pasta carbonara. You're going to be pretty stuffed after eating all this. Yeah, then pasta vongoli. Sea urchin pasta. Salt ramen. Soy ramen. Tonkotsu ramen. Maiso ramen. Corn chowder. Then we're going to have a simple steak. Yeah, then we're going to have an exquisite steak. Then sukiyaki. Chicken swati. Um, garlic chicken. Yeah, then pork cutlet. You might already have a few pork cutlets, but we're going to craft it just in case. Yeah, so pork cutlet, craft that. You want miso cutlet. Ginger pork. That sounds very nice. Yeah, ginger pork. I guess sea urchin pasta is probably worse. Yeah, then fish and chips. Good old British tradition, that. Yeah, then Fornius in garlic. And that's all prepared for now. Good luck eating all that. Make sure you keep some space for it. Right, next gonna head back over to Anne. You can eat all this food first. So all this food, which you just sort of made, any food in your um, inventory, which has not got the knife and fork symbol beside him, eat them at least once, guys. So you get the bonus. And um, a lot of this, you need it to uh, complete Grandma's quest. But we will be buying everything we need. Anything we don't have, we will be buying it uh, very shortly from uh, Anne, ready to give, give, uh, give to Grandma later. Keep her on her toes a bit longer. Scrumptious. Delicious. Right, save the best to last fish and chips. Yep, and do not forget to eat that dark matter. Yeah, I didn't eat in the dark matter either. You actually get a trophy for consuming so many foods as well. Right, guys. So, um, yeah, back to Anne afterwards. So, right now, we're going to purchase apple risotto, um, almond rice, curry and rice, macaroni grating, classic spaghetti, soy ramen, corn chowder, exquisite steak, sukiyaki, chicken suet, Pork cutlet, fried potatoes, simmered fornias, strawberry crepe. These are all foods we need to give to either grandma or to um, the other girl later. Chiffon cake, egg souffle, lemonade, and again, alcohol times max, so as many alcohol as you can sort of hold, maximum 99. So just buy whatever you need to get to 99. Is this right? you are. Yep, and then the owl mace weapon. You want one of them. Yep, and then you want Tatanashi armor times five. Yeah, so five of them, guys. That's going to cost a lot. Right, once you've done so, back over to um, Joanna's. Now we're going to dismantle four Tatanashi. That's going to cost Alkahest times 88. So go into your armor, Tatanashi, dismantle four of them. There you go, it's going to cost 88, but you're going to get eight Orichalcum from that. Four Crimsonite. You're going to get some Inbreed School, Eastern Fabric. So if you need any more Inbreed School, guys, Crimsonite or Orichalcum, you can just buy that and then dismantle it. Right, once you've done so, we're going to complete the quest now. Let's come over to Abigail. So um, in memory of Caleb, you're going to give her the safe ring. So in memory of Caleb, give her the safe ring. Yep, and then take next one in memory of Noel. 
for that you want to give her the armor brigandine yep and in memory of Morris you want to give her bat wings yep in memory of Talia you want to give her rather bureau oh uh, sorry yeah that's right in memory of Nora you want to give her flame ring you're going to get a lot of rewards for this which we need Yeah, in memory of Edith, you're going to give her the tea dress armor. How are you, Miriam? This is the keeps. Yeah, in memory of Alba, give her the hound vest. And so, yep, yeah, in memory of Dennis, give her the flame circlet. In memory of Lily. Give her the silver tiara. In memory of Wanda, give her the silk dress. Yep, in memory of Rachel, give her the ribbon. In memory of Nadia, give her a diamond. Yep, in memory of Enos, give her Oracalcum. Yep, and in memory of Boy George, give her the ancient tiara. So you would have got a lot from there. I mean, that last one, you get Solomon's ring. This is the only way to get that. That actually increases the shard drop rate from enemies. Fortunately, you get it when you don't need it no more. Right, and come to Grandma next. Now for Grandma, we're going to give her pizza. Something irresistible. That's going to be pizza. Again, you're going to get loads of rewards while doing this. I'll just mention what you need to give her. And you'll see the rewards. So something irresistible is pizza. Anything you just got from um, Abigail as well. Just eat them once so it's been consumed. That's it. So something irresistible. Give her pizza. Um, craving fries finger foods. Give her fried potato. Yeah, so fried potatoes for this one. And craving yellow kernels. You want to give her the corn chowder. Craving a baked dish, you want to give her macaroni grating. Craving a classic sweet, give her cookies. Craving something spicy, give her curry and rice. Craving a novel idea, give her omelette rice. Yep, and um, Craving a rolled up treat, give her strawberry creep. Craving saucy strands, give her classic spaghetti. Yes, takes ages to handle these in. Yep, then craving something refreshing, give her lemonade. Something breaded, no not bread, give her pork cutlet. Give her something fluffy. The egg souffle. Yep, egg souffle for that one. Craving a miracle. Yep, chiffon cake. Craving crispy skin. Yeah, do not give her the skin from the bottom of your feet. Give her chicken sweet. Yeah, for that one. Craving something with sea urchin. It's not sea urchin pasta, it's actually uni rice bowl. Yep, craving a risotto, give her the apple risotto. Craving noodles in broth, give her soy ramen. Yep, craving food that falls apart, simmered fornias. Almost done guys. Craving a beef hot pot, give her sukiyaki. Yep, and the final one, craving something life changing, give her exquisite steak. Yep. Should be a brand new woman after that. Yeah, you get recycle hat, guys. I think that gives you unlimited ammo for your guns. That one. Yeah, so what you want to do next, guys, you want to buy. You need at least 66 Alkahest. So, yeah, come into Anne's shop, buy 66. You don't need any more, so if you've got already got some stock, you need at least 
66. So just make it up to 66. I didn't, only really need to buy 55 then, but I bought 66 anyway. Yeah, you're going to need about 100,000 for this bit. So you might have to sell a bit of things if you haven't quite got enough. But now what you want to do, go into items, purchase. Make sure you're on the left sort of tile, left tab. So it's got every item. You want to sort by acquisition. That's very important. Make sure you've got sort by acquisition by pressing triangle button. And then what it will do, it will list all the items at the top, from top to bottom that you haven't got yet. And you want to buy one of everything which you don't have down to Knight's Chorus. So that armor there. So every item which says zero down to Knight's Chorus, the armor, you want to buy one of everything. Because they're pretty much all the items you haven't got at all. That's why they're at the top of the list when you change it to acquisition. Yep, and then basically what you're doing then, you're buying all the items you haven't quite obtained but are purchasable by Anne. And then what we just want to do, guys, we want to buy one more Tatanashi. We want three so we can dismantle three. So I've just got to sell a few more things because I've not quite got enough. I think I end up selling some uh, crystals, so I've got plenty of them. You don't need many crystals, I forget exactly, but... Um, if you need to find out exactly, you could just uh, type it in on my Google document, find and replace crystal. You'll find out exactly how many we need. I mean, I've kept 12 crystal, so that's plenty. I've kept like 10 wool, which is plenty. Sold some of them. Yep, like I say, buy one more Tatanashi, and then head over to Johannes. Now we're going to dismantle three Tatanashi. Yeah, dismantle three of them. Right, then we're going to do some crafting. Right, you're going to come into supplies first. We're crafting everything now which we haven't obtained. So yeah, come supplies. You're going to craft X potion. You're going to craft X heather. X heather, sorry. Yep, you're going to craft fairy elixir. You're going to craft fairy all heal and fairy panacea. Panacea. Yep, then you're going to come into your ammo. Basically, you're going to craft every ammo that you don't have any stock of. So you have every ammo that you don't have no stock of, you're going to craft everything. So yeah, all ammo, you'll probably have, have to craft flame rounds, ice rounds, thunder rounds, weapon bane rounds, shield bane, poison rounds, petrifying, curse, scatter shot, critical, and diamond bullets. So yeah, buy all them, then head in scarves. What you're going to buy in scarves is, um, sorry, craft, it's gunman scarf, and over the rainbow. Once you've been over the rainbow, you're going to go into armor. You're going to craft the chain mail. Yep, mantua. Some of them, once you have zero of it, you probably already obtained them, but you've sort of um, used them for something else. Yeah, mantua. Then lamella armor. Then the silver breastplate. Um, polonaise. Dragon armor. Gold breastplate. Yep, Calisiris. Calisiris there. Yep, Scarlet Dress. The Imperial Armor. And then the Coronation Ground. Uh, sorry, Coronation Gown. Yep, then we're going to head, head armor, head items. Now you want to craft the Ice Circlet. Um, the Witch's Hat. Cute Beast Berry. Bunny Ears. Yeah, bunny ears don't look like it's craftable. Yep, yeah, um, gunslinger's hat, hermit's beret, demon horns, and plates. Yeah, then you want to come in here next. You want to craft bunny scarf. Yep. Yeah, so craft bunny scarf. I forgot to craft that. Yeah, craft bunny scarf, guys. And then go into weapons. I did craft bunny ears earlier in a head. I was just too quick, I didn't see myself do it. So next into weapons, guys, you want to craft steam boots, then bunny boots, then dragon shoes, then Hermes shoes. Yep, and then hell's nails. Then you want to craft sword breaker, and then Carl Wenon, and then Manda Passar. Yep, and then Kazikli. Yep, then Joyous, Riddle, this is all listed in my text guide remember, and then Blue Rose, Shara, 
I've also got this city sack what you need to craft them and stuff. Yeah, then it's Mistil Time. Then it's the Oracle Blade. I like it. Yeah, then it'd be Gambantine. Steel Lightning. Yukon Vasara. Some of these we're crafting in the game because we need them um, to craft other stuff. If though we might already have one. And you might need another. Yeah, then Internal Blue. And then Mikazuki. And then Grand Zayu. And then Nilfheim. And then Gungna. Gay Azel. Black Chords. You got Alberio. Yep, then Andromeda. And then Tanagashima. Yeah, then it'd be Verith Ragnar. Yep, a Dreshtia. A Dreshtia. And then all you're doing now, all the items, all the weapons which you need an 8 bit coin to craft, all you're doing is just crafting one version. You don't have to craft every single one because all the rest is basically just upgrades. All you want to craft is the 8 bit coin version. So craft. Craft one Dawn Blade, 8 bit coin, craft one Blue Skies, craft one Boreal Rhyme Boots, one Olanders, one Shield Weapon, Encrypted Orchid, Hikari, Moonwake, Gold Cross, Use Sword, Red Beast Edge, Prismatic Heart, Deathbringer, Claw of Amaraki, Blood Grinder, Silent Calamity, Sculptress Chisel, Black Dragon's Ode, Rinne's Recrerium, and Abivalence. So yeah, like I say, you don't need to buy all three of each version. You just got to buy the eight coin, eight bit coin version. Like I say, the rest are just upgrades. They look like different weapons. It's the same weapon. They're just like an upgraded version, but just one counts as obtaining that weapon. Right, and with that, you should get the item collector trophy. But as you can see, I've missed something. And as you can see, if you look here, you can see what you've missed it from. So head armor. If you miss something different to me, the way I figured out what I was missing, I looked in my collectible guide. And you can find everything listed there in a really, a really um, convenient way to search what you're looking for. You can actually go into your, um, go into your archives, go into items, and look at list. Find out the question mark. There'll be one gap, which is a question mark. Obviously, that's the weapon you're missing, or item, whatever. Once you find that item, look at my collectible guide. Track down to the items which are near that, and you'll be able to see exactly what items should be there. And you can look in the collectible guide to find out where the item is, because I've got like an index. Or you can just type that item in on my Google document guide, or my PSM profile guide, so I'll put it on there at some point. And you can find out exactly where it is and when we got it, and why you missed it. Or just look on collectible guide on the map, or why not find it that way, guys. So yep, I knew it's a gadget band. Yep, and there it is. And that's where I pop the trophy for getting 100% items. There you go, that's all you want. Techniques doesn't matter, or demon list, you just need 100% of the items. That's it. And then what you would normally do once you've got that, you'd fast travel to Glacial Tomb, guys. We've got everything we need now. All you've got to do is uh, complete the game, fully uncover the map, and um, complete the demon archive. The last bits of the map are going to be along here, and the last few enemies as well. So Glacial Tomb is going to head to the far sort of northwest. Took us 30 minutes to do all that crafting. Ages. So yeah, now we're going to come down to this fork, but we're going to take the path on the left now. Which we haven't gone down yet, but if you, have, if you haven't got the Bloodstained trophy, guys, that's for draining a certain amount of blood from enemies, you're just going to do it here. With Gebel's Glasses, you've got infinite MP, so make sure you've got the Bloodsteel Shard equipped. And all you do is keep using your um, slash weapon on this demon, so he makes blood, and you'll suck the blood up with triangle by using the shard. Go out, come back into respawning, and just keep doing that, guys, until you get a trophy. So, like I say, you're not going to see me get a trophy because I've already gotten it. But I did show you that video at the start, that small trophy video at the start. But yeah, that's where you get it guys, just keep going out and back in again, attack him, and then suck up his blood, out back in, and just repeat it guys until you get a blood stain to trophy. For drain for draining so much blood using the blood steel shard. Right, and we're gonna continue guys to the southwest. The secret wall. No, it's not there, it's down here. Yeah, there it is. Secret wall with a capacity max up inside. Down here. Get out of the safe room, save your game. Now, when you uncover the map um, and complete the game, once you load your game back in, the map will already be discovered and you'll 
sort of save file will automatically update to 100% after completing the game and reloading it. Of course the trophy will pop here, but it won't update your save file until you load it back in and save again after completing the game. So yeah, this will be easy. I mean you've got every single item pretty much. You've got Gebo's Glasses which is infinite MP. You want to equip that with the Skull Necklace. Skull Necklace gives you a double your MP damage, your magic damage, um, but it doubles your MP usage. But because you've got Gable's Glasses, that doesn't matter. And they see it just said 100% um, map completion. And Summon Hellhound does a lot of damage, by the way. And look how much damage that does by itself. It's a bit of a slow attack. But yeah, it does a lot of damage. You can't actually freeze her for some reason if you use um, standstill. We can freeze the actual final boss just after this one. So yeah, once you kill her, you're going to the final boss fight. And once you kill this boss, that should f finish the demon archive, guys. And this is where you'll get a trophy for completing um, all the demon list. And um, Dominique, she'll normally spawn in just, it'll be a random one, she'll just spawn on one of these heads, one of these three heads, and whatever one she spawns on, that's one you want to attack to um, deal the most damage. So yeah, if you use stand still here, you can actually keep him still, but you normally have to hold the button in, so um, yeah, you have to make sure you've got another a good shard equipped in the other one, but yeah, you just freeze the enemies, like, indefinitely. Yeah, but like I say, you want the one with Dominic on the top for the most damage. Otherwise, the others, the others you can kill them, but you have to come, you have to kill the one with Dominic to actually finish and probably kill the boss. Do you normally when you damage the other ones, it just stops them from attacking you, and that's it. So you'll get a trophy for um, beating them, I think, and uh, completing the demon archive. And once you get to the credits, just watch the ending little cutscene. Get to the credits, and like I say, do not skip the credits. You have to let the credit scroll to the end. You can press a button to speed up the scroll, um, but just do not skip past the credits. You know, don't press like start and skip or quit. Just, I think you hold circling to make it scroll faster. But I'm just gonna edit past this um, cutscenes quickly. Yep, and then you get here guys, like I say, just hold, I think you hold circle to make it scroll faster. Just don't press options. Yep, yeah, and then just scroll through that. Guys, once you get to the end, that's when you'll pop the final trophy. And you should get a platinum afterwards as well. Overlord. And that's it, guys. Should be all the trophies now. Platinum, platinum should be yours. If you do need to clean up anything, just jump back in. Like I say, use any of my guides linked in the description, and you can chase anything down. But yeah, it just... It just I mean, you get through the main, you get through the main game, don't you? It just turns up like a massive collectible sort of cleanup, like massive, like three times, or four times long as what the um, story takes you. But you find if you're not using a guide efficient like this, it takes absolutely ages to do all that cleanup. Because you'll craft something, you'll go craft some else, realise you don't have enough, you have to go find that enemy, and um, get what you need, go back, try to craft some else, realise you still don't have enough to craft another item, you have to go back again. It's lots of running back and forth. Um, but with this way, doing this optimal way, it saves so much sort of running back and forth, guys. Makes it so much simpler to do. So yeah, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night finally done. Platinum out of the way. It's been a lot of a long time in the making. But yeah, that's all the trophies you should have got, guys. At the end, this last part. Yeah, that is it. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the game and the guides. And I'll see you on the next video.